All right. There it is. What's going on? So, Back again. Right. And, during, and during that long intro there, I've been playing on my Final Cut Pro a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I like I'm it. Final Cut Pro 101 is what that is. <laughs> but um, we are here, guys, for episode four. This is going to be years 2001 to 2005. And um, this was a fun set of years for movies. I'll tell you what. Like Brian said to me earlier, I could have done a top 50 in these years, man. Some good movies released during this time. But um, oh, yeah. back and forth, I just made a change right before we went live. But I am yeah. pretty solid, pretty happy with my, my top five, my two honorable mentions. But um, how about you guys? What do y'all think about these years? Oh, yeah. It was tough, man. Yeah, it was rough. I could have made a top 10 easy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Easy. Whosever idea I'm, this was, fuck them. Right. Yeah, fuck them. Take it back. Oh, yeah. This was um. I, I started off. Of I think I had forty-one movies. I pulled forty-one movies out of the herd, and I watched a shitload of movies. One one movie that I watched became my number one, and it stayed there the entire time, and never faltered. Um, and I hadn't seen it in a couple of years, and it blew me away how good it was. It, it just I forgot how good it was. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to show these off, guys. I'm really excited to see y'all's picks. That's the funnest part of this for me. Is they right. doing this? I'm wondering if you guys are going to pick the same thing I'm, I'm doing. Oh, yeah. I, I look know, forward to it all week, man. During this yeah. time, I try to just watch movies from these years and watch as many as I can to give honest yeah. opinions. You know, you know how it is. Movies hold up. They don't hold up. Right. You know, we're getting back to 2001, 2005. Some of these movies I ain't seen in years. You know? Yeah, because in my memory, uh, I'm thinking something's badass, and then exactly. it's like you watch it. Yeah, there was, like, there was one movie in particular I was like, oh, already, hands down, in my top five. And I watched it right off the bat, and that bitch didn't even make my list, weirdly enough. And I remember just loving that movie when I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's definitely getting harder and harder to narrow it down. My I number can't talk one. about something right now, but at the end of the stream, excuse me, Dirt. At the end of the stream, whatever, I'll talk, talk about something I want to talk about. I can't talk about it now because it'll be a spoiler, but right. we'll talk about that later later on. Go my ahead, number bro. one, I didn't expect to be my number one. Let me put it that way. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I, I, similar, I have to say yeah. mine too. Mine too. Kind of tripped me out. Now, my number one, it was basically like I picked the number. I knew the number one, and I had to make a top four below that. But it was still a pain in the ass. Still hard. Yeah. yeah. And, guys, if you're a wonder, we're missing one guy. Brian Goes Blue had to work. Um, He is going to jump on here in a little bit when he gets off work. And wherever we are in the stream – we will just go to him and let him catch up to where we are now. Um, so, like I said, we will have the same group of guys. Just Brian's going to be a little bit late. Um, so, y'all be looking forward to him getting on here in a little bit. But we will go ahead and see who's out there in the chat, and then we will get started with our, our first pick. Chris C., what's going on, buddy? Yeah. Sydney Eubanks, what's up? Let's go. What's going on, man? Oh, yeah. There's dirt. Starting in a moment, Brad. Oh, that was me. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> we're, we're multi-streaming, by the way. When I, when I text, it texts all, cha all channels. So right. those three are were just for me texting or messaging. What's going on, Anthony? Um, what's up, what's up, gang? I've been waiting too too long weeks for this to come back. Hell yeah, man! You guys can check out this channel, man. I've been enjoying your videos, Anthony. I, yeah. I finally finished your last last one you did. Um, yeah, you're a good reviewer, man. I'm um, Sydney Eubanks. Take your time. Appreciate it. Chris C says all good. Pop. All right, this is what I want to talk about, Chris. This is all good. All good <laughs> pops. Damn, your bulldogs just cruised today. Now I'm an Atlanta Falcons fan. But I am in North Florida. I am a diehard Florida State Seminole fan. I'm not a Bulldogs fan. I do like the Bulldogs, but my team is the Seminoles. And we did beat LSU's ass. Sorry, Dirk. But um <laughs> sorry. But um, I'm definitely not a Bulldogs fan, but I do bleed black and red for the Falcons. So do they beat their uh, ass or they just win? I I didn't watch the game. I, I honestly don't know. Oh. Maybe Chris can. <laughs> I didn't watch it. Yeah, I, I didn't see the. I was watching uh, the Florida game. I didn't see the. Uh... Yeah. The monkey. What's going on, man? Uh, greetings, fellas. Everyone hit that like button. This will be a good one. I appreciate you being here, buddy. Holland Oates. What's going on, man? Um, what's up, man? What's up boys? Holland. Chris C says good evening, out good evening, outlaw gents and shady ladies. Yep, that's that's the kind of people we draw here. That's why I love <laughs> YouTube so much. That's why I love everybody that gets in the chat because it's all my kind of people. The monkey said, my luck, my luck is who can guess it? King Kong with Jack Black. Oh, yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, maybe. That's, that's a good choice. My pick, gotcha. Uh, Magic Hands, what's going on, man? So what's up, everybody? All the notes says, this was the hardest one to trim to five so far. It definitely was. Yeah, I have to say, I think now that I'm sitting here now, after going through everything, I think it probably was. They said, this is number one was King Kong. My okay. top five will be good. 
Y'all look forward to hearing it. I mean, y'all share it in the chat. Everybody's top five. Y'all, y'all be sure to share it. You can play along with us and, and do yours as we do ours. However, y'all yeah. want to do it. All right, Gizmo, what's going on, man? Um, two Towers, yeah, man. Uh, Elijah Forever, Almost Famous. Almost Famous is good. The others, Bubba Hotep. There you go. Show is over. Good night. <laughs> uh, gotcha, Pops. Yep. All the note says, it's sad to be a Florida State Seminoles fan in 2022. You know, so far, we're too, hey, we're too low. That's better we've done the last few years. Right. But growing exactly. up, we we stayed in the top five more than any other teams. Let's go back mm-hmm. 10 years and let's talk. But rest in peace, rest in peace Bobby Bowden. Um, Chris C says, some upsets today in college football. And I'm, I'm mainly an NFL fan, so I'm ready for tomorrow. Yeah, Dr. Ordinary yeah. is coming over tomorrow. We got a big spread of food. We're going to drink a lot. It's going to be a painful Monday morning, but tomorrow's going to be yep. fun. Yep. He's a Packers fan. I'm a, I'm a Falcons fan. So we got a big doubleheader tomorrow at the house. It's going to be a good time. Who that, baby? Yeah, and Dirk's have got them no, uh, New Orleans fan. So I'm tolerating Dirk during the stream. We're still buddies. <laughs> <laughs> Until after the Super Bowl, I'm just tolerating Dirk. Right. <laughs> um, Chris C says, I live in California, but I'm a Michigan Wolverines fan. Oh. Interesting to see how that worked out. That's a long way from California. Yeah. Brian goes blue says, oh, yeah, can't wait to see these guys top five. Yeah, come on when you can, man. We want to see yours, too. Miss Caveman, what's going on, Miss Caveman? And hello. Yeah. Almost Famous was 2000. This is 2001 and 2005. All right, so you got one more you need to throw at us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, we are lucky. The year 2000 by itself yeah. wasn't in this batch. Yeah, I've already right. looked ahead a little there bit. Was, 2000 would have thrown us. Yeah, because I had to. There was a few movies I thought I was going to grab, right. and I had to look at the date and say, shit, that was 2000. Yep. But yeah, the next, the next one's going to be tough, too. One for okay, sure. Hey, man, what's going on, buddy? Appreciate you being here, man. Hope you're feeling better. Yeah, man. Anthony says, hey, Holland, Brian, Chris, video, man, JS, and the rest of the badass chat. All right, guys. Um, we are caught up with the chat. We will go ahead and get started here. Um, and it's like, Dr. Ordinary, you're first to go. So All right. Let's see what your number five is, buddy. Now, number five, kicking it off. Um, again, it's going to probably be no surprise to anybody as people get to know kind of what my uh, sort of favorite genres are. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and kick it right out there with 2004's Shaun of the Dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic zombie comedy movie, a zomcom, if you will. Um, Edgar zombie. Wright, Simon Pig. Zombity. I like Zombity better. Yeah, Brad, we'll go with that. Um, <laughs> directed by Edgar Wright, his second movie. Um, starring, you got uh, Simon Pegg in it. Of course, Nick Frost, they do all their movies together. But you also have some like legendary actors in there. Bill Nighy, if you're familiar with English actors at all. Dame Penelope, um, uh, Wilter, she's in it. Um, the, this movie is phenomenal when it comes to a zombie movie with comedy. And But it, it goes a little bit farther in terms of its writing. It starts off with uh, the way it just starts off with you got these two friends. One works. One's living on his his uh, uh, his roommate's couch. Um, and this dude walks out in the middle of a zombie apocalypse and not even realizing that everybody's a zombie. He goes to the store, picks up a newspaper and walks all the way back to his apartment. Clueless. Um, it's just yeah. a classic, classic opening to a zombie movie. Um, but it, uh, this movie, I think, did what. Um, the, and I'm a huge Zombieland uh, fan, but I think this movie did kind of a little bit better what Zombieland couldn't do in that it really kind of gave you a lot more of that um, humanistic emotional connection. Because um, with the, the end of this movie, um, with his mother, with his stepfather, who's played by Bill Nighy, you just you really feel a much more uh, personal connection to these people, even though it is a comedy. It, by no means is it not a zombie comedy movie. Um, and it does have some great zombie um, scare parts to it. But yeah, the, pra- good practical effects. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the practical effects are amazing. But you really feel it for these these uh, characters. And the writing is just phenomenal. It's, it's real subtle writing, but it's hilarious. For example, um, Bill Nighy's character gets bit by a zombie. And they're talking to him about it. And he just very simply says, uh, yeah, but I ran it under the tap. <laughs> so I ran it under the cold tap. <laughs> I ran it under a cold tap. It's going to be fine. And, of course, there's all kinds of nods in here to, to other zombie movies. The name of the restaurant that they hang out is um, is Lucio Fulci's. Um, there's nods to 28 Days Later. If you've never seen it, it's just it, – it really is a fun watch, and I think it really set a tone for a lot of future zombie comedy movies. Um, 
and and Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright, you can't go wrong. And Nick Frost too. Yeah, Nick Frost is also a writer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you definitely nailed it over Zombie Land with the heart. You know, yeah. uh, it actually had Shaun of the Dead has actual heart. Yeah, it it really does. I mean, it's yeah. it's um, and, you feel for these guys. You know, even though it's a it's a comedy and and Zombie Land just it, it tried, but it just didn't have it. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's really a, a comedy, you know, zombie movie, but there at the end, it gets pretty dark. There are a couple mm-hmm. scenes, you know, like what is, you know, spoiler alert, whatever. Somebody, let's just say somebody becomes a zombie and they have to put them down. It's pretty, it gets pretty dark. Oh, that whole bit. scene. Yeah. You're, you're like, you know? you, I mean, you forget that, you know, it's a comedy at heart instantly. And I don't remember if, I don't want to say it was Land of the Dead. I, I watched all the Romero flicks um, last, in the last year or whatever. It was one of them that um, Nick Frost and, yeah. Um, it was they got, they got to be on there as extra zombies, yeah. or whatever, and um, they got to meet Romero and stuff. And yeah. the, the special feature of that is so cool because they're like geeking out. Yeah, you know, meet Romero, you know, like their he hero. Was, that was he was so impressed with Shaun of the Dead that he invited him to come on. As, as I mean, to talk about a nod to your film. Oh yeah, George Romero yeah. says, you know, I'm yeah. impressed. And I agree with you on that. I'm a huge Zombie Land fan, but yeah, the Zombie Land didn't quite hit the mark like like Shaun of the Dead did. I mean, it's no, out of the two, I definitely yeah. got to go with Shaun of the Dead. That's a good thing, man. The way to start it off. Yeah, no doubt. All right, Dirk, what you got, buddy? All right, man. And uh, pretty sure it's going to pop up again. I'm sure. That's going to be Million Dollar Baby. Oh, yeah. Great pick, man. And uh, yeah, man, it's, you know, directed by Clint. It was his, uh, it's written by Paul Haggis. It's pronounced uh, cunt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cunt, cunt Eastwood. <laughs> yeah, Cunt Eastwood. I got that cunt box up back behind me. Oh, yeah. Pretty fantastic. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, uh, the the quote of the movie to me is, uh, if there's magic in boxing, it's the magic of fighting battles beyond endurance, beyond cracked ribs, ruptured kidneys, and detached retinas. It's the magic of risking everything for a dream that nobody sees but you. That's uh, great by Morgan Freeman when he's saying that, man. Like the narrator, uh, the narration of Morgan Freeman is just, just makes, I mean, it's it's overlooked. I, I mean, because I hadn't seen it in so long, I had forgotten about Morgan Freeman. I was like, what the hell? Like, he's a big part of this movie, you know. Um, this is Clint's 25th movie. He directed, it's his 57th in which he acted, and 21st he's produced. Damn. Uh, hmm. There was one of two boxing movies that won Best Picture. The other is Rocky. So that's a big deal right there. Right. Uh, the Jay budget Rocky. was $30 million. Uh, it made $216 million worldwide. Uh, Hillary Swank, she uh, her upbringing was similar to the character. So it was pretty easy for her to, to fit into this role. Um, and she was trained by that, uh, that what's her name? Uh, the blue bear, the her, you know, at the end of, at the end of the film, she's got to fight the blue bear, uh, right. boxer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Champion. She was trained by her. Her name is Lucia. Right. Jiker. I don't know how to pronounce that, but, uh, she was a boxing and kick, cha- uh, kickboxing champion. Huh. So, I, I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah, but, man, that movie, that. Cool. Uh, it's got, it gets you, it gets me in the feels, man. Every time I watch it, man, it hits me right in the fucking feels. Every time, man, it's like, God damn. I'm sitting there watching my wife and she's like, I'm like, what the fuck? Why aren't you crying? <laughs> you know? Heartless I mean, bitch. I don't cry at a lot of damn movies, but that damn movie right there is some sad shit, man. And it's, but it's good, man. It's just done so well, man. Uh, that's my number five pick, man. Million Dollar Baby. Yeah, that's a great one, man. Nice pick, man. Yeah, I will say that I rewatched that one for this stream, and it just made the cusp. But uh, uh, we'll see. You know, it's, okay. it's a good one, though. But, yeah, um, that's another movie that if you don't cry at the end, you're a soulless bitch. Right. Um, you know, <laughs> it's it's rough. I cry man. like a little um, bitch every time, man. Oh man, I haven't seen it in years, man. I, I, yeah, yeah. I already watched it for this, and it's it's um it holds up, man. It's a good movie. 
it was and you're right morgan freeman is overlooked in that movie quite a bit because he's mainly just the narrator um he don't have a whole lot of acting in it. it's mainly clint eastwood and and, yeah. and what's her name um uh, hillary swank hillary swank yeah, yeah. Uh, morgan yeah. freeman is uh clint eastwood's moral compass in that yeah. movie you know right. it, it really is it holds holds the whole thing holds the whole story together right yeah i didn't realize like because it had been so long since I've seen it. I was just, I kept thinking of the other shit of the movie, but he's, he's, it's a big part of the movie, Morgan Freeman. But I seen at the end, you know, that she has that Irish saying on the back of her, her robe or whatever. You never know what it is. And when he finally yeah. tells her at the end what that saying is, um, I had to look like I couldn't remember whatever. It's like, there's a few different variations of it, but I think he says, um, my heart, my blood, or something like that. But it's like pulse of my heart sweetheart it means all different kind of sayings whatever but when he finally yeah. tells her at the very end it's like man come on it's um, right. right. then he really hits home and the way her it's family home. is a big old piece of shit you know it's oh like, man God. yeah you wanted yeah they um they pulled that off well because you, you hated them a lot <laughs> i've seen motherfuckers like that <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good pick man but appreciate it all right let's see what what bray's got for us what you got man Well, I'm watching my internet on the corner here. It's starting to pick up a little bit. It's just shitting out like crazy, so I don't know how well this is coming through, but I picked uh, Feast from 2005. Nice. Uh, yeah, great pick. I just, a great I just keep going back to this movie over and over again. <laughs> <That's> just... <laughs> I yeah. love the practical effects. I love it's all in one location. I love that there's no stars in this whatsoever. The cast is just... just bottom of the call sheet, bottom of the barrel type, you know, cast. Yeah. Um, the standouts are uh, about as Zargetti as Bozo and um, Dwayne Whitaker as Boss Man. They're both great in this, uh, but they're all pretty good. And the cast, it takes place in a middle of nowhere bar in Nevada. And these, basically these giant creatures um, show up and they, they're there to eat everybody and everything in the bar. Anything that's alive, they're there to kill it and eat it. And it's a strange, you know, it has comedy elements to it. It's unexplained completely, but it is a no, takes no, pulls no punches. It's just a wild ride. It's a lot of fun. Um, there's a running gag in the movie, this character, Honey Pie. Like, she gets, like, splattered with blood. She cleans herself up and, again, gets splattered with blood. It just keeps happening. And there's two other movies where it continues to happen. It's a running gag. It's a tongue-in-cheek kind of movie. But it really plays well and infinitely rewatchable. I just enjoy it every time. And like I said, it's shot in California, but they it really works. They made it seem like it was Nevada. And uh, like I said, the gore, I, I it was part of Project Greenlight on, I think, Bravo. There was a the competition and, you know, all these big names produced it. Yep. Wes Crane and Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, yep. you know. So... I mean, a lot of people have seen this. There's not a whole lot to say about it. It's a really straightforward monster movie, but it's just, just a lot of fun. And like I said, man, I just don't have a whole lot to say about it other than watch it if you haven't seen it and the sequels. Check them out. Ain't there like uh, some throat fucking going on in there? One yeah. <laughs> yep, sure is. <laughs> One of those good old throat fucking movies. Right. <laughs> yeah, Brad, how could well, you leave out the throat fucking part? Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't remember a whole you lot. Said you I didn't have a whole that. lot to say about it, Brad. What the hell? <laughs> Go back to the throat <laughs> yeah. fucking. But, uh, yes, there I, is a I creature that uh, does some skull fucking in there. So right. if you're interested yeah, in right. that. Um, um, I saw an interview with Wes Craven that said that he he considers that one of the, of all of his movies, that Wes Craven, he's like one of the best projects he's ever been involved in was that movie. I bet it was um, fun as and hell. And it makes sense. Man, so yeah, you know? it's a fun ass movie to make, is what it oh, was. Oh yeah, man. I, I loved it first time I seen it. I, that guy at the very beginning, he's like, "I'm the one that's gonna save your ass." <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. That's some yeah there's shit. some crazy gore in that movie, man. Some great. If you're a gore fan, you ain't gonna get mm -hmm. much better than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've seen all that, three like, of those. It's got that dead alive feel to it. Yeah, it's just you know you get you get a lot in it for the for the money they spend on it. You can tell everybody's like you mentioned before. You can tell everybody had a great time with it. Judah Friedlander gets sprayed with this green slime early on in the movie, and he's just dealing with that the entire movie. Mm -hmm. And he's slowly <laughs> deteriorating, and it's just hilarious. I mean, I could go on and on about it. I just I think if there's anybody that hasn't seen Feast, you're doing yourself a mis disservice to not see it. And this Blu-ray, I think it's five bucks. You can get it. So yeah. 
Um, there's a DVD triple pack with all three of them unrated. I'd recommend that. Um, but even the sequels oh, are good. Like, what, no, it's what, like dead animal it's carcasses it's and shit all over them. Yeah, they were covered. They, you know, yes. they were wearing like a, you know, they were incognito. Right. You know, that's the way they looked at it. It's fucking a great idea, though. I was like, yeah. And then they come out at the very end, and yeah, it's just. Yeah, it's a and good no, testament to it that just thinking about it, I instantly want to rewatch it right now. Yeah. Just thinking about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like I'll put it up when we're done. <laughs> right, Jason Muse is in it as himself. Because mm-hmm. this is just the kind of place that Jason Muse would hang out. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a fucking mess. I don't know, man. It's nobody, yeah. it pulls no punches and no, nothing is off limits in that movie. That's what I like. I've about. actually never seen the sequels. I need to check the sequels out. Oh, dude. I want to the first sequels, one. man. They're crazy. Yeah, as I've, fun. Never actually, I've never I'll, actually seen the sequels either. We might need to add they're that. Pretty to they're pretty sleazy. They're sleazy. I mean, they're in descending order, but yeah. they're they're more of the same kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all know Ryan had come over one night, Dr. Ordinary had come over one night, and I had just got it on Blu ray and I put it in. And, um, I know we ended up watching like almost the whole damn movie and we were having a, like a dinner that night. My daughter came in she's like, what the hell are y'all watching? And my wife finally told me to turn it off because it was just too much for her. So, <laughs> what was it? When the little kid got fucking swallowed right in front of her mother, right in front of his mother? You pick it. There's so many, so many things. Yeah, it was like, right, because we were, we were waiting for the girls to get ready enough. We were like, let's just watch this one scene. And the next thing we knew. We had to watch like an hour of it. The whole rest of the house was like, uh, no, turn this shit off. What the hell's going on? <laughs> Blue. All right, guys, I'll go ahead and do my number five here. Now, this, um, let me fix my camera here. All right, this one here could have landed pretty much anywhere. Um, I went back and forth with my other picks, and I ended up picking this one for number five. And this is my, probably my, I'm going to say my favorite comedy of all times, and that is The 40 Year Old Virgin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Great. Movie. I went and seen this. I didn't know who the hell Steve Carell was when I, when I seen this, and I became an instant fan. I didn't know who Seth Rogen was. And I remember walking out of the theater going, Seth Rogen's going to be a star after seeing this movie, and, and of course he became one. Um, this movie stars Steve Carell, Paul Rudd, Seth Rogen, and Elizabeth Banks, and they'd go on to make a lot of other movies together. Um, directed by Judd Apatow. Um, this is back when comedies were funny. They don't make movies like this anymore. <laughs> and I would say the batch of comedies that came out from the 2000s, say the 2008s and 9s, this is probably my favorite of the bunch. Um, there's so many so many quotable lines from this movie that I still quote today, and um, there's no way this movie would get made in 2022. No way in hell. But um, this is one of the most rewatchable, one of the most quotable comedies ever made. And it's just, it's absolutely fantastic. But it says a nerdy guy that has never done the deed only finds the pressure mounting where, when he meets a single mother. Um, Seth Rogen movie, the Seth Rogen movie Knocked Up was supposed to be, um, was originally planned to be a sequel to this movie Knocked Up. But they decided to make it its own self-standing movie. But originally planned, when they, when they first did Knocked Up, first wrote it, it was going to be a direct sequel to this movie. Um, that's another great Another great yeah. movie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, the electronic store they 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 used the most of the movie um, was actually a Circuit City that had recently closed down in the area, and they used that Circuit City whatever that had just closed for all the um, electronic store shots. Um, most of the lines of the movie were ad libbed. You got so many so many talents in this movie. Um, most of the the quotable lines I'm talking about were all ad libbed by these guys. If you guys have seen this, y'all know the lines were. Um, where Paul, <clears throat> where Paul Rudd and um, Seth Rogen are playing video games, and they're yeah. doing the back and forth. Like, you know, I, you know, I know why you're gay. All that stuff. All that was ad libbed by them. And something yeah. else I didn't realize. I need to go back and rewatch it. I actually didn't rewatch this one for the stream. I've seen it a hundred times. Um, Paul Rudd when he's playing that, he's wearing a shirt with his face on it. I don't remember what yeah. it's from, but he's got a shirt that's got yeah. his face on. It. I need to go back and watch it. <laughs> but, it looks um, like a mugshot. Yeah. But the movie's just just fucking fantastic. I mean, I absolutely love it. I could watch. I've seen it a hundred times, and I could pop it in and still laugh my ass off. And that's that says something about a comedy. Most comedies you watch, you either don't go back and watch it again, or it just kind of you know loses this loses this luster, or whatever. This one holds up. Um, it's just fantastic. And also, whenever Steve Carell is getting his um chest hair waxed, all that was live. Obviously, they had to do it in one take. And all the reactions of all the guys, whatever. Um, most of them cracked up laughing. They just kept all that shit in there, and it's just fun as hell to watch. Whatever. Um. It's just it's just classic classic comedy. Oh hell so yeah! You guys man. hadn't seen this. I mean, who, who the hell hasn't seen this movie? If you haven't seen it, right. go out and watch it if now. Leave this damn yeah, stream I mean, and go watch it. Anytime I've watched so, that shit, I laugh my ass off. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like a nice way, fucking laugh. It was supposed to be like Steve Carell's coming coming out party, but it was more like Paul Rudd and you yeah. know all the other guys you know that that really took off over even Steve Carell. You know, yeah. he was too busy and, with the TV show, but Paul Rudd really shines in that. 
Yeah, Steve Carell's playing the 40 year old version, but in that movie, when it was shot, he was 43, married, and had two kids. Uh-huh. So just if anybody gives a shit about that. My funniest right. thing in the movie is when the guy, his buddies come over and they know he's got a girl coming over and they're like, look, we got to get everything out of here that's going to embarrass you. And the girl yeah. comes over and it's an empty apartment. There's nothing in the apartment. Yeah, there's no shit in there. He's <laughs> yeah. like, did you actually frame an Asia poster? <laughs> it, it's one of the smallest yeah. things, but my favorite is what. When he when he finally has enough of that damn song that keeps playing on a loop in the in the store, so I'm yeah. here. I'm gonna be one more time. I'm gonna murder everybody in this fucking place. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just it's just funny as hell, man. And the the speed dating the speed dating scene kills me every time. Um, so like I said, go check it out, guys. If you haven't seen it, but All we'll right. get caught up in the in the chat real fast, and we'll move on to our next pick. All right. I think that's where we left off at. All right, Monkey said, my two is School of Rock because of, rest in peace, the drummer who got run over by a first-year female motorist, hereby ending the sequel they were planning on. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Gizmo said, UFC is live and you are in the background. This night will be a ride. First fight was Jabba the Hutt versus Bacon with fat <laughs> on it, a banger. <laughs> Damn. The Monkey said, my second. Caveman Sounds said, like, can we all see your shirts? Well, he wants to see everybody's shirt. I hurt my damn back, but I'm going to yeah. try to show y'all. Oh. <laughs> I've got a new jaw shirt. It's yep. laundry day. Oh, it's damn, who's that ugly here. bitch? <laughs> the hell? Who's that guy with the cookie on his head? That's a good-looking <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Magic Hand says, Shaun the Dead is a classic. It absolutely is. All right, so I'll send to you, Banks. My number five movie is History of Violence, 2005. Oh, yeah. Great movie. Oh, yeah. Vigo Mortensen and Maria Bello and William Hurt, RIP. Hidden Secrets is a dangerous thing. Yeah. And that stair fucking looked uh, painful. Yeah. <laughs> All of them says, You shot Bill Murray. <laughs> send you, Banks. Shine the Dead is pretty good. Coco Dutch. What's going on, Coco? He says, Hey, hey guys. Coco. All of yeah. them saying, Hey to Coco. Gizmo said, I forgot Sean and Million Dollar Baby. Okay, then you can keep the slow the show rolling. Thanks for the endorsement there. <laughs> Coco, the, Coco said that box set, though. Yeah, Coco is the one that ruined that box set for me. Yeah. Appreciate it. Eastwood. <laughs> Coco said, hey, Holland. Sydney said, Million Dollar Baby, great movie, but depressing. Yeah, man, it definitely is depressing. Yeah. A bunch of miserable bastards watching that. She right did, uh, you know. You know, it's all how you look I like at to it. watch it's uplifting. I like to watch uh, uplifting human interest stories. I don't like to watch that fucking misery shit. You know, with throat fucking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If there would have been, been some goat fucking in it, it made it stop five. Right. <laughs> oh, Gizmo said, Mean Dollar Baby needs a 4K. I want it. It absolutely does. Yeah. It's overdue. Uh, Brent Madison said, Just a quick, <clears throat> sorry, just a quick message to say. See, see Charles in 3D if it's still in your area. It left our area Thursday night, by the way. So yeah, Brian, yeah, the last showing in our area was 7 yeah. o'clock Thursday night. Uh, did mine too. Yeah. A great 3D, one of the best 3D effects I have seen, especially on a movie that wasn't hey, filmed in 3D. I still Incredible regret job. that, man. Yeah. I feel I feel like next next summer they'll probably bring it back. I hope. Um, and I hope because so. it actually was a top 10 movie in box offices last week. Damn. So Damn I, yeah. I thought it was kind of cool. Because I've seen I'm where sure you go I, to buy the tickets. Damn yeah. near all the seats were damn near gone. Same, same for us. Yeah. Gizmo said, uh, "Feast the real the reality movie or the one they won a part in." If I remember right. Now, it, Feast, it was the uh, director. It was the director's competition, and this that that director got chosen. What's his fucking name? I don't remember his name, but he didn't go on to do much else, and he got chosen, and that's how the the thing went. Right, Chris e says, I had to look through some of my stuff in the internet. Laugh out loud. I have my quick top five. <clears throat> well, yeah. this, man. Awesome. What's up, Tony? Appreciate hey, you coming Tony. by, buddy. The Iron Man. What's up? All right. Hollow Notes says, Hey to Tony. Then hey back. All right. Hollow Notes says, Skull Violation. Is that why it's called Feast? <laughs> <laughs> Skull Violation. Anthony's Horror and More says, Five for me is going to be The Ring. I love the dirty, rainy feel of the movie. Naomi Watts kills it in the role, and I think the mystery aspect is very well done. Yeah. 
Yeah, I yeah. can't argue with oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. That movie solid. inspired a lot of other movies. Great PG-13 <clears throat> yeah. horror film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't always say that. Usually when you see the right, PG-13 exactly. moniker, that's a warning sign. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's a good one. And they said, hey, to Tony, uh, my number five is Panic Room. The mm -hmm. house has a panic room. Major spoiler. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Now we still get, we're supposed to get that 4K this year, right? Is that is that been we have a date? Is that still is that a from Dust Till Dawn deal? <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I don't know what the deal with. I think it's a Fox property, so who knows? Yeah, because that only have a Blu-ray, does it? Is there a Blu-ray for that? Not the no that one that never I, made. I only it. Had I don't a DVD. Think so. That's a Brian question. Yeah. Right. All right, my number five is Session Nine, very underrated film by USA Network. Me and me and Doctor Ordinary watched that earlier this year. Well, that that was uh, oh, that's not District Nine. I always mix them two up. No, yeah. Session Nine, where they're they're cleaning asbestos out of an old psychiatric hospital, and it starts to screw with them. Okay. Yeah. Okay, man. What is everyone's impression? Doctor Ordinary likes horror, likes horror film. I'm assuming does worry anyone scared to make an appearance in this. Come on, people. Does it seem like you have to have been shed with knives? Yeah. Well, I good man. I'm glad the meds are dialed. I'm glad you're doing good, yeah. dude. I'm glad you're back to your normal self. Let me take self. a sip of my drink and see if I... I'm catch up to him. all come back around. You know how it goes. <laughs> Tony says, but hey, back dancing anymore. Uh, Holy Night says, hurting first, squirting. <laughs> oh, I think my favorite part of that movie is whenever um, he tells... Um, Zeth Rogan that he's he's dating a grandma. He says, cool, but you're dating a hot grandma. He says, go go do her on her plastic furniture. Maybe she'll write you a check for eleven dollars or whatever he says. <laughs> Chris he says, Oh, very nice choice. Liz Banks is awesome sexy in this. Yeah. There's something wrong with her underwear. Yeah, they're not in my mouth. Oh, <laughs> um, hope you got a big trunk. I'm gonna put my bike in it. Um, Anthony's horror and more says, Holla Hoops, I love Panic Room. Great choice, man. Um, Gizmo said Judd Apatow has some great films. Forty years knocked up, and and this is forty is okay. But after that, uh, shit, train wreck. I lost respect. Yeah, train wreck. I didn't. I wasn't a fan of. Yeah, I've only seen it in theaters. Me and the wife wouldn't seen that in theaters. I never rewatched it. I, tell you I, I don't think she's that funny. I don't know. This yeah. is me. Though. Even this is forty was kind well, of so so. I think in the forty year old version, she had so many people around her. You know, it kind of you couldn't really notice if she was funny or not because she was playing off everybody else. But I mean, yeah, she's not. She hadn't been great in a whole lot of other stuff. Right, but she's good in that. Uh, Sydney Eubanks says forty year old version is good. Miss Kate like the forty year old version. Jane Lynch who, uh, cracks me up. That's Ben Stiller's wife or whatever that uh, the, the drunk driving broad. That part is fucking hilarious in forty year old yeah. version. Yeah, and um, I didn't write it down, but that when she throws up in Steve Carell's face or his mouth or whatever, that was yogurt. By the way, they used actually yogurt for that scene. And um, who else go for some French toast? <laughs> that fucker came out of nowhere. A funny story about that movie, by the way, before I get sidetracked too much, is um, me and my my three small children at the time. They're all grown now, but I had promised to take the take them to see a movie. We, at the time, we went to movies all the time. And we went in theaters, and there was nothing but horror movies and 40-year-old version. I had no idea what 40-year-old version was. So me and my, probably at the time, probably 12 and two under 10-year-olds could have seen 40-year-old version. Not a good fucking idea. <laughs> um, I, me and my older son are covering up eyes and all kind of shit. We get back in the truck, and, and my youngest son, Adam, looks at me and says, as soon as we got back in the truck, he says, he says Dad, are you a virgin? <laughs> and that was, just, that was just take from the movie. I was so... <laughs> but not my best parenting choice yes. in the world. But yes, I know. am. <laughs> Dad, that guy's a lot like you with the toys and all shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. That's probably that's right. Watch the movies all day. Plays with dolls. What the hell? <laughs> so not my greatest parenting move. Um, La Jewel says, "Dad, what's going on, man? You keep on. I'm gonna write your ass off as a damn tax write off next year." Um, Coco Dutch says, uh, "Yo, to Anthony's movie and more." Oh, Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> uh, all that, by the way, was all ad-libbed. He said all kind of shit, and they just kept the funniest shit in the movie, but he said all kind of shit. <clears throat> he told him just to go to town, and they kept all the funny shit in. Uh, Channel Don Star says, John Gulliger. That's the director of Feast. Director. Bet, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he actually put his dad in the movie as the bartender who was oh, also shit. the director. 
Son of Pluto. Okay, son of Pluto yeah. from um, Return of the Living Dead. Nice. Yeah. He just passed away this year. And honestly, when he already passed away, I thought he had already passed away. I didn't realize he was still alive when I heard he had passed away. Yeah, I did. I had the same reaction. I was like, oh, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on, Xtine? You know, oh, here. Rob W. says, awesome panel. Any of you going out to the... We'll get the rest of the minute. Caveman says, uh, check for 40 year. I would argue that Chuck TV series followed. Rob, dude, Dorigo horror things. I know they have trick or treat and Don in the Dead 3D. Uh, um, no, yeah, I'm, I'm not planning on going to it, but um, I don't know. Regal just so. filed for bankruptcy, so yeah, I'm not familiar with, with that. Yeah, the uh, Regal's got the showings of trick or treat and Don of the Dead 3D. Okay, but uh, yeah, I'm not probably not gonna go. Yeah. Brian goes blue. It says, uh, no Blu-ray for Panic Room ever. And that's what I thought. Yeah, I, I knew it was Now Tony says, I enjoyed Session 9. I just watched it a few days ago. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it too. I, I thought the yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't the people, ending in the world, but it was okay. A lot of people think it's a little slow too, but it's it's a good, it's not a bad sort of psychological thriller. Yeah. Uh, Dia Katana 65, again, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. It says Jordy with a question mark. Caveman says, hit that like button for the stream. I appreciate it, Caveman. Yeah, please hit the like button and y'all subscribe to everybody and all that good stuff. Uh, Senna Murder Drum Video. John Gulliger directed Feast. He's Clue Gallagher's son. He also directed the rest of the series at Piranha 3DD. 3 Did I know that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went to see that theaters by myself one afternoon. Got off work early and just said, fuck it, I went and seen it. It was a pretty fun movie. Yeah, so, um, yeah. The scene with, um, with Hooper or whatever, the little Jaws, you know, homage scene, whatever, that was funny. Our train rate was with the B. Amy Schumer, not Leslie Mann. I could take Leslie any day of the week over Schumer. Oh, yeah. Kylo said, what's going on? What's going on, Kylo? Hollow Note saying, hey, to Kylo. And Extinct says, Session 9 was my most rented tape ever. I love it. I've got a copy. I just haven't seen it yet. I keep Damn, I need to it. see that shit. It's, worth, gets- it's definitely worth the watch. Yeah. Okay. I, like I, think, um, I think Sex Side's got a pretty nice release of it, I think. Memory serves. All right, we are called up, guys. We're going to move on to our fourth pick. And again, when Brian gets here after a while, he will catch up to us wherever we right. may be when he arrives. All right, here we go. Number Scott, four, 2003 uh, thriller film. I guess you could call it a slasher film, Identity. Oh, oh yeah. This is, this is a great movie directed a by very James Mangold. Rare, very rare Blu-ray, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this is the guy that directed Logan, Walk the Line, um, Ford versus Ferrari, which he actually was nominated uh, for an Oscar for that. Uh, apparently, is is directing the new Indiana Jones movie out, so this that could be the end of his career. Um, you got an all out ensemble cast. You got John Cusack. You've got um, Ray Liotta, Amanda Peet, Clay Duvall, John Hawks, um, John C. McGinley. A lot of people would recognize him from. Scrubs, which is weird. He plays a really odd role in this where he plays this kind of just whipped husband, stepfather. Um, uh, Pruitt Taylor Vince, he's a character actor. You wouldn't recognize his name, but as soon as you see him, um, you'll know him. He's got a, this thing called a horizontal, idiopathic horizontal nystagmus where his eyes go back and forth. He's used that to his advantage in every role that he's he's been in. The way that this movie is told, it's got multiple storylines. Um they filmed multiple endings um, purposely to keep the, the cast um, unaware of what the ending was going to be. It's just, I don't, I, can't, I don't really want to say anything because anything would spoil. But if you like a psychological thriller, um, and I feel like this sort of late 90s, early 2000s was the year of psychological thrillers with Vanilla Sky, you had Memento, you had this movie. Um, you know, if you, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was kind of a, this was the time for that. The way that this movie was told, it, they do it in a way that makes it super uh, watchable. It makes it super rewatchable. And, and it, it takes a confusing plot line and makes it watchable. It, they do what Christopher Nolan, I think, tries too hard to do. Um, you know, you don't, you don't need a whiteboard to watch this movie and figure out who the hell is who and when and what they're doing. Um, it's just, it's a great, great, great movie. Um, 
there's a lot of references in it to um, to uh, uh, all of Mangold's other movies. Um, uh, uh, Jake Busey plays a, a serial killer when he's in a car. He's humming a Johnny Cash song, uh, which then he would go on to Mangold would go on to, to direct Walk the Line. Um, Ray Liotta is the the cop who's driving Jake Busey um, to his his next place, and somebody said, "Where are you headed to?" And he said, "Carson City," which is a a direct nod to Con Air, which is another great movie if you've never seen that. Um, just an all around fun movie, psychological thriller movie to watch. The ending, you know, if you figured it out, you figured it out. But most people won't figure this ending out if they've right. never seen it, and you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised. Hell yeah. Yeah, because that reveal is like golden, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. And and well just well played it and and timed well. Um, you know, to to uh give the big reveal. So hell yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great pick. That's though. a hell of a pick. The transition in the third act, yeah, you know, where where they it, it all it all switches, that's the reveal to me. Where, yeah, you know, it really is. Yeah, they're starting to figure out all these things, and they're going, "What the hell's going on here?" And then, you know, it happens, and yeah, and he's deliberately vague. But I mean, it, it's a that is a badass movie, really overlooked. Yeah. And like I, I said, that Blu-ray so is really hard to come by now. And so. it, uh, it's raining the whole time in this thing, and in this movie, you actually feel wet. Um, yeah, you just yeah. Like, they're, they're, they're and and apparently they didn't want he wanted that feeling to to um, to persist, so. They rarely would let the actors actually dry off, and apparently everybody was catching colds and and um, were staying wet even between scenes. And so you just you feel, it's dark and wet, and it, that sort of imagery just fits with the the movie so well. Oh yeah, great pick, man. Yeah, that's a great pick, man. Yeah, that ending, man. Um, that's a great first time watch because um, let that ending blow you away. Oh, you're like, what the hell? Right. All right, Dirt, what you got, man? All right, well, uh, my number four is going to be uh, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Oh, I love that movie. And it's based on a, a true story, a different different name, though. That's, I mean, I didn't know that until I got to doing this. Uh, it's a German woman that uh, supposedly, uh, Annalise, what was her name? Annalise Michelle. And uh, she suffered a, a similar fate. But what I found was interesting about this, and I didn't know all this, that the director and the writer were on opposite sides of their belief systems. Like, uh, so the director is a believer, and and the writer, you know, the guy that helped him write it, uh, uh, Paul Harris Boardman, he's a, a heavy skeptic. So... But it's like a hybrid horror movie, uh, horror courtroom uh, film, which I thought was was pretty pretty good. I mean, because it covers uh, both perspectives really well. I feel a, a lot of people felt like it was uh, heavy handed to the to the faith side of it, but I think you can look at this film either way. Yeah, I just watched it just recently, actually, and I was surprised that I mean how well it held up. And I've been a while since I've seen it. Right. I've liked it ten times over the second time around because it's such a clever take on an exorcism movie. Right, and it, it's not like uh, trying to go above, uh, beyond the exorcist or nothing like that. You know, uh, that's not what he was trying to do. He was trying to uh, make people question if demon possession is real. You know, uh, but it's. Uh, I know Jennifer Carpenter. When she did the audition, she terrified uh, Scott Derrickson and convinced him right then that she was the lead. Uh, she did a silent scream in the audition, and it just freaked him out. He was like, you got it, you know. But uh, it's, uh, like I said, I, I feel like it, it shows both perspectives really well. Uh, is it, was she really possessed or was it? like epilepsy, uh, mental health issues, you know, uh, cause this could be all be in her mind when you're watching it, you know? Um, also, uh, the Lori, what's her name? Laura Kinney, Lori Lenny's my bad. Lori Lenny. <laughs> uh, 
She said her TV turned itself on a few times in the middle of production, the middle of, uh, in the middle of the night. And uh, Jennifer Carpenter said her radio came on several times in the middle of the night. Uh, and the song that was playing was I'm Alive or Alive by Pearl Jam. Uh, I thought that was kind of tripped out. But uh, anyway, uh, let's see what else is there. Uh, heavy, heavy inspiration from Argento. Like in some of the scenes, you can see the the colors. Um, you'll see like a lot of oranges. And I don't know, it's, it's just a combination of beauty and terror. It's a, uh, a great movie man and it's like i said it's not i don't feel like it's uh it's got like four different perspectives too so you got the the priest the prosecutor uh defense attorney and uh no what else is it the medical perspective the prosecutor the priest and the defense so but anyway it's a great movie if you haven't seen it check it out 2005 film uh, exorcism, exorcism Emily Road. Yeah, that really holds up. It's yeah. a, that's a great. I haven't seen that since theaters, but I need to watch that again. I have not yeah. seen that at all. <laughs> so, never seen it. I'll have to check that out. I'm a big fan of exorcism movies, and that that one just kind of because it's it it is, but it isn't. It, it's it's just no. I don't know. It's, it's it's a great movie. It's just a great story. It's got I mean, their even that even kill. So it's not yeah, it really heavy does, handed yeah. either way. You know, right. And, and I really, they, they really do writers, play it right down the middle, yeah. They have both writers, one being of faith and one not being of faith. I thought that's awesome, you know, just having a different perspectives on it. So I'm gonna rewatch that one, look at the note of it. Check that one out. I think, man. Scott, buddy, appreciate it. Well, number four, the history of violence. Oh yeah, uh, David Cronenberg, Viggo Mortensen. Oh yeah. Um, 2005 movie, uh, Ed Harris as Carl Fogarty is a standout in this. Um, the movie takes place in rural Indiana, but it's shot 100% in, in um, Canada. There's also a part where they go to Philadelphia. The movie follows Tom Stahl, played by Viggo Mortensen, who owns a local uh, diner in a rural town in Indiana. You know, he has a wife and two kids, just an unassuming guy. Not much happens uh, until his diner gets robbed by uh, two bandits that are shown earlier uh, slaughtering a whole motel full of people. Basically, they're bandits making their way across the country, and they happen upon um, Tom Stahl's town. He's just this prototypical, like Ned Flanders kind of type. And um, basically, he brutally murders the bandits, and he makes national news and He's very uncomfortable that he's being uh, shown on nat national news, and it's obvious that he's uncomfortable. The next morning, three men who seem to be organized crime type individual individuals, including um, Carl Fogarty, played by uh, Ed Harris, show up at his diner, asking a lot of questions, calling him Joey when his name is Tom. And it basically, you know, becomes a cat and mouse type, you know, crime movie from there where they're accusing him of being a, uh, somebody else from Philadelphia when he says, I've never been to Philly. And he's got, obviously, a family, longstanding ties in this. And they say, well, you, you left a long time ago. You know, so it just becomes um, that type of movie. And um, there's some legendary scenes in this. Obviously, the the stairway hate fuck between uh, uh, Vigo Mortensen <laughs> and Maria Bello. Everybody knows about it. You know, there was full penetration. They were really doing it, the actors on the stairs and all that. And, uh, you know, the violence, of course, is your typical when Cronenberg, all out gore, you know, practical effects. Oh, yeah. stuff. Um, but it's your it's a very heavy movie. You know, it's not not particularly for everyone, but I've always loved this movie. I love his other movie, other crime movie, uh, uh, Eastern Promises as well. If you like That's that, you really movie. like this. Yeah. Um, they're both great. They're they both have nice they wrap up nicely. They're very satisfying and. Um, the violence, the stuff that this, this Joey character is capable of, it's, it's almost like a John Wick before John Wick. Like he's just, yeah, exactly. He's unbelievably talented at killing people. 
and he's just naturally gifted at it. And, you know, every the stories that they tell about him, and then he lives up to the stories. That's what I really like about it. It's like, well, nobody could fucking do that. And then <laughs> it cuts to him literally doing it. You know, everything that they describe, you know, the Ed Harris character, uh, Carl Fogarty is like, yeah, you ripped my eye out with barbed wire right in the middle of his diner. And he's just like, <laughs> what? I would never, <laughs> you know, and then later in the movie, it's like, I should have killed it. But you, you, it goes back and forth like, well, do they really have the right guy? Is it mistaken identity? Does he, right. is it an amnesia thing? Does he not remember? what What's going on here? So there's not a lot I can really tell you about this movie other than that little bit that I have. Um, definitely check it out. You can get this pretty cheap. I think I heard Kino's doing the 4K. I'd wait for that because this edition sucks. I think you get a trailer. I don't know. Special features, a commentary. Yeah, you, don't get, you don't really get shit for special features. Yeah, I, I don't remember if there was anything, but there's not much if there is. So, but yeah, this is a great one. I'd check it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they do a great job of you not really knowing the whole for a long time. Like you're just kind of like, oh man, this poor dude. And then you're like, well, wait a minute, is he really? But and, and they don't give you that reveal for a while, and they you really yeah. kind of just keep teetering back and forth, like. Well, shit, is this guy really this badass? Like, how could he be? I mean, even if he is. It's like, yeah, what, he's like this. What, he's got a family now. Right, yeah, exactly. He's, he's, this, he's right. He's, he he's can't a different this, man now, this if guy. this is what happened. Right. You know, so. Whereas, yeah. like, I, I totally agree, because I remember the first time I saw John Wick, I, that, I was reminded of that movie, and I was kind of like, but John Wick is always John Wick. You know, he's, yeah. he's yeah. retired, but this guy is a completely different guy. Um, you know, yeah. It's a great movie. Ed Harris has this great scene with Maria Bello where he stalks her in the mall. Yeah. And he's trying to say he's trying to talk sense to her sense into her. He's like, you know who you're living with. You don't you don't know him like I know him. And he shows him shows the <laughs> eye and everything. Right. And says, yeah. Ask him why is he so good at killing people? Because <laughs> he's pretty damn good at it. <laughs> you know, really. Yeah, it's, uh, a little brutal little film, man. it's a great Ed Harris movie, too. Ed yeah. Harris is killer. Ed Harris is oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's another one I haven't seen in years. Um, I got it on my voodoo. I don't have a physical of it, but um, I need to check it out again. They did a really good job of making is it Kino? look. I heard Kino's doing the 4K. I, have to, I'm I don't know if they should. I'll have, have to grab I'll that one. So. That yeah, I got the blue, blue, and I watched it a few months ago. I mean, I'd seen it when it first came out, but it had been many years since I watched it. But it's a great movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's killer. It's a Cronenberg movie. It's one of the few Cronenberg movies I actually like. You know, The Fly. You see, there's there's not one I don't like. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> That's why I like to bring it up every time. <laughs> Cronenberg's always got like some dude with a pussy for a neck, and I just like. Yeah, yeah you just gotta look man. past that. You know, kind of like He's the Untamed. A very, very talented. <laughs> He's a very so, talented crime director. He should do more crime movies. <laughs> So yeah, Brad, your first movie had, had throat fucking. This one's got a pussy for a neck. Yeah, or, you know, yeah, so what do you got? You got a theme going there. Yeah. <laughs> At least he's not on the Maggie Gyllenhaal kick. It'll just, just let him have his thing. Right. Maggie Gyllenhaal is in none of my none of these movies. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> so leave it at that. Okay. Well, that's too bad right. because I almost picked a movie just for you from this period. I don't think anybody would have called The Secretary with James Spader. If you I had that name. secretary. It is good. I love it. It's actually my number one. No. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. All right. We will move on my number four pick here. Um, I love this movie here, guys. It's um, I got it on streaming, I don't know, right after it came out and just fell in love with it. And um, I, I actually wasn't sure if I owned this movie. I had to find it in my closet over there. I, I was going to rebuy it for the stream, if not, but I did, I did own it. And um, this is a movie called Joyride. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, uh, Steve yeah. Simon, Paul Walker, um, man, these guys are great together. They play well off each other. They play two brothers. Um, he's going to pick up his um, his friend, wanting a big girlfriend, and his brother gets arrested, and he has to go get him out of jail. And his brother's kind of a fuck up, and they go and get a CB, or his brother gets a CB radio installed. Um, refers to it as a, pre as a prehistoric internet, which I think is kind of funny. Mm -hmm. And they go to fuck with this truck driver. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, Paul Walker acts like a girl. You know, he teases this truck driver. Um, the truck yeah, driver yeah. ends up being some psychopath. And the voice they got for the truck driver was Ted Levine, um, the guy from um, from Silence of the Lambs. So they could have done any better. Um, he absolutely makes this movie. If you guys have seen it, you know, just his iconic, you know, candy cane, all that bullshit. Um, <laughs> it's just absolutely fantastic. I rewatched this this morning um, for the stream, and it holds up. It's just, it's just a great movie. I've seen it a hundred times. 
Um, but it was directed by John Dahl, and um, he, he also directed Rounders, which is one of my favorite gambling movies. And I didn't realize it, but he also directed an episode of Breaking Bad. It was an episode called Down. Um, oh, shit. So he's got, a, he's got a pretty good things to, to his credit. It stars huh. C- Steve Zahn, Paul Walker, and I can't ever say her name right. It's Lily Sabisky, I think it is. And I don't think she's done a whole lot since then. She's not really doing much anymore that I've seen. But um, yeah, she ain't ugly. But um, I hate to say that because come to find out, she was only 17 in this movie. And when I was doing my research, it says that um, I was kind of confused about this. It says when they were in the bar, you never actually see her drinking because she was underage. But I watched it today, and there's two times you see her drink a shot. So I don't know where that came from. Um, but the plot of the movie says three, <clears throat> three young people on a road trip from Colorado to Jersey um, talk to a trucker on their CB radio. Um, then they must escape when he turns out to be a psychopathic killer. And this, cries, this guy on the radio is a crazy bitch. One of my favorite scenes, um, Steve Zahn is telling this guy just how crazy he is. They're talking shit. You know, they're on the CB. They think they're safe. And this guy tells them, you really need to get that fixed. And they're like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're tell lot. And that one scene where they realize the guy's right behind them, it's just, it's absolute classic, man. It holds up to the day. I've seen it a hundred times. It's still just a great scene. Um, but like I said, these two guys are great together. Um, rest, in pe- rest in peace, Paul Walker. I don't swing that way, but if I did, that's a good looking dude. Just going to say it. I'm, 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 I'm secure enough by manhood to state that Paul Walker was the man. Um, one be thing said, about Pop. this, <laughs> <laughs> one thing about this I thought was really funny to me was Sylvester Stallone was considered to be the voice on the CB radio. Oh, um, I can't imagine that, but oh, I, would love to, I would love to see that. <laughs> you know, yo, gain again. I don't know. <laughs> I just, to me, that, that would have been, been hilarious. Um, it took director John Dahl four years to make this movie. Just trying to get it, you know, approved. Trying to get everything done, the script written. Um, and also something else about this is Paul Walker and Ted Levine, the voice of the guy on the radio, also worked on the Fast and the Furious, the first movie in the same year. Didn't realize that, so they were in that movie together. Also, um, it came out October fifth, twenty twenty or twenty two thousand one. It had a budget of twenty three million dollars. Um, it made only made twenty one million in the state, so it didn't make a lot. But worldwide, it made thirty six. So barely made its money back. But it did spawn a couple sequels, and I'm going to be honest, I've never watched the sequels. I've heard good and bad. I'm sure they're, they're not near as good as this. But um, this is just a great road movie, a great suspense movie, great comedy. Um, it just hits all the marks for me, and um, this is going to be my number four. And I said, rewatch it this morning. It definitely holds up. Love it. Big fan of it. Oh, yeah. Great movie. That movie really shows you just how versatile um, Steve Zahn can be. Oh, man, yeah. Steve Zahn's hilarious, man. He really is. He's oh, he, and the, the the more scared he gets in this movie, the funnier he is. What yeah. was the one scene he says? I never felt like a bigger pussy than I do right now. <laughs> you know, the guy in the ice trucks you know, chasing him. It's just it's just a great movie. All right, good pick, man. I appreciate it. We get caught up on the chat here real fast. And by the way, guys, we got thirty two people watching right now. Hey, That's yeah, a pretty hey, good man. turnout. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. All right, Chris C's said, um, yeah, I have a Screen Factory Blu-ray of Session 9. Yep, I do as well. Tony says, hey to kal The monkey says, what is what is um, your opinion on the others? It, it puts me to sleep every time in a good way. How many puts you to sleep in a good way? Yeah, I guess if you need a movie to go to sleep to. <laughs> yeah. Like, like comfort <laughs> comfort sleep. <laughs> now, that's the Nicole Kidman movie directed by Clint Eastwood, right? That's, yeah. Was that Clint yeah. Eastwood? I think so. I Damn, so. I didn't know that shit. That's Nicole Kidman. I know it's yeah, Nicole Kidman. I don't Kidman. think it's Clint Eastwood that did the others. I don't think, yeah. I didn't know that shit. That's like a... For some reason, that's what I thought. I, 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 I want to say it's in my I, box set back there. I came across it when I um, was going through this list, and I hadn't seen it in a while. Um, I remember yeah, I watching No, it, it was directed by Alejandro Amibar okay. or some shit. I thought Clint Eastwood was, was... I'm thinking of something else. He did a movie similar to that. Okay. Well, I was obviously talking out of my ass. Because my credibility. Um, <laughs> I have to look yeah, it up. He did a movie I, similar to that. I always, I always get mixed up with that one. And you I, say I you're the world's up. biggest cunt fan. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Like I said, lost all my street cred. Um, uh, Gizmo said, if memories of murder is not on your list, I will start sending you dick pics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll start with Brad. Hall of Notes says it's not. Okay. Chris C says, my number four is Black Hawk Down. Another great movie. That's a great movie. Okay. Hard, hard movie to watch. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dia Catano's 65s. So the writer of Identity did also those bomb horror flicks, Jack Frost and Jack Frost 2. I know that. Okay. I didn't know that shit. Chris, he says, I've seen some of Identity. 
Well, you hmm. definitely need to see the end of it. Yeah, you need to watch it all because uh, kind of jaw dropper reveal. Yeah, I thought. And people that told me that oh, I figured it out in the first ten minutes, man, fuck you. you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris E says I've seen all of it. I wish I had not. Well, I guess we're not, not a fan there. Damn. Gizmo <laughs> said, um, "Well, then I love him because he is the reason I got to see Shannon Elizabeth with sex with a snowman. Have sex with a snowman." Oh, my Jack Frost. Cindy Eubanks, my number four movie is Hard Candy. 2005, Ellen slash Elliot Page and Patrick Wilson, directed by David Slade, Into the Arms of a Stranger. All right. Yeah, Hard Candy, man, is a pretty pretty intense. <laughs> you seen that one? I don't think I've seen yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah it's like a, a hard candy. Trap, a, trap a pedo type movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I never did get around to seeing it. I know it. There, the cover has bear traps all over it, and there's no, there's not one bear trap in the whole fucking movie. It took me right now. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, damn it. And I was looking for a good bear trap movie. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like straw dogs. Right. Right. <laughs> the it's a very nice pick, SPC. Oh, thanks, man. Right, Mux says, "I just, I just hate the ending, fellows. The film gets um, zero second chances for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no second typo. All right, Gizmo said the Exorcism of Emily Rose is really good. Love it. Jennifer Carpenter is so great in the film. Yeah, man. And I forgot to mention she spent hours in a room full of mirrors uh, to get the perfect, uh, creepiest positions and facial expressions." For that damn movie, the, like the scariest and shit. Yeah, we did that last night. But, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's those for another stream. All right, uh, Chris, Chris, he says, "Send you banks." Damn, I forgot about that one. That's the revenge movie. I'm very sadistic. Chris, he's sadistic indeed. I love it. Best scream I've ever heard was at the ending of Paranormal Activity. Says Chris Lee. Yeah, I got that box set coming in um, sometime or another. I got a pre-order from Best Buy. Uh, oh, yeah. Dick Tanner says, Best Scream was at the end of Blowout. Uh, I got to, you know, I like that, but, man, you can't go wrong with Tenebrae. That fucking scream from uh, Nicoletti. Yeah. Man, that's a fucking scream queen for sure. Yeah. Uh, TCM, uh, yeah, there's so many. Screamer. That's Screamer. the first one that popped in my mind. Was I guess because uh, I just watched Jenna Bray not long ago. My baby's alive, mm -hmm. same yeah. actress. All right, Coco, what's going on, Coco? So that's a great pick, Dirk. Um, love exorcism, exorcism of Emily Rose. Still one I think about to this day when the lights are off. That scene when she is in the barn speaking in tongues is the same, yeah. Uh, she, she really did I kill definitely that, that, that Yeah, that's that to me is her her best uh, mm -hmm. performance for sure. Yeah, that's on my list. I'm gonna have to rewatch that this weekend. Um, got me curious again. All right, the monkey says combination of beauty and terror. Amber Turd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Katana says Elliot slash Ellen Page's career is over. A mass majority of movie viewers won't take him it they serious as a male actor. Gizmo said, here's history of violence is so great. The best sex scene in stairs, love, um, Bello nude, not so much Vigo, but to see her <laughs> nude, I can see him too. <laughs> yeah, if you want to see more of him, dude, go check out Eastern Promises. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I got that yeah. 4K back there. I, I rewatched it. Yeah, you know, I've seen it once before. That shit. That what that bathhouse scene or whatever. The sauna. Sauna. Yeah, the sauna scene. All right, Chrissy, um, to Dick Katana, you see the remake of Flatliners that she um, was in? Well, that remake's terrible. You yeah, want to watch Flatliners, yeah. watch the original. Oh, yeah, the fucking remake. God. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy says American Yakuza was Vigo's first movie or close to it. Hmm. I just remember him in Texas Chainsaw 3. That, that was, might be the first time I've seen him in anything. Yeah. And it's horror more. Um, I like him in um, in Carlito's way, and playing the yeah, these yeah playing that's people. true. Latino guy that's in the wheelchair. So that's you before TC. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I can't hump. 
he had like a terrible accent, but it, he's, yeah, yeah, he, he was great. Like, that that was one him and Al Pacino in the wheelchair when Al Pacino yeah. calls him out. Man, that's such yeah, a he was a punk in that movie, though. What oh, yeah, he, yeah, yeah there's a there's a um, there's a great movie about like angels and and demons that come down to earth called The Prophecy with Christopher Walken. Oh, yeah, old movie, yeah, and Beagle Beagle's got a role, he's only in it for like three to five minutes at the end where he plays the devil, but he's the devil, great. yeah. Phenomenal. Um, that was the first time I'd seen him. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? He's awesome. Yeah, he's, he was good at playing that shit. All right, this is, I'll have to check out uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose. You definitely sold it on me, Dirt. Okay. Cool. Exting yeah, says, man, same. It's... I dig every Cronenberg movie I've seen. Like I said, it's a hybrid, though, between a horror and a courtroom type shit. So. Hey, what's wrong with that? My dick Taylor says, don't know how to reply to people's names, but she was playing a female in Flatliners and the movie bombed. Just put uh, the at symbol in and start typing their name. Right. Bob, what's going on, buddy? Um, yeah. Hey, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Still can't comment on my channel. No Brian tonight. Yeah, Brian's working. He'll, he'll be here in a little bit. And when he gets here, he's going to um, show his picks to catch up to wherever we are in the stream. That's, um, that's strange. I don't know why his, his comments getting blocked. Yeah, um... Y'all remind me after the stream. I'm going to check and make sure there's nothing on my side because I think it's yeah. only in, in these streams he has a problem. So I, I don't think I've, unless I accidentally was getting rid of bots and his, hit his name by mistake, but he's able to, to comment. So he's not blocked. Yeah. He was, yeah. I so mean, I he was having the same problem last time. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Anthony's Horde Moore says, My number four is Saw 2. Some people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you, not anymore, John Kramer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a I like fan of that too. franchise. And I got that. Um, y'all go ahead and berate me now, but I got that super fucking ultra fucking expensive goddamn box set pre order. Oh damn! Um, you know that I pre ordered that motherfucker day one. Um, I got a soft spot. For, I got a yeah. soft spot for that series, dude. And I, that's yeah. I, I, well, like, there's I another no ring going to be coming out <laughs> pretty soon. Yeah, Jesus, like, fuck! Pop. I'll buy that motherfucker too. What right. a little bitch! But, you yeah, know, re repackage that shit and make it uh, sell right. another one. You know, Can't so, like I am ready to defend my choice to anybody that fucks with me. <laughs> dip, it, dip it, dip it, put on fucking Instagram. He said, "Just be warned, you will be publicly humiliated." Anybody that buys this shit, I seen that right. the day after I bought it. I said, "Oh well, let's just bring it." Bitch. <laughs> yeah, bring yeah, it to my address. I couldn't believe it when he showed it to me, and then I ordered it immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Saw One is a um, is a very important movie, I think, for in the yeah. horror landscape going backwards. Yeah. So, and, mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. Everybody got got by it. So. Yeah. 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 And, oh, and me oh. and my oldest son, man, when those movies came out every year, man, it was, it was an event. And you know, my, my oldest boy lives in Colorado. Now we don't see each other very much, man. During that time, that span of those movies, it was a special time, man. Those movies hold a place. And yeah. um, I know they, they fall off the last couple ones, man, but I still find reasons to like them. man. I, I know like Brian said the other day, the last few ones, you pretty much go see it just for the kills. I agree with that. Yeah. But they're still fun. I'm I'm not a um, fan of the Chris Rock one though. I ain't gonna lie. The whole shifty eyes shit he does the whole time. You know, it's like yeah, it's comedy. I didn't mind it. It, 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 it wasn't terrible. as good as the others, whatever. But it wasn't terrible. I mean, it was okay. I, uh, I rewatched it the second time and liked it more. Yeah, I was just gonna um, say I did. But I did not. I'm not like gonna defend it because it wasn't great, it, but, but I, I have reasons for liking it. But but, I, yeah. but it grew on me. But I agree with Brad. Like it, that saw was just kind of like hostile. There, it kind of set a, a a sort of sub genre in the horror. Yeah, you know, uh, right. and they probably should have stopped it for like three or four. Probably they should have just come, but it ended it right then. Yeah, James Wan and uh, what's his name? Um, um Lee Lee Winnell. something. Lee, Lee Winnell. Winnell. He he plays Adam in the movie. Yeah, Lee I Winnell think James Wan only did two. Yeah, yeah James Wan yeah. and Lee Winnell though. You know that yeah. that was coming out of college. I mean, film school. Yeah, that was James Wan's first feature film. Yeah, yeah. he went on to make some good ones. Um, yeah, a lot of good. I know there's a lot of people. Yeah, that's a, that's a split good. camp. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people love or hate that, that, that franchise, but I'm a I'm a big fan. I, don't I, hate it. It. I mean, I like the first. I guess the first few. After three, though, it kind of gets yeah. a little weird for me. But yeah. it's, a, it's a horror yeah. soap opera. So, yeah. it, it yeah, and I really love Tobin yeah, Bell. Man. I think Tobin Bell kills it, man. In the, in those, yeah, in he's awesome. Man. Tobin Bell is yeah. awesome. All right, where did I leave off at here? I think it was this one here. My number, the number four saw. We already read that one, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, this is hey Bob. We'll be we'll be here shortly. He has work. Talking about talking about Brian. Oh, Brian. Yep. Caveman said history of violence. Blu-ray is twelve dollars at Amazon. Appreciate that, Caveman. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. What's up, Robert? 
Going to Holland, thanks for the info. Howdy, Anthony. My number four is training day. This shit, this just chess. It ain't checkers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Move on. Um, <laughs> uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris E says, uh, Joyride, very nice pops. I appreciate it, man. I'm a big mark for that movie, man. I always have been. Um, Bob said, Joyride is excellent. Have you seen the sequels, Pops? I have not seen the sequels, but um, after rewatching this one for the 100,000th time, or whatever, I'm going to get them on Voodoo probably before I buy them. Um, and I'll tell you what, man, that Joyride really needs to get a Screen Factory standalone release or even a Screen Factory Clinton edition. That would be a great Screen, screen Factory release. I There's think special that Joyride features on that bitch. Blu-ray you got is rare. I think it's not, it's not easy to get. At least it wasn't there for a while. Yeah, I, I bought this cheap for Best Buy years and years and years ago. It's a yeah. basic bitch. There ain't much to it. Um, you got a commentary, deleted scenes, alternate endings, and there's like three alternate endings for that movie, by the way. You guys didn't know that. Um, they I are way different. <laughs> one person gets killed in the movie, the, the ice truck driver. I think yeah, it doesn't really show that. You just assume, you just assume because he's dead, them. but yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time. I need to rewatch it. And they finally show the guy that, that, um, is the, the maniac at the end, and it's not, um, it's not Ted Levine. <laughs> um, they just use his voice because he has such a great voice, man. His, his his voice was perfect for that role. Um, anyway, uh, Bob says Candy Cane. I know I sound stupid when I say it, but it's fun to say. I don't give a fuck. It uh, movie hundred twenty. Like <laughs> yeah, it sounds, in my Cain. mind, it sounds just like him. My mind is just like it. That's all it matters. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and after I see that movie for the first time, I bet you I wore my wife's ass out <laughs> saying Candy Cane. I'd walked around saying that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and don't let somebody fuck up and say candy cane or show me a candy cane. I'll say that same shit. I'll wear some shit out to get tired of it. <laughs> Movie Hunter 2020, what's going on, man? Uh, I say candy cane. Uh, Sydney Eubanks, Joyride, great movie. RIP Paul Walker. Yeah, man. Definitely. Big loss. Movie Hunter said Rusty Nail. Uh, Bob says Ted Levine also played Big Bob in the remake of The Hills Have Eyes. Oh, yeah. Shit. Great character. Yeah, he's a talent, man. I like him a lot. Uh, Gizmo says, I remember Joyride, but when I saw it, I remember it felt a little too teenage kind, probably because of the actors. It's PG-13 it's Joyride, well. one through three Blu-ray. Yeah, one through three Blu-ray. Amazon has it for nine ninety nine. Might have to grab mm -hmm. that so I can catch the sequels. I haven't seen the sequels. Uh, Dia Katana, Paul Walker is still starring in the new Fast and the Furious movie. Fast and Fiery 13. And he says, Joyride is fucking badass. Tell him to bring the pink champagne. <laughs> Dude, I, it's, I mean, it's not politically correct at all, so my apologies, but when they pull up at the hotel room and they park in a handicapped spot, he looks at Paul Walker and says, come on, man, I'm going to gip it. And he gets out and gips <laughs> it until the, it's the dude that's, I don't give a fuck who you are, it's funny. You know? <laughs> I got special these people in my family, too. I've, I've watched it with one of them, but he laughed his ass off. You know, you gotta have sense of humor. <laughs> um, Bob says, "What annoys me is that Joyride Two isn't on Blu-ray; it's only on DVD." Okay, well, yeah. hey, the, I mean, the other guy just said that was a triple pack. Yeah, so man, yeah, I, know, yeah. I haven't seen any of the sequels, so I haven't either. Yeah. What's going on, Mel? <coughs> hope everyone's having a good night. Yeah, doing good here. Hey, okay, doing well. Bob says, "Hey to Mel." Hey there to Bob. Yo, Mel. And hey back. Everybody's saying hello. All right. Bob says it's Bob's Blu rays. I can't comment on pop streams on my other channels. Uh, mm -hmm. that, <laughs> yeah, that's weird. That's strange. All right. Mel says, Oh, that is the bummer to Bob. Uh, the scream and alien over the comm is very terrifying. <clears throat> All right. Caveman, what is up, sir? But my color podcast. I just watched Tenebrae, crazy ending. I know, yeah, I know Dirk's a big oh, yeah. fan of that one. Oh yeah, Tenebrae is awesome. Hell yeah, it's a great movie. I love that movie. Hell yeah, good shit. All right, I want to say hey to Mel. Oh shit, my whiskey's kicking in, guys. Sorry, I want to say hey to Mel. <laughs> JS. <laughs> JS says almost got blood hook as a blind by the day. I have a hunch it isn't worth the coin though. You're talking about that blood hook with a slip from from vinegar syndrome. Yeah, that thing's. Not cheap. It's okay. It's okay. I, I tried grabbing it a couple times, and it's a little bit too out of my crazy ass price range. My price range I mean, goes up there sometimes. Probably, probably not worth what but, they want for it, but yeah. 
Mel says the exorcism of Emily Rose is horrifying. Definitely a must see. Yeah, that's gonna be the first one I wrote down. That's gonna be one I'm gonna have to rewatch. Yeah, it's it stays with you. Yeah, I love movies like that too, and I've seen it before. It's just it was in theaters last time I seen it. it gives you an idea. <laughs> it's been a while. Gizmo said, "Can we all have a minute and think of uh, Maria Bella nude?" A moment of silence, guys. <laughs> The monkey says the last season of the Um Rux Academy is the last nail in Ellen Elliott's career. Umbrella, okay, Umbrella Academy. Mel says, "What's up, Holland?" Shit. Uh, the monkey says, "Hey, the Mike Elmer podcast. I, I love Saw. I have the first five on DVD and the Jigsaw and Spiral on Blu-ray and the 4K of the first. Yeah, I, I do as well. I didn't." I didn't need it. For, I didn't need to buy that set for the movies. I'm definitely buying that set just for the piece. Mm-hmm. But um, hold on, we got some bots jumping up in here. Let me. We must be making it. <laughs> all right, how you doing, Monkey? Caveman says I'm all about living their own lives. Monkey says, "Black Killer Podcast." I was the first to comment on your HSUR, but they didn't read it out loud. You were giving me pretty and pink vibes. Magic hands. What do y'all think of Paranormal Activity? Um, first time I seen the first one, me and my son watched it and we had heard all this shit about scary as hell, scary as hell. We're watching it and we look at each other about halfway through it. I guess he really didn't like paranormal activity. Yeah. <laughs> we, the hell with that I'm out. <laughs> we look at halfway through, we look at each other and go, okay, when's it going to get scary? You know, it didn't really, I like it. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of it, but yeah, it, um, it wasn't near as scary as I thought it was going to be on a first time watch. Yeah. Well, I, I, back I, I, I revisit it. Weirdly enough, I like them, and they're not, I, I don't know, they're kind of like a guilty, they're like a romance novel for me for some reason. Um, yeah. Because they're not not really horror, and they're not, I don't know what they are, but I, they're, they're a movie I can watch again. Yeah. I'm not a big I'm, fan of, you know, found footage films, but. Yeah, that's the, I, that's, that's a great, yeah, it's a good way to put it, Derek, because I'm not, that, it's the, it's the genre that I don't really like, but, right. but for some I, reason, those I don't like. I like it a lot better than the Blair Bitch Not Nose Flashlight, though. Yeah. So. I was about to hunt those kids down myself and kill all of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan. Hand, of I'm a big Aaron. fan of the Blair Witch Project. I think it was yeah. a groundbreaking, fun theater experience. <laughs> and I watch it now and still fucking enjoy it. So, yeah, I would but say I, love you I like the, the Blair, the Blair, the Bear Bitch Project over any paranormal activity. You like but, that? Bear? Uh, I'm not a fan of either. I'm not a fan of any kind of spectral ghost type not, thing. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to go found me. footage, go Cannibal Holocaust. Can't go wrong. You know? Yeah. Let's just do that. I mean, don't give me, there, there's some found footage. Cloverfield, I thought, was actually well done. In, yeah, it's it's better found footage. You know, but, but for the most part, found footage, I can't stand. It's like it's like bringing reality TV into, into my movies. Yeah, yeah and, and Clo- Cloverfield was so hyped up. For it to be good at all is you know, shocking yeah. as much as yeah. it had. Yeah, I watched it wanting to hate it and and ended up not vhs yeah, isn't bad you know it's yeah, okay it's no. another, another good example yeah all right so as i can see that my hair was crazy talking to the monkey uh, chris says oh shit i forgot about the, that training day is one of my all-time favorite movies i can also quote everything they say in the damn movie yeah, that's a good one it's also the unrated version Bob says American Pie 2 or the Fast and the Furious are probably my number four and five. Yep. Fast and the Furious, the the point it's a remake of point break. Remake of point break. Yeah, when you think about it, it's the exact same movie. Is it? But yeah, kind of. Yeah. I guess it is. I mean, yeah, it's I the same same storyline, yeah. <laughs> All right, Bob says, anyone pulled Black Hawk down yet? My second favorite film of all time. No, nobody's pulled it yet. Damn. All right, Mike Johnson says, Doc, Nate, or Tony? Hmm? He's saying, do you do you think Nate is going to win tonight or is Tony going to win tonight? Oh, oh yeah. I was talking it's, to it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be Diaz. Yeah. You think? Oh, yeah. I think so. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I think both. it'll be a good fight, but I think they're, they're both kind of in their last little shit, you know. Yeah, they are. I mean, they really are. This, especially in that in that weight class. 
Yeah, um, Mike's a good buddy. Man. He, he actually called me for the stream. He was surprised we were doing this and not knowing that you know Dirk and um, Dr. Ordinary are big UFC fans. Or how we're going to do this when the fight was going on. I said they're probably going to be recording. I'm sure they're still going to watch it. Oh, it, oh it's recording. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. What's going on, Anthony? Master of the 80s says, hello, gents. How's it hanging? Hey, man. Totally. Hey, man. We're from the UK over there. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Late for him. He yeah. up early. Uh, J.S. is my color podcast. That hair was epic. There needs to be more ladies rocking that these days. Cayman says, who's the big jaw guy tonight? Yeah, we ain't got one yet. <laughs> you never know when it's going to pop up. What she said. Rob, Bob says paranormal activity is ass. So mm. he is not a fan. I agree. 100%. Uh, uh, Chris says the next to Kim was a good paranormal activity movie. I liked it a lot. Yep. I've seen that. There's that. Enjoy. There's a movie called Mexican that's great that doesn't have anything to do with paranormal activity that came out. That is a great movie. Long before. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I think next to Ken, I think of um Patrick Swayze Patrick and Liam Swayze Neeson with his great his great redneck accent. Neeson. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bill Paxton. Oh yeah, he's completely believable. Yeah. Uh Chris sees his Cloverfield is my favorite found footage movie. It's a good one. JS said, for me, found footage movies are one and done. I usually have no desire to see them again. Right. Well, exception of a couple. But. Yeah. Mel says, agreed. They say the 80s are back, so let's go big or go home. I have no problem with the 80s coming back, but I'm an 80s kid. Um, Robert Anderson says, I did, Bob. That's my number four, Black Hawk Down. I forgot that it was, it was mentioned in the chat, but nobody on the yep. panel mentioned it. Gizmo said, I hope Nate and Tony will have a double victory in the same fight. Don't know how, but I love them and don't want <laughs> them to go on a loss. <laughs> hey, maybe it'll be a draw. Have a party oh, yeah, knockout. Somebody will get a knockout and they'll. All right, the monkey says, "My killer podcast." I'm not going. I'm not going Afro Mill. <laughs> Bob's a smash that like button, everyone. Uh, the Christy is perfect. Appreciate it, Bob. That's all. Come on, the monkey. All right, we are caught up again, guys. All right, I appreciate guys. everybody out there in the chat. Thank y'all for being here. We've got 38 people, guys. We've hit a new record man, for these um for the series, man. so we can get that to 40. All right. all right, we're gonna move on to our number three pick here, guys. Dr. Ordinary, if you're ready to roll. We'll All see right. what you got. Let's do this. My number three pick um, danced for my number one and number two pick uh, back and forth for the last two weeks. One of my absolute all time favorite movies. I don't need to say anything else because you probably know it. Bubba Hotel. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. This is a fantastic movie. Um, if you're a Bruce Campbell fan, which I am, I mean, I've. I'm, I'm probably a Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell homer, which I don't I'm, have no qualms about admitting. And I admit both of them have done plenty of trash. Uh, but this movie is fantastic. All I need to say is you've got Bruce Campbell playing Elvis in a retirement home with Ozzie Davis, who is a legendary actor, uh, was a legendary actor in his own right, who is playing who he thinks is JFK, um, which <laughs> if you know Ozzie Davis is black. Um, and there's a mummy that's trying to kill both of them. That, that, that's all I need to say. Um, the <laughs> writing in this movie, it's based off of a book by Joe Lansdale, who's one of my favorite authors. He also wrote another book um, that became a movie that I mentioned, I think, in our first go around um, called Cold in July, which is, a, a, again, I'll bring that back up, a great movie if you've never seen it. Um, but the opening dialogue to this movie will tell you everything that, that you need to know because you've got Bruce Campbell playing Elvis talking about a bump on his dick. I mean, what else do you need to know other than that? Um, that he's going to name Priscilla. Um, they shot this movie for five hundred thousand dollars. You know, that's like less than probably one percent of a typical Hollywood movie uh, budget. Went on to become a um, a huge cult classic. It's got a lot of nods in it. Um, it it's got a lot of nods to. It's Don Coscarelli, so you can't really go wrong with that. But. Uh, it's, it's never really stated anywhere, but a lot of the shots are very Sam Raimi-ish, and I, I feel like you know that was intentional on, on Coscarelli's part. But it the storyline moves you along. Um, the acting is phenomenal. Um, it's just the right amount of over, over the top that you would expect to be over the top for Bruce Campbell. Interestingly enough, although this whole movie is about Elvis, there's not one Elvis song, and even when they show old Elvis footage, it's actually not Elvis because they couldn't afford the, the rights for it. That apparently to get the copyright for one Elvis song would have been more than their entire budget for the movie. Uh, so yeah. that they had to I like <laughs> work completely around that. Um, it's just just a great uh, movie. 
one of the best parts about, about this is if you pick this guy up, Bruce Campbell does a commentary in character. So he does the whole commentary as Elvis. Um, and it's, it's fantastic. So if you haven't seen Bubba Hotep, jump on it right away. You'll, you will not regret it at all. Hell yeah. That's a fun pick, man. Another one I have not seen. Really slow. You seen that one, Brian? I have not seen that one. Okay. Yeah, it's worth watching, man. It's, it's it's a lot of fun. If you're a Bruce Campbell fan, for sure, man. It's um, it's a crazy. Yeah, movie. I mean, it, and it's it's the right the same kind of campy, you know. Like, so the mummy can't talk, um. So the mummy throws up hieroglyphics, but but it's hieroglyphic smack talk. It's like Anubis and a dick, and then like a mouth suck it, like when he's talking <laughs> to Bruce Campbell. So I mean, it's that kind of humor. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's a hell of a pick, man. Appreciate yeah, yeah. It, man. I seen somebody comment in the um in the chat out there asking asking where that slip cover was for that one. Oh. <laughs> Just, not that I noticed that or anything. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dirt, what you got, buddy? All right. Well, <clears throat> this movie is uh from Dean Koontz's. It's like inspired from Dean Koontz's novel Intensity, and that would be uh, High Tension. Good. There you go. Yeah. Great That's book and great movie. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's a trip. It's uh, what do you call it? Uh, so Alexander Aja and Gregory Levasseur, I guess that's how you say their names. Uh, great French horror movie. Uh, they co-wrote it together. Uh, but Dean Coon, uh, Dean Coon said, uh, he didn't go after Aja for plagiarism because he didn't want to have any, anything to do with the movie. He thought that the movie was intellectually bankrupt. <laughs> and it was too damn sure, gory sure. and disgusting. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, which I love all that shit. But uh, it's a great homage to 70s and 80s horror. Um, the, the scene where she's at the gas station in the bathroom, um, is a throwback to Maniac, 1980. And uh, the killer, like, the creaking shoes and the heavy breathing, you know, that's like the two main sounds of the killer. It's, uh, man, it's it crosses some lines. Like, this, this you don't see this in American movies. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not going to spoil nothing if you hadn't seen it, but Movie's bloody as fuck. I mean, the reveal's like jaw dropping when I first seen the shit. And I was like, what the shit? You know? And it comes pretty late before you figure this shit out. For me, it did anyway. Maybe I'm a dumbass, but whatever. Uh, uh blew, blew me away too, man. Right. Yeah, it did for me as well. You gotta you gotta watch it twice though, to get the full experience. I feel like. Uh so much fake blood uh got on the camera. That when they was reshooting another film, that the blood, when they were doing the focus, blood came out of the damn lens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, while they were just in focus. But, yeah, man, the sounds of the killer, I mean, the, the opening shot of the killer is just like, damn. You know what you're getting into, you know. Uh, some of the music in it's a little wonky for me, but... It don't take me completely out of it, man. It's uh, during this time frame, probably one of the best horror films that came out, no doubt. But uh, let's see. Not a big Muse fan, Dirk? <laughs> a big what? I said you're not a big Muse fan? I don't know what that is. Muse's play is the wonky music you're talking oh, okay. about. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. It's the same yeah, nah. music that uh, What's Her Face used, and it's all over in the Twilight movies, too. So I'm right there. Yeah, when she's there. driving the car, she's blaring Muse. She's playing Muse, yeah. Okay, I didn't know that shit. I know the, the, and the kill, there's a kill in there that was inspired from The Shining. So, yeah. Great movie, man. I just, I didn't know that shit about that it was inspired from Dean Koontz's novel, Intensity, though. I think it's a way under recognized um, horror flick, man. I think a lot of people don't know about it. It's a great watch, right? Yeah, and this this is a great release, man. It had tons of special features. I had to order this shit from Australia, but 
Pretty good. Yeah, that's a hell of a pick, man. And it, um, it didn't oh, yeah, get a real big theater run here locally. You know, it's a French movie, right? Yeah. But, um, it, but it's um, it's one to check out for sure. And guys, yeah, who see. showed up? Oh, there awesome. he is. Hey, man. <laughs> What's, What's up, Brian? Welcome, buddy. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> um, we will get Brad's number three pick here. Then we'll get caught up with you after that. Um, all right. Cool. So we're all, we're doing we're on, we're doing our number three picks right now. All right. All right, Brad, what you got, buddy? I got really shitty internet right now. <laughs> That's what I got. <laughs> um, All right, man, we're back in 1999, right? Yeah, right. Dial up right here. Are you are you on Netscape, Brad? What's going on over there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Elon Musk is full of shit. That's what's up. <laughs> uh, this movie's from 2002. Uh, it's written by Brady Sinellis, very famous writer. Um, he wrote less than zero american psycho a lot of his movies get made in the in the movies but this is his most faithful to the book i've read all his books it's rules of attraction hmm. um if anybody's seen this movie it's it's a basically a college movie but it's not your typical college movie it's not about you know you know a bunch of you know like i mean it's a more nihilistic view of college uh, life it takes place in a fictional college uh, called camden in New Hampshire. Brad Easton writes about it often. Um, it's referenced in several of his books, actually, um, and movies. Um, other than the Europe montage that takes place in this, it's all shot in um, L.A. Uh, stars James Van Der Beek, uh, Shannon Sossaman, and Ian Sumholder. It's the three main characters they play. Sean Bateman, James Van Der Beek plays Sean Bateman, which is the younger brother of Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. So the stories, you know, there it's all the same universe as you would put it, Alan. Um, anyway, it, it follows these three main characters, and it, to call it a, they're the the last the last little bit of their college experience, and to call it a love triangle. I mean, that's understatement. It. It's like a love pentagon. I don't know what the fucking right word is. It's just like everybody's, uh, you know, everybody likes the person that doesn't like them kind of thing. Yeah. Um, everybody mm. is so, like, jaded and, um, I don't know, They're it's just, like I said, it's a darker side of college. It's not mm. the light, usual college movie that we're used to, like an American Pie or an Animal House. It's just, it's not that kind of college movie. Mm -hmm. um, the... The characters are not, again, atypical. They're not cool. They're not nice. Um, there's, they're, they're very dark and they're very, um, like I said, very jaded is the right word. Everything is so cheap, and the way the way they behave, the way they treat each other, um, it's just, like I said, it's it's just one of those things where it's also a sentimental pick because this was one of the movies that was. You know, on everybody's shelf back and back that back at that time it was a Vanilla Sky, Requiem for a Dream, this, right. you know, a few other titles. This is one of those titles. Um, and it, it's a, it's a pointless film. You know, there's no resolution. Um, that's the whole the whole point. Everybody's trying to get their shit together, and it just never really happens. And it's just it's, it's like I said, nihilistic. You know, the whole, whole point is nobody ever knows anyone. Nothing ever goes right, you know, so just kind of enjoy your life, live your life, and stop worrying so much is kind of the point. But if, if I'm not explaining this movie very well, it's because it's hard to explain. And I'll, I'll show you a picture here. This is the the uh, parental guide for a MIMDB. I don't know if you can read that. Okay. Severe yeah. in all categories. Yeah. So <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's... <laughs> <laughs> if you're into Brad Easton Ellis stuff at all, if you liked American Psycho, the you'll cover like it. don't match that shit, by the way. Yeah, the cover yeah, makes and, it look like a rom The cover yeah, makes the way it, it was, like was pitched it. was not the same way either. And a lot of people came out of that movie, and I was like, "Damn, that shit was dark, yeah. dark as fuck." I mean, oh, it's yeah. dark. It's. it's it, I was it's like, "What the fuck is Brad it. holding up right here?" It, it's it's <laughs> not a party. <laughs> this is not your typical college party. Let's get drunk and let's get laid and. You know, yeah. hijinks and all that stuff. None of that. The characters, they're not like your typical college characters where it's like, oh, they're too cool for school. Uh, they're fucking tool bags. 
most of them and it's just kind of obvious like they're trying to play acoustic guitar and you know it just it just doesn't it's more realistic in my experience my experience with oh yeah with college this is the more realistic movie than an american pie 2 where everybody's just having fun and dancing around and happy endings and shit happy endings it's not happy for everybody right. so i've explained this movie terribly but go out and watch it read the book uh, this is the most faithful to ready Snellis's books um, check this one out. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I just Read didn't expect book. that type of, when I seen that cover, I was like, that's it's not very, a fucking Brad. Yeah, very, <laughs> very bright. I'm just having a good time. We're having a blast here. This looks Pop, like a Pop's fucking... beat me to it. And so I'm, I'm going to go and give myself shit, Brad, before he can get to me. But that is a great book, dude. I love that book, man. Yeah. I've read that book a couple times. Oh yeah. All his books yeah. are great. And the, the, some of the ones that didn't make movies, Oh really yeah, good too. You know, mm-hmm. I, I figured Brian would be maybe the only one I, that actually had seen that on the, you know, the panel. I fucking love that movie. Yeah, yeah I wrote great. it down. I've never seen it, but so far I got History of Violence to rewatch, Rules of Attraction, and Emily Rose to rewatch. So that's yeah. the three I'm yeah. going to check out first. Cool. So, well, well, Brian, welcome I'm to the stream, buddy. Give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you made it, man. I'm looking forward to see what um what you yeah, got there. Too, man. I've been waiting to see what Brian's got for a while. All right, so, so I mean, you have got the floor, sir. Cool. Well, am I going to do five, four, and three? Yep. Yes, sir. Go for it. All right, so number five is, uh, you know, I had to include my guy here. Um, I have a, a better edition in one of my boxes in the closet. The DVD edition has, like, a comic book mm-hmm. in there, like, this thick and shit. But I got Sin City. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, man. Cool. Great movie. Yeah. Uh, had to get Rodriguez some notoriety, of course. Um, oh, this yeah. has a crazy cast. Mickey Rourke, Bruce Willis, Benicio Del Toro, um, Jessica Alba. Um, yeah. Which Murphy, of the three stories? Which Elijah of the three Wood. stories is your favorite? Which one? Which of the three stories is your favorite? Um, probably Marv. Yeah. 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 yeah but I like the Yellow Bastard a lot, too. I think that's oh, pretty nuts. Yeah. I always liked Nick Stahl as a kid. I was the man without a face is one of my favorites in, in the nineties. Um, but uh yeah, this I love the way that this is like pretty much it seemed like I think they shot this in like a garage or something like that with a bunch of green screen going on. Yeah. Um it's just Damn. insane the way they pulled okay. this off. Um I think yeah. it's like the first of its kind to do that. Um now they haven't really done that many type of movies like this since. Uh, a lot of people give the sequel shit, but I think that one's pretty good too. It's just not as good as this. Yeah, um, it's kind of like, uh, what is it, 300 and the sequel to 300. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. Yeah. So if that if that one were to come out first before this one, it probably would have gotten a better, um, right, better review for it. But uh, it, even though this is like a little planned edition, it's stacked with features and shit too. Um, yeah, it's fully two discs. Um, but uh, waiting for this one for 4K. Hell yeah. Um, I don't know what really what else to talk about. Is I mean, it's a Frank Miller uh, graphic novel um, translated into a movie perfectly. Um, tons of violence, uh, great storytelling. I love how it has the three separate um, volumes to it. Um, there's a special guest director Quentin Tarantino during one of the one of the parts, so that's cool. Um, he's always collaborating with Rodriguez. Uh, yeah, just great all around movie. That's my number five. Yeah, yeah, I can't Very believe good. that thing doesn't have a 4K yet. Right? <laughs> right. It would look great on 4K too. It would. Man. Oh, Those yeah, colors right. and shit with the black and white. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Um, uh, this, I don't know how this climb past my number five. I think it's just the one that I watched more. I guess um, back when I was like, you know, coming out of high school and everything. But I picked uh, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. <laughs> uh, this yeah, is the, yeah, three, the highly flammable free movie set so it's all three of them in there but uh talking about the first one um just hilarious from start to finish i just always loved it what's that uh, I always what's loved the, ready for your cock meat sandwich <laughs> yeah that's that's one time of it. That's, that's the sequel but uh this is directed by the same director that did do where's my car uh, this is a superior movie in my opinion um I love John Cho, and I, and I always thought that he was, like, never recognized too much as being anything more than, like, the MILF character in American Pie back then. Um, so it was cool to see him actually do something else. Um, Neil Patrick Harris came out of the blue in this one, and he became a... Like, he His whole resurgence started because of this movie. And uh, then he became in How I Met Your Mother and all sorts of other stuff. 
But uh, you got some pretty funny um, cameos in here. Fred Willard's in here a little bit. Uh, Anthony Anderson is the the um, drive through. Whenever he's like, it's, it's semen, animal semen. <laughs> um, Jamie Kennedy pops up in here. Um, was that I forget the name of the guy um, who's in Wet Hot American Summer, but he's like freak show guy. He's funny as hell. Um, it's got that one chick who's in like a lot of like uh, the newer comedy. Um, I forget her name too, but whatever. Uh, it's just I don't know. Overall, pretty fun movie from start to finish. I think it's great. And I finally get the White Castle at the end and uh, eat the shit ton, shit ton of uh, sliders. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's my number four. And the number three is um, this one I probably rewatched the most out of the three that I should just show And that's uh, Cabin Fever. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. This nice. is just a horror comedy. And I just love it so much. It's uh, Eli Roth's best movie, in my opinion. Um I like it more than hot, the hostile movies for sure. Uh, I always liked uh, Ryder Strong and Boy Meets World, so it's funny to see him like doing a little bit of a horror movie here. Yeah, that is and, crazy. See, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you got man. the yeah, and uh, Jordan Ladd who was in a bunch of like stuff around then, and uh, what's his name, um, uh, James DeBello, who's like the the stoner character in Detroit Rock City, is really funny in this. Um, and it's got that guy, um, Joey Kern from like Super Troopers, the beginning of the scene. Mm -hmm. the, one of those those druggies in the car in the beginning of Super Troopers. And then uh, the only other thing that Serena Vincent, I think, has been in is not another team movie is the naked like foreign exchange student girl. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, this movie is just great. Uh, it's it could be a true story, too. I mean, they just knock this guy who's got like this crazy virus into the pond and uh, yeah, end up infesting all the waters with this. Uh, with this stuff and anybody that drinks the water has this fever inside of them that just eats them from the inside out. Uh, pretty insane premise. And, uh, I don't know. Fun. You gotta movie. love that damn razor scene too. You know, yeah, the razor. Yeah, exactly. why, why the hell is she cutting her? <laughs> is she shaving her legs at all? Anyways, why does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> but I it's just fun. You so ready. have a razor. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm forgot to mention uh, Giuseppe Andrews as the um, the deputy. Uh, he's hilarious in this. He's like, grab me forty, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, and even Eli Roth has a cameo in here. He actually has two cameos. One in the um, the backstory of the bowling alley scene when he when he's talking about like some gruesome death and this this uh, tale that he I think he, the guy's telling um, Eli Roth's telling a story about whatever something happened in the bowling alley or whatever and then it's actually him in the bowling alley too yeah so um but yeah cabin fever that's, that's my top three so far five four and three cool nice good, yeah. picks, man. good picks hell yeah you realize that we, none of us have picked the same movie yet i, I was just thinking about that dirt yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> see if that holds up well everybody surprised me all the way through Everybody's number one is going to be Rules of Attraction. So, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I can't wait for it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> All right. So, we will go on with my number three here, real quick. And um, it's worth, it's worth noting that we don't know. Like, I guess I don't know if people under the chat know this, that so we don't know what we're going to pull. Right. Yeah, we, no, we, we don't, don't talk right exactly. That's a good point because I don't yeah, know. We're very you know. secretive about throughout the two weeks between shows. Yeah, I don't. Um, yeah, we hadn't mentioned that one time, have we? So by the time we go live, whatever, I'm really curious. But um, this one here is going to be one of my favorite remakes of all times, and that is um, Dawn of the Dead, oh, um, yeah. the remake. Right. Um, definitely oh, one of my yeah. favorite remakes, directed by Zack Snyder. This was his feature film debut. Um, screenplay was done by James Gunn, um, based on characters, obviously, by um, – uh, fuck. Um, goddamn, the guy's fucking name is Drew fucking blank. Uh, Ron, uh, Romero, Romero, shit. Lying. <laughs> <laughs> but great remake and Romero um, for, had reservations about this remake being made, whatever. And um, after seeing it, he was surprisingly impressed with the film and gave it a lot of kudos, whatever. So he was a big fan of this remake. So I thought that was pretty, um, had to be pretty inspiring, you know, for Zack Snyder. Um, um, also Heather Langenkamp played Nancy and, um, and not on Elm street, whatever was on the production crew of this movie, which I didn't know. Um, and I, and I rewatched this yes, yesterday. I think it was, and make sure, I don't think I'd ever done this before, make sure you watch the credits. Because yeah, yeah. throughout the credits, they, they show basically the, the fate of the survivors. Yeah, you guys yeah. have seen it before. All the survivors, it shows what happens to them during the credits. 
And if memory serves, I don't think I ever watched that until recently. And I actually, just like my wife had walked in, I had left it on as the credits were rolling. And I finally was like, hold on a minute. And I had to watch those scenes. So it totally changes the ending of the movie. Um, Ben Grimes is such a big fan of this of this franchise. We heard it was being made. Um, he actually sought out the production staff to get cast. And the ironic thing is, is they wrote his character when they, they were doing the screenplay. They actually had him in mind all along with her for the part. So it was kind of meant to be. Um, movie came out March 19th, 2004, had um, a $26 million budget. It made $59 million in the States and $102 million worldwide. So it was definitely a success. Um, it's just a fun movie. The favorite part for me is whenever they're on top of the building and they got the guy across the way in the gun store and they're kind of killing time. And they're basically trying to find zombies that look like famous people. They find a John Lin a Jay Leno, a Burr Reynolds, and they're just picking mm -hmm. them off. Um, it's, it's, it's a great scene. <laughs> And you got Ving Rhames and the guy at the gun store, you know, they're kind of across the street from each other and they're holding up signs. They're playing a game of chess and just stuff like that. It's just, it's a well cast yeah. movie. Um, it has um, Sarah Polly, Ving Rhames, and if I say his name right, Makia Pfeiffer, I think. Yeah. Um, you probably yeah. seen him in Eight Mile. But oh, he yeah. did a real great yeah, job at this. Um, yeah. Great special effects. The time it was said and done, they had done like 3,000 different effects for zombies. So they kind of went all out for the effects and it really, really, um, really holds up. Um, really good practical effects in this. Um, the opening scene, um, when the zombie breakout you know, finally happens, there's one scene when the girl's driving to where she is going towards the mall. There's one scene where you see a helicopter and there's a car that like goes into a gas station. Well, that's kind of an homage from like part of the news line from the original Dawn of the Dead. And mm -hmm. the helicopter is like is the same newscast or new, um, news company from the 1978, um, whatever whatever year it came out. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of nods to this. Um, you have Tom Savini, and I don't remember the actor's name, but the guy that plays um, the black guy in the original. Ken um, Corey. They both Ken have small, yeah. yeah, there you go. Uh, and also, uh, being Rain's name is Kenneth in this, which is a throwback to him. Mm -hmm. um, but both of them, and there's one other guy. There's three people from the original movie um, in this playing different roles. You know, Tom Savini played the leader of the gang in the old movie, and this one he's like a, a deputy sheriff on the TV. He has a great scene. Um, what's his name again, Brad, uh, Brian? What you say? The guy that plays uh, Ken, Ken Corey. Ken Forey. Ken Forey. Okay, Ken, right. Well, he, he has a scene where he's like an evangelist on TV, and he says the famous line that when hell fills up, the dead will walk the earth. He says mm -hmm. that part. Yeah. So they do he's a lot of throwbacks. Playing Dirk. Dirk. That character, right. Dirk, is based on that character. <laughs> right. but anyway, I know that when this movie came out, um, I know that James Gunn was getting death threats because there's such a big following for this franchise that they were remaking this. It was like sacrilege. And, and I thought they did a great job with it. I feel yeah. like anybody that's a fan of the franchise has to at least appreciate this for what it is. It's just a great, it's a great remake. I think it's one of the best. It's one of my favorites. It's definitely a top three. Um, but rewatching it holds up. It definitely, um, definitely made my top five after rewatching it. So, it's a hot take, man. But I like that better than the original. And uh, I, I hate to say I it, man, but I, I, it's, it's more rewatchable. It's more rewatchable yeah. for me. I, I, I love call the, the original. I love the Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Love it, but I call yeah. the original Yawn of the Dead. It's so damn boring to me, you know. I don't know, man. I, I like Day of the Dead. No, man, it's a, it's a great movie. Man. I love the right. original Dawn of the Dead. I, I'm not going to hate on it a bit, but um, as yeah, far I as rewatchability, I, I usually watch this one more than I watch that one. And that, that second opening, time releases. The opening scene of that Dawn, Dawn of the Dead remake is so badass, too. Yeah, I love that girl opening. Yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly I think that, that that movie um was kind of what allowed the future zombie reboot to happen. I mean, after that, then then you know everything kind of took off. Um uh, James yeah. Gunn did such a damn good job with it. You know, I and I went into it, you know, because being a huge zombie fan, I was like, oh, all right, here we go. And then I was just completely blown away. Yeah. And for people that um are huge TV fans of like Modern Family, if you want to see Ty Burrell in a, in a role that you would never expect him in, check this movie out. Um yeah. <laughs> he plays an interesting just asshole. He's funny, though. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. And um, there's a, this, the whole scene with shit. the yeah, the whole scene with the zombie baby. That whole the whole segment, yeah. whatever, is pretty. Oh pretty, yeah. Pretty, pretty disturbing. Yeah. So they go all I mean, out. People forget that Zack Snyder's made some great movies, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, it's just and for some reason. There's one scene that's one of my favorite my favorite scenes when they're all being chased by zombies and the survivors all get in the elevator together and the door closes and you go from this craziness all of a sudden you have elevator music. Yeah, and the one guy goes, like, "Oh man, I, I love this song." Well, it, when they song. were filming that shot, there was actually no music even being played, and him saying, "Oh, I love this, I love this music" or whatever was actually just ad lib, and the director liked it, left it in. But um, like I said, there was no music being played during that scene. 
but it's a nice little, you know, nice little breath, whatever, when you're being, you get being chased by all these zombies, it's intense, and it's a nice little comedic moment thrown in there. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Great all right, so I appreciate it, man. We'll get caught up on the chat here real fast. And guys, we got um 41 people in here. We have broke our record again. It's the oh, first yeah. time we've had over 40, so I appreciate it, guys. Well, that's awesome. All right, boss, let's smash the like button, everyone. Christy is perfect. Mel says, oh, come on. All right. Uh, India Phantom, what's going on, man? So super late for this one. There are some gems in, in these years for sure. Yeah, yeah I agree. That's a tough one. Gizmo said, yeah, to Bubba. Bob said, where's the slip? Where's the slip for that, Doc? Hashtag slip shame. Go past that one. Don't don't talk about it. Yeah, we're just moving on by. We'll talk about that later. What was there? Besides, besides Did Brad. Are you okay without it? Yeah, he had to get a region free player to play it, but I think it plays. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was Dirk and uh, Ryan's top uh, number three? My, mine was Bubba Hotep. Oh, uh, my, mine was uh, high tension. Okay, cool. <clears throat> and I had um 40 year old version, Joyride, and the Don of the Dead. Yeah, I heard Joyride. Yeah, that was the last thing I heard. <clears throat> All right, K Man says, okay, who's the big Hank fan? Hmm. What's he Hank referring Hood. to there? Oh, uh, big. He's talking about the Hills Have Eyes remake with uh, Ted Levine, his character. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I thought he was talking about Hank Jr. Shit. Yes, yeah, I thought too. So. I am a big Hank fan. That's the case. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, and he says, saw, saw the premiere of Boba Hotep at um, TIFF. Good stuff with um, Don Cossarelli. Uh, Cold of July is classic for sure. It's a great movie. Monkey says on the My Killer podcast, his cameo in Multiverse let me down. Why, Bruce, did you need the money that bad? Well, he does. <laughs> he does whatever a cameo I think in all Raimi's films, don't he? Yeah, yeah. Him and, yeah, him and that car from the Evil Dead. <laughs> they're tight. They're tighter, like tighter than Dick's hat band. For those in the North, we'll explain that one later. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Gizmo said he had me on the floor and had his mouth over my asshole. Okay, I That's think maybe lot. that was meant That's for oh. Never asked. Him was out. A... <laughs> All right, so Mer Merger Video says they dyed me this color. That's how clever they are. Yeah, that's Ozzy Davis talking about. How can he be black and JFK? Right. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris he says my number three is Mulholland Drive, a David Lynch masterpiece. I got that yeah, on yeah. Um, Criterion back there. Still got to watch. That's a great movie. It's a good movie. All right. <laughs> laughing at the Mel's laughing at the monkey. Or right, City Eubanks, so my number three movie is Insomnia 2002, Robin Williams, RIP, Hillary Swank, and Al Pacino, directed by Christopher Nolan. Nightmares, they never end, it never ends. Yeah, I've seen Insomnia in theaters and I hadn't rewatched it since, but um, yeah, definitely one I need to check out again. I actually own that one on Voodoo. Yeah, Insomnia is a pretty good one. It's That's like good. daylight. And like daylight for so many days in a row or a month or something. And I think y'all help me with the name up, but I think I got that um the original on Criterion during the Criterion sale. What's the name of the original? Is it called Insomnia also? Or yeah, I'm not familiar. That's all yeah, I, I think know. I got that one from Criterion. It's in Alaska, right? It takes place in Alaska. Yeah, it takes place in a yeah. small town in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Robin Williams right. did a little string of dark movies during that time. Yeah, he, did. yeah, he was. He was trying to really kind of He's breaking going through some moment. shit, obviously. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah, clearly he's got some darkness in him, or he did, okay. or, right? Before that road yep. got him. Yeah, Mullen Drive definitely my top three too. Was just watching it again. All right, Goodman yeah, said the watch. opening monologue. I was dreaming, dreaming my dick was out. It was checking to see if the infected bump on the head of it was filled with pus again. Oh hell, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any fan said intensity was a great TV movie too. The one based directly on the book. Okay, I need to check that shit out for sure. I'm a big Dean Koontz fan, man. He don't get enough yeah. love. Yeah, I never saw yeah. the the uh, TV movie, but I heard it got great reviews. All right, Mucky said my number three pick is The Bird because it's a timeless classic that could take place from 2001 to 2005 when no one no one would complain. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that don't count. Yeah, no count. <laughs> so high tension is great. He did a great remake of The Hills Have Eyes right after. In fact, one of the few remakes that is better than the original. Yeah, totally agree. Yep. Okay, so who's going to be our 
Abe 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 <laughs> Fish from, from Barney Mill. <laughs> Chris, I'm going to have to check that movie out, Dirk. You seem to like the same stuff I do. Yeah, Chris, check out High Tension. Get into David Lynch, dude. High, High Tension is a good watch, man. It's a lot of fun. Berg, you'll be right there. Oh, yeah. All right, Hollow Notes. And what's up to Brian? I'm saying peace. Right. The Cinema Murder Video, Gianetto De Rossi did the effects. Um, he worked with Fulci. Okay. Awesome. Proceeds go, Brian. Glad you can make it. Yep. Yeah. I was going to be here all along. <laughs> And there's more and more says uh, collateral is my number three. Tom Cruise plays an excellent villain. That scene in the jazz club where he's making the guy play trivia to save his own life is so damn good. I totally agree. One of my favorite scenes. Yeah. I like the club scene where he goes to the like the rave type club where all the Asians are hanging out, and he just yeah. rips yeah. ass all through that whole place. <laughs> this is great, and then yeah. he just. Rolls out when he's done. When he's yep. done working, he just slowly walks out. It's like John Wick before John Wick. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great Tom Cruise role. Yeah. Uh, Cindy you makes a dark, nice t shirt. One of the greatest metal bands of all time are Iron Maiden. Right. Hell yeah, man. Amen. That's my, that's my favorite band of all time. So. Hell yeah. Gizmo uh, Rules of Attraction is a mind fuck. I remember first time I saw it and I felt really shocked when the twist comes. I need to check that shit out then, man. Because that cover was deceiving as hell. I mean, I'm not sure everybody's going to like it, but if you were at that age, at that time, like right. Brian would probably back me up on this. It was oh, just yeah. one of those one of those mm -hmm. movies that hit right at the right time. And, yep. and it holds up really well, in my opinion. But, and it's uh, a, the weirdest thing on the Blu-ray, or the DVD and the Blu-ray, I think. I think it's on the Blu-ray, too, but the commentary on there is done by a fucking Carrot Top. Carrot Top. The weirdest yeah. thing ever. Oh, <laughs> really? Shit. I don't know about the commentary. commentary. All right. He's never seen the movie before. He doesn't know anything about the movie. He just, he's the commentary. It's the weirdest thing ever. I don't know. That's the only special feature. Get the <laughs> commentary done by Karen Top. Oh, that's weird. And I've listened to it, man. And he's just like, Eric Stoltz, that's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest bonus feature. Yeah. <laughs> All right, India fan, I must say, hell yeah, I have the Rules of Attractions on my list. One of the best flicks. Uh, Roger Avery has a new podcast with Tarantino called Video Archives. Amazing pick. Didn't think anyone would have, anyone would have it. Yeah, he's yeah, a good director. Right. He's a good director. I mean, it, it's done really well. Script's great, everything. The dialogue, you can tell it's a really strong writer piece. It's got a ton of inner monologue, you know, and... Um, you know, all these characters are kind of loners, and even the friends they do have, they hate each other. Like Bateman has this group of friends; they're even bigger tool bags than he is. <laughs> Some of them are closeted, and you can just tell they just they don't really like each other, but they're all the same kind of tools, so they all hang out with each other. Right. It's just that, and if you were in and around colleges during this time, you could you can fit right in. You can see those those kind of clicks and the way things go. It just it, I thought it was very real to life. Uh, any fan so the rules of attraction has that great film within a fi film within a film european vacation trip montage just amazing with kit pardue yeah kit pardue actually went to all those towns in europe and italy and all that stuff and kit pardue plays like a huge asshole in it and uh, it's just again it's a lot, I, I have a lot of fun with it it brings back a lot of memories yeah, i'm gonna check it out for sure it's a hell of a drug all right <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, send a merger video. Fred Savage shooting up between the toes and playing the clarinet. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're in for. Right. Okay. Well, that sounds like my type of movie, man. All right. And if Anna says one character in it is the cousin of Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. Also, Jessica Bill is hot as hell. Yeah. Pat, uh, Patrick Bateman is the older brother of Sean Bateman, who's in the, is in the movie. The, uh, Sean Bateman's also mentioned in the book American Psycho. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably their cousins, mm -hmm. their brothers. Hmm. All right, and the fans, says, I still need to see a history of violence, which I have put off watching forever. Oh, oh man. Yeah, you need to check that out. Yeah, check that and out. I, really think, I really would recommend checking out Easter Promises as well. Easter yeah. Promises. Yeah. Too, but I, I, right. I love that movie. It's, it goes right up there with it. Right. Yeah. It's hard to, for me to pick between the two. Really? Yeah. yeah. 
Chris says it's a great, great pick, Brian. Uh -huh. All right, City so Bank says Sin City equals great or a great movie. Holiday says watch Sin City in theaters. Weird, but I liked it. I'm a fan of it. Both yeah, of them. I've seen it. I saw it in the theater, man. I was blown away. I'd never seen no shit like that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Andy Fan, I said, much love for the other Jessica Alba, great in Sin City, and she was in the first Blu ray I ever bought. Into the blue, which if you want to see a great underwear footage, underwater footage, underwear footage is good too. A great underwater <laughs> footage of her tushy. I'll take some. I'll take Where's your mind going? <laughs> In there, we we'll like swimwear. And I'd appreciate it if you don't make me say tushy anymore. Andy <laughs> <Yeah>. Phantom <laughs> um, says, "Hell yeah, here Kumar. Uh, the first one is a classic. Yeah, yeah. we don't have any uh, White Castles around here. We have something called Crystal Burgers or Crystals. Yeah, same, same thing. Here. Um, yep." But but yeah, we don't have one here in town. So anytime we travel, I always try to stop at one. Uh -huh. Yeah, we don't have none of that. There's anymore. one like in Lake City, which is you know like 45 minutes from here, hour give or take. Um, Hollow Note says, "What a great commercial for a diarrhea-inducing fast food restaurant." <laughs> 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 and something about the crystals, I'm sure White Castle is the same way. I always say, "Damn, I want a crystal burger," and after I eat them, I'm always always have a grip. But um, <laughs> kind of like Taco Smell. <laughs> Yeah, kind of like there you go. Um, right. Chris C says um, it's great, great jerk food, by the way. I don't, I don't uh, regret my Taco Bell nights. So I like that. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris C says, Oh, cabin fever, good stuff, Brian. Yeah, that's body horror at its finest. Yeah, and this, this is what I was thinking of when you were talking about it. Pancakes, yeah, I forgot to mention pan the pancakes thing. Yeah, and uh, I got whatever a... he's, like, he's like, What's that gun for? He's like, Oh, that's for the <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. Shit. Oh, yeah, well, I got Ryan, you cut out right there. Oh, yeah, what was I didn't want to say it. <laughs> I got a um, that, that I got a top fun. ten WTF video out yeah. there, and the pancake scene is one of my top ten WTF oh, yeah. moments. Um, that scene when he's like fucking, when he has to smash his girlfriend down with the the, the shovel and shit. That's yeah. <laughs> it's I mean, who hasn't wanted to do that? Right. <laughs> All right, Eddie says, I can't watch Harold Kumar without having White Castle burgers on hand. Touche. All right. Chris C says, Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, Pops. I love that movie. My favorite zombie movie. Yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be way up there for me. Um, That's what we need to do, Brad. We need to do a top five zombie movie. I'm in. Um, in. Hell yeah. Number one for me. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Andy Fanning said, Don of the Dead was so much better than Army of the Dead, which uh, wasted the Vegas location. Yeah, I didn't like Army yeah. of the Dead. I yeah, I wasn't a big fan of it either. Yeah, you know, I, I got so bored with it. I, I watched it late at night. I watched like maybe an hour of it, went to bed, never did go back to it. Yeah, Somebody it's up there with like, uh, what was that, Video of the Dead or the one with the kids? Yeah. Hmm. They had telekinesis and shit. They yeah. could telepathically talk to each other and they could talk and yeah. shit. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. All right. Chrissy said the scene with the baby gets me every time. Yeah, I man, that's, that's a tough scene. And these horrid mores of the baby birth and dying of the dead is still freaky as fuck to this day. Yeah, no mm -hmm. doubt. Mike says to Chris C, the, the baby's father, an ass, letting her die slowly from the cut. Yeah, he didn't want to face reality. Yeah. And um, Matt Chan says, Dying of the Dead remake is great. Many people like it more than the original. Yep, I'm one of them. I know I do. And Holiday says, number three for me is Catch Me If You Can. That's a great movie. Yeah. Dr. Harris, do you concur? Concur to what? <laughs> <laughs> Any fans, the next time you guys enter the late 90s, good luck with that. So many going to be an amazing show. I predict a few duplicates, but not many. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to the 90s. I'm really looking, looking forward, forward to the 80s. Yeah. We've already talked 80s. about it. That next, that next span is going to be brutal. Yep. Yeah, 96, yeah. 2000. 99 was one of the best movies, one of the best years for releases, I think. 94, oh, yeah. 99 are strong. Yeah, 99 is strong. a banger. Year. Yeah, a lot of good ones. 2000, too, man. I'm glad yeah, 2000 was yeah. in this band. Yeah, there's one out of 2000, I know for sure. I was gonna things. say, I've already peaked ahead a little bit, and I was already like, so I'm trying hard not to do that because one of my favorite things to do as soon as we finish the stream is I, I get on my voodoo, that's where I start it, then I go to IMDb. And I start adding movies for those years, and it's just fun to go through and go, oh shit, oh shit. And you like get mm -hmm. one or two that ain't moving, you know. He gets one of those like clickers from the like uh, a nightclub. <laughs> 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 next, next, next. Yeah. 
<laughs> we're at full capacity. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, you're not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nightmare five or Friday five. I'm curious. Friday five. No. Oh, Friday five. Friday five. Yeah. Friday five. Yeah, probably. Friday five. It's gonna be Friday five for me too. Remember the dream child? Come on now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Gizmo said Insomnia is a remake of a Norwegian film called Insomnia also, yeah. Norwegian Norwegian is great, American is okay. Heard a lot yeah. of people say the same thing. But as far as the, that one being better. But um I've not seen the, the original. The monkey says, uh then my third pick is Doom starred Black Adam. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, Dwayne yeah just got a got a four K of that which came out. Um, mm-hmm. Chris C says, I love David Lynch and Cronenberg. My favorite movie by Lynch is The Elephant Man, and my favorite from Cronenberg is Videodrome. I love Videodrome. Okay, Videodrome. The Elephant is Man is, great is a good movie, man. It really is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's his most famous movie, that. probably. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm pumped to watch Collateral again now. Can't go wrong with Michael Mann and Tom Cruise. Yeah, Jamie Foxx says, That's just a great movie. Remember, Jamie Foxx did a really good job of that, too. Yeah. Um, he's, he's kind of weak, though. In my opinion, that character. What? Oh, yeah. yeah what? I fucking hate Jamie Foxx. Right. <laughs> God damn it. Stinks the whole fucking movie up. I like Jamie Foxx and Booty Call. Damn. <laughs> my thing for his role, man, it, it kind of had to be. I mean, he's just a fucking taxi driver that's having to step up, yeah. and, you know, yeah. he's kind of just Joe, a regular Joe, you know. Right. This is a good but, time to say joining us from backstage is Jamie Foxx. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd rather watch Jamie Foxx and then Living Color. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Home, home we don't play that, dude. Home we don't play that. <laughs> That's how I feel yes. about Jim Carrey. So, yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Um, my son he was too young to know, to know the fuck I was talking about, but my son's first grade teacher's name was Miss Homie. And we, we oh, went to okay. the teacher's okay. conference, you know, and she said what her name was. And I'm sitting there just trying not to laugh. Home we don't play so my, that. My, my son's like in like, this was like first grade. We get back in the truck, and I said, Make sure you do your homework because homie don't play that. And that was a great <laughs> moment for me. He had no fucking idea. Um, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, Miss Homie, that, that was fun for me. <laughs> Brother, um, big ass stock, you know. Hit people with a uh, Ripping asshole through a whole place before slowly pulling out means something totally different altogether here in Scotland. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. And he put wow at the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fat Boy Harley, says, what are your thoughts on the new Pinhead movie on Hulu? Is that come out uh, yet? Or is, is, a, is it a movie or a show? It's a movie, it's right? A movie, I it, think. They got a movie oh, and a, a show. Movie. I don't think it's been released yet. Yeah, they got a show yeah. coming too, though. I think. Now, which it, one it might is, be um, is, the, is the girl playing Pinhead? Is that the movie or the show? I think that's the movie. I'm I think not it's a movie. Me on that though. I think it is. It's. I think it's a movie. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. I'm a big um, Hellraiser fan. I love yeah. Hellraiser. Yeah. yeah Hollander says, "I like Jamie Fox and Bait." Yeah. I'm trying to picture that bait. I can't think of it. <laughs> it right, that's right after Master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bait. Yeah, Master Bait. That's a great, um, great double feature. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Just go on. Just it out. Right? <laughs> He's like, see, see what I did. <laughs> See what I did there? Oh. I told him. I told him. <laughs> Mic drop. Let's <laughs> bring back from there. Oh, <laughs> Magic Hand says, "Let's not forget about Jamie Foxx playing Ray." Yeah, yeah, he did a great job in that role, man. The Mux says, "Doom came out in October twenty first, two thousand five, so I'm in the right year, pops." Yeah. You are, but the movie's yeah. not, not yeah, one of yeah. them. If it makes the top sure. five, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, old School Pete says, sorry. The monk says, Old School Pete, uh, we are related. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're all related spiritually. Yes, why not? 4K Lowdown, what's going on, man? What's up, guys? Okay, man. And that takes us. We are caught up with the chat, and we can move on to our number two, guys. We are getting right along here. Number two. And Brian, you are up, buddy. All right, man. Number two. This was this was another one that moved up and down the list um, between one, two, and three spot. It's another one of my all-time favorites. It's in the same genre. Like I said, I, I feel like this this uh, time was all psychological thrillers, but this one I, I feel like was way underrated, uh, way underappreciated, and it's a great um, horror slasher film. Called Frailty. Hell yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Bill yeah. Paxton, Matthew McConaughey. This is Bill Paxton's directorial debut. 
uh, movie. This movie was made on a very <clears throat> low budget. It's got Powers Booth in it. Uh, Bill Paxson pulled a lot of these guys in. He, he uh, and Powers Booth, of course, were in Tombstone together. He, uh, Bill Paxson felt like he was one of the um, greatest actors he'd ever seen, so he wanted in it. He had worked with Matthew McConaughey on um, uh, other movies, and they ended up doing U571 together. Um, I won't say too much about this movie because it's a it, it's a it's another one that's got a great ending. The yeah. way this story is told, um, you got multiple storylines going on at the same time. A great twist ending that um, it, there's a couple of different twists at the ending actually. Um, Bill Paxton had a lot of help. I don't want to say a lot of help, but he, but he had a lot of input from James Cameron on on this. Um, it's just a great movie. It's got multiple different um, genres going with it. Um, Paxton intentionally wanted this movie to be rewatchable, which is kind of a big thing to say for a movie that has got a surprise ending because once you've seen it, it really should be done. But this movie really is rewatchable. It's right. it's kind of like a memento or kind of like an identity where you can rewatch this movie and you see all the foreshadowing that's going on, especially with the directing um, that Paxton does. And, you know, for a direct for a for his first movie, he's directing kids, you know, which is not the easiest thing to do. Um, and I think P Bill Paxton just kills it um, in this movie. It, it, and what the only, I mean, the best testament I can say is that James Cameron, Stephen King, and Sam Raimi consider it in their like top ten favorite movies of all time. So I mean, that that tells you everything you need to know about it right there. Yeah. Um, Bill it's Paxton good. was wasn't sure because when they did a first test screening for this movie, um, right at the very beginning after the first kill scene, I guess I, I'll call it, twenty five people got up and left the theater, um, and he thought he'd made a huge mistake. <laughs> Um, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah so um but just just great i mean it, there's a lot of little subtle things in here the there's an axe in this movie um and it's got a name on it and the name is otis um and bill paxton did that intentionally because he wanted it to kind of have its its be its own persona but when he was out looking for locations to film this um apparently the story goes he ran across a homeless guy that he wanted to give some money to and he didn't want to take any money from bill paxton so bill paxton said well let me at least you know, do something for you. So that was the dude's name. He put put the dude's name in the in the movie. So, um, you know, we we lost him. Him and Powers Booth, uh, both great losses, I think, to the to the uh, the acting world. So, just if you've never seen this movie, you like psychological thriller slasher movies. If you like movies where you know you're gonna have a surprise ending, especially where if you think you really got it figured out, check this movie out. Hell yeah, yeah man, I'm a big fan of it. And um, speaking of Powers Booth, there's not a movie he's hadn't been in. He, he don't make better. Um, he's mm -hmm. one of the best support actors. And, I mean, he's just one of the best that ever, ever was, in my opinion. And um, he's just a talent. I, I hate to lose Crazy him. Crazy good. Yeah. Yeah, way underrated actor. That's a damn good movie, man. Yeah, if you yeah. guys haven't seen Frailty, man, check that out, man. That is a, a, a great watch. Yeah. And I don't want to say it's underrated, but it kind of sort of is. You don't hear a lot of people talk about it. Yeah, it, but, it really doesn't. It kind of flew under the radar. And, um, uh, I don't know. I think I think I would agree. I think it is is way underrated. You're right about the two twists too, because I mean, yeah, I love when they like, find the oh. they get they get directed towards the tools, right? And they bring those home like this is what we're going to use to deal with these problems, right? And it's like a fucking pipe and some gloves and an axe, right? A pipe, right? You're like what the fuck, you know? <laughs> and, like, and the way one, the I'm way thinking. the one kid gets all into it, and the brother's like, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It was Great. oh, there was a, another thing that was funny is apparently a lot of it was done on the soundstage, um, and um, Bill Paxson says in one of the one of the commentaries, he said we're filming on one soundstage, and it actually we shared a space with another soundstage where Reith Witherspoon was filming Legally Blonde, and he said we'd come out at the same time. He said I'd be covered in blood, and she'd be standing <laughs> there like in Chanel, and she'd be like, Hey, how's work going? And he's like, this is, this is a, It really is just a job to these guys, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, man. Well, um, not ordinary. What you got in that cup there, man? <laughs> What's your drink of choice tonight? Uh, it's your, it's your maker's mark, pops. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, good choice. All right, Dirk, what you got, man? All right, man. I'm gonna start this off by saying, uh. The first line from uh, Seth Rogen in any movie uh, is, I like your boobs. <laughs> and uh, that's none other than Donnie Darko. <laughs> yeah. 
great movie. Uh, no, nah, man, this movie, it's a great movie, man. Uh, it's very ambiguous, but at the same, it's like a time travel movie. Um, uh, it could be like Donnie Darko, he's he's like uh, more intelligent than everyone that's around him. Like, he can see through everybody's bullshit. That's the way I interpret this movie. Uh, uh, you got uh, people like Patrick Swayze in here. He's like a just this uplifting, uh, I don't know, like a life coach type son of a bitch. And he sees through all that shit, you know. You got Maggie Gyllenhaal in here, you know, Brad's favorite actress. <laughs> sure, sure. But, uh. <laughs> but he cast the director cast Maggie because uh, he liked the way she drank urine uh, <laughs> on uh, Cecil B. Demented. <laughs> on Cecil B. Demented, he loved the way she drank the urine. He believed he believed that shit. So, uh, and plus she was uh, Jake's real sister, so they had that whole <clears throat> sibling rivalry thing going. But uh, and like the the if you if you've ever seen seen it i mean there's like these futuristic blob looking or these yeah it's like an, blob orb, it's like an orb or something yeah orb, coming orb. off of people and donnie can see them and shit and uh anyway uh the director was high and he was watching football He was watching john madden with a fucking telestrator that's where he got the idea he was like what if the man upstairs was uh doing that to humans you know whatever you know that's kind of goes to show like where that minds that guy's mind goes, you know, but I've watched this movie so many times and, uh, I still don't understand it all the way, but that's okay. You know? Um, uh, Oh yeah. Patrick Swayze's character, Jim Cunningham. He says drugs, alcohol, and premarital sex are instruments of fear. Yeah. And, uh, Donnie, he does all three before the climax of the movie, you know, mm -hmm. You got that damn uh, Frank the Rabbits in this shit, man. That's mm -hmm. some just strange shit going on with that, you know. Uh, just a great movie, man. Uh, never seen Donnie Darko. Highly recommend it. And uh, that's my number two. I probably watched that a half a dozen times, and every time I watch it, there's something new I, I didn't pick up the first time. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah man. It's one of those movies you're like, shit, I totally missed that. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, and the soundtrack, man, is... Mm -hmm. The nostalgia, I know, for the 80s. Fear, you know, for fear, you know. And, yeah. Right. Yep, it's a prototypical yeah. jerk movie. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice release from Arrow. Well, I got an Arrow 4K back there, which I hadn't, I've seen yeah. the movie a dozen times, half a dozen times, but I haven't watched that 4K yet. And I strongly recommend the, the theatrical over the yeah. director. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't I don't care for the director. I don't like the director's cut either. Yeah. All right, Brad, you're up, buddy. Um, you need to urge you had mail. Um, you have mail. Internet's looking good, man. You're doing all right. Is it AOL just kicked in? <laughs> um, well, zombie movies have been kind of big. They were big during this time, and I uh, love the Dawn of the Dead remake, but I think this is the better zombie movie. Uh, it's 28 Days Later from 2002. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, directed by Danny Boyle. Uh, he did train spotting and sunshine and you know it's a british movie this movie this blu-ray looks like hammered dog shit but that's okay it's, it's fucking terrible but again it still doesn't ruin the movie that's how good i think it is right i don't know what the hell they're doing over in the uk they're eating their fucking lunch over the print i don't know what's happening but it, it's they, they always suck when they come over but um anyway the movie follows jim a bike messenger played by Cillian Murphy. He came on to do a lot of stuff. And he was involved in an accident before um, a zombie outbreak. He wakes up in a hospital naked, doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Everybody's gone. He can't find anybody. He's wandering around London, and it's totally empty. Um, before that, obviously, there's a opening scene, which is my favorite part of the whole movie. Uh, there's a militant arm of PETA that goes to this lab where they're experimenting on chimpanzees and i say militant arm of PETA because it's just funny to me to say that <laughs> they're a bunch of floppy bag fucking weirdos and they're gonna go <laughs> arm <and> fucking <laughs> this military facility with chimpanzees in it and it's just the whole time the nerd there is telling them don't open the cages 
they're infected with rage and they'll rip everybody apart in here one bite one piece of saliva and they're like you just want to keep these animals locked up and you know they're just a bunch of do-gooder sons of bitches and they open the cage and they immediately regret that decision <laughs> that champion chimpanzee just start ripping ass tear, tearing people apart and they immediately turn on the chimpanzee. These PETA fucks start beating the shit out of the chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> it is just a I don't remember that shit at all. Damn. One of my favorite oh, yeah, ever movies. <laughs> and they all get infected, and obviously they bring down London. Um, yeah. Th- this is the first of the quote-unquote rage zombies, as far as I'm concerned. Um, these are the exact opposite of the prototypical zombie. Right. They are very fast. They are very alert. And also the transformation takes seconds, not hours, not days. Any blood gets on you, gets in you, you get bitten. Seconds later, you start to turn. Yeah. And yeah. you've only got a few seconds to decide. So everything, it really rats, ratchets up the tension and uh, gives a lot more jeopardy and peril. Um, along the way, he meets a female character, um, Naomi Harris uh, as, as Selena. And then they meet another character named uh, Brendan Gleeson. It's Frank and his daughter. And they try to make their way to hear this radio message that says the answer to infection is here. And they give coordinates and they try to get there. And that's basically the movie, your typical zombie, you know, chase type thing. And then, of course, what always happens in the zombie movie, the people turn out to be worse than the zombies. So you get all that score is done by um, John Murphy, who scored. A million great movies, uh, Last House on the Left remake, Snatch, Miami Vice. He's kind of known for tremendous scores. He's a great composer. And that really carries the movie. It's a really important part of the movie, how strong the score is. But I've been watching this movie for 20 years now, and it it hasn't, it hasn't softened for me at all. There's a great scene where the first place he goes for help is a, a church, a giant Catholic church. And there's it's filled with bodies. And then uh, he starts yelling around and out comes the priest and he's obviously all fucked up. It just, it's just the imagery of it is is so dark. And I just, I've always liked it. I've always liked the look of this movie being so grimy and grim. I mean, it is London for God's sakes, but Mm -hmm. um, in London, you're not allowed to shoot movies at night. So they had to make it look like night by, you know, fucking with the print. It just, it didn't work very well, but there's just not a lot to say about this movie. Um, Like I said, uh, I love. I prefer a rage zombie over a regular slow zombie. I love the the twenty eight days. Obviously, the all twenty eight days of labor for numerous numerous reasons. But he wakes up in the hospital twenty eight days after patient zero, so that's part of it, and you know all that. So if you haven't seen this movie, I don't know that it's underrated. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it, but it's just always been my favorite zombie movie. And uh, I hope we get a four K and they get some kind of decent restoration. But other than that, yeah, check this one out. It was definitely yeah. in my in my top zombie movies of all time, and yeah. I and, think um, like, and I agree with you like that. Those zombies to me, I think they opened the way for like the World War Z zombies. Uh, well, Don the yeah. Dead, um, um, they got the inspiration from the running zombies from that movie. The yeah, thing I left out oh, of yeah. review, whatever. But that twenty eight days later was responsible for the fast zombies and Don the Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, a lot of people get in that argument. That. They get in that argument like, well, they're not zombies; they're infected. Well, I get it, Professor. I get yeah. it. They're infected. They're not. They're eating yeah, the, people. <laughs> right. Now you're running from the, the running zombies are a lot a lot more scary than the the slow walking zombies. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But you know, it's the same argument for people why people hate on the crazies, which I think is fantastic. Uh, oh yeah. You know, well, there's the not remake. a zombie movie. Fine. It's like not the a original. Movie. Yeah. Call the, it the remake. remake. Right. With, uh, I don't want to say the remake. Part. I still haven't seen the the original yet, but um, I got I, I got like the that. original better, but yeah. yeah. I like that part in uh, 20 Days Later when uh, Brennan Gleeson gets uh, the drop of blood in his eye. Yep. That's yep. insane. That's yep. a great and, scene. That's another zombie movie, too, where you, I mean, they really do a great job of, like, getting you, selling you on these characters. I mean, you, you like yeah. the characters. You which do. Is, yeah. You really do. a zombie movie. And uh, unlike any other horror genre, zombie movie, you have to like the characters. And you like all these characters. You understand right. them. I really like that. And when in just a short period of time, you get it, they go visit. Uh, Jim's parents. He wants to make sure they're okay, and right. that whole sequence. And, um, yep. and, in a, and in a second, you know, the the Selena character is just ruthless, right? You know, she mm-hmm. she senses that there's a problem at all. You're in a lot of trouble. 
Yeah. yeah. And the yeah, minute so. they meet Frank and Hannah, you like instantly fall in love with them. Yeah. You're, you're like, like it's, these are great characters and oh. they, they start to have fun. They, you know, things start to lighten up a little right, bit. And then they, yeah. Then it goes into that third act where it completely changes again. You think everything's okay. And I've just always liked it. I just think it's, but that whole, again, uh, I can't say enough about the score. The score is the, killer. That whole mm-hmm. scene where they're in the, uh, in the tunnel with the flat tire. I was like, yeah, this is like, this is fantastic. The tension. fucking rats. The rats mm-hmm. come out of nowhere, and they're like, what the fuck? What is all these rats doing here? And like, well, they're running from something. <laughs> all right. Yeah. That's a yeah. great pick. That's a great pick. Yeah. All right, Brian. What you got, buddy? All right, number two for me is uh, the first duplicate, and that's going to be the rules of attraction. <laughs> Uh-oh. Damn. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Fucking go. loser. Fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> he did that intentionally, Dick. No, this this used to be my number one favorite movie of all time back when I was in high school, like when I first saw this movie. Um, I mean, that changed over time. Breakfast Club still reigns supreme now over this, but this is probably number number two of all time for me. Um, I'm not. I mean, it's kind of hard. I mean, I guess I should have put it number one for this, but for this top five stream, but whatever. Uh, um, I put them in order of rewatchability, really. Um, but yeah, this, this movie is just awesome. Uh, I love, I don't know what to say else besides what Brad said earlier about it. Um, there's whole, there's a whole like 15 minute opening scene where, um, pretty much everything goes in reverse mm-hmm. and it's just, it's, it's a great, the, the direction of this is just awesome. Like the, the whole way it's directed. I love it. Um, I love the music in this movie too. Um, oh, yeah. it opens up pretty much with uh, the cure of six different ways. And I just love that song ever since seeing this movie. Um, throughout the whole movie, there's all, all, all sorts of great music in there. Um, I think the musical group Tom and Andy did this, did the soundtrack to this. Um, one of my favorite um, drug kingpins in any movie ever is uh, <laughs> Clinton Collins Jr. <laughs> Jr. in this movie. Yeah. He's great in this. Um, a very underrated actor. Um, I just love him in everything I see him in. Um, Thomas Ian Nicholas from... Uh, American Pie is just funny as shit in this too. <laughs> yeah, um, he's great with his yellow fucking little toy car. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's just trying to get cocaine for his girlfriend or whatever. He ends up going <laughs> on this fucking this whole trip with uh, James Vanderbeek's character Patrick or uh, Sean Bateman. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, I've always liked um, James Vanderbeek ever since Dawson's Creek days. But uh, in this movie, he really shines as like my favorite performance from him. Um, yeah. That I mean, just his whole like deadness to him to his character is just great. How he just doesn't give a fuck about anything or anybody. Yeah. I don't um, know if they put contacts on him, but his eyes are so fucking dark. Yeah, you know, like they, they are. look like he's just uh, like possessed almost. Uh huh. He does. He has the shark um, eyes. Yeah, he does. He had dead dead shark eyes. He just doesn't care. Like all these women are hitting on him, he just doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There, and the way that they like name all these different parties, like the end of the world party and uh, the dress to be screwed party, and uh, just yeah, it's just crazy. I don't know. There's nothing like it really. Um, the monologue stuff is great. The you know the stuff that, that you hear, like it's basically just like a whole novel being played out in the movie. Yeah, I just I've always loved it, and um, it's very dark, very disturbing. Um, there's one. Sick. Really disturbing suicide scene in this movie. That the unrated version on this Blu-ray actually shows a lot more detail than the DVD ever did. Um, what's the What's the song that's playing during that suicide? I can't remember uh, what it is, but it's very on the remember. nose. I can't remember what it is either. Yeah, um, I can't I'll live if living without you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Living is yeah, without you. <laughs> yeah. Um, just an overall great movie, man. I just love it. Yeah, yeah. Y'all got me sold, but I gotta check it out. I'm gonna have to check it out. It's this like is another one of those Blu ray. It's really cheap. This is another one. I'll get a message from Alan going, Why the fuck did you recommend that movie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I didn't recommend it. I said it. it's not for everybody. You fucking talked about it on the stream. That's a recommendation. <laughs> you rich motherfucker, motherfucker. I didn't say you had to watch it, bitch. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think I, I think I like it. It's like it's up my alley, but um, yeah, you will be yeah. getting a text if I don't like it for sure. <laughs> so that's part of the fun. You know. All right, red guys, gonna go on category on IMDb. How to be a winner? Yeah. 
All right, we're going to go on my number two here, guys. Um, great theater experience. First time I've seen this. Um, absolutely adore this movie. It's um, it's one of my favorites of all times. That's going to be Signs by M. Night Shalama Logan Logan, whatever his name is. Hell yeah. Um, oh, I mean, Mel Gibson, Joaquin Phoenix, <laughs> um, absolutely kill it in this movie. I'm just a huge fan of this. I could go back and rewatch this anytime, and I'm enthralled every single time. There's so many great scenes in this movie that just hold up for me. It's um, it's just a fun movie. It's a little off kilter a little bit. I understand why some people may not put this in their top five, but it's definitely in my top five. I have a very big soft spot for this movie. Um, again, I always talk about going to movies with my son whenever these are great times, him growing up. I took him to see this when he was way too young. He was at an age, I talked about this before, where he was trying to be cool for his pops and watch all the scary movies that I introduced him to. But I went and took him to see this and the scene, everybody, the birthday scene. Um, which, by the way, one of my notes says the birthday party scene has been named one of the scariest scenes of all times. I don't know where that came from, but it was on IMDb. Um, he looked at me and says, Pops, I'm ready to go home. I don't, I don't want to watch this no more. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me, and it scarred his ass. Um, yeah. But it is a great scene. Joaquin Phoenix, everybody knows that watched my channel. I absolutely fucking love Joaquin Phoenix. I think he is just one of the greatest talents we got right now. Um, anyway, Mel Gibson knocks it out of the park. Um He's an ex-reverend. His brother lives with him. He lost his wife to a terrible accident. Um, he's got two kids. And um, it, I don't know. I'm getting, I'm literally, this is no bullshit. I'm getting fucking chill bumps just talking about it. That's how much I like it. There's so <laughs> many good fucking scenes in this movie that just like the dinner scene. Um, the dinner scene where they're all sitting around and you know, Mel Gibson's trying to make everything as normal as he can for the kids. And Mel Gibson being the ex-reverend, he lost his faith. Um, I just think he does such a great job of that scene. It's just a very powerful scene. The scene down in the basement, um, mm -hmm. his son's got asthma. And they're trapped down in the basement. They can hear the aliens moving around. Um, they can't find his asthma medication. There's so many things like that that just hold up. Um, it's got a lot of comedy elements to it as well. There's a lot of foreshadowing. If you guys have seen it, the girl's always saying there's something wrong with the water and this kind of stuff. You guys got to watch the movie. You don't want to spoil it if you hadn't seen it. Um, there's um, the shots in the cornfield where the um, they actually did the signs in the corn. Um, all that was actually done. None of that was special effects. They actually used some kind of tool to make those. And all the actors say that when you're walking through those those um those those spots in the, in the cornfield, that it was very um I can't remember the term they used, but it, it really fucked with them. And it was just it was re very realistic when you stood there, and just kind of was in that in that scene. He said just being surrounded with the corn, it was very creepy. But um, it was started like I said by M. Night Shalama Lind. I can't ever say his fucking name. It stars Mel Gibson, Joaquin Phoenix, and Rory Culkin, which is uh, Macaulay Culkin's little brother. He does a great job in this. Um. A widowed former, I, just, I already pretty much said what it's about, but a, a widowed former reverend living with his children and brother on, in, on a Pennsylvania farm finds mysterious crop circles in their fields which suggest something more frightening to come. Um, Joaquin Phoenix, by the way, um, he replaced, originally it was going to be Mark Ruffalo was going to play that part, you know, the oh, Incredible yeah. Hulk. And But Mark Ruffalo, um, he got diagnosed with a brain tumor, which I didn't know. Mm -hmm. It turned out to be benign, but he had to step away from the role you know, I'm glad he's okay. I love Mark Ruffalo, but Joaquin Phoenix, um, I love him in this film. The scene where he starts, you know, really buying into the stuff, whatever, and he's kind of losing his mind a little bit. He's in the in the closet watching TV, that birthday scene. His reaction to that, you guys seen it in the yeah. intro. It's just one of my favorite things ever. Um, it took um, M. Night six months to write the script. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. It took M. Night six months to write the script. Um, it came out in uh, August 2nd, 2002. Had a $72 million budget. Made two hundred twenty-seven million um, in the states and four hundred eight million worldwide. So it was a damn huge success. I didn't look this up, but it's got to be one of his, one of his most successful movies, I would think. Um, right after this, he did The Village. Joaquin Phoenix was in that. I need to rewatch The Village. I was kind of let down with it. I hadn't watched it but one time in theaters. Um, I know there's a lot of people that hate The Village, but I probably need to give it another watch. I can't really form an opinion on it. Not near as good as this though. This is his best movie in my my opinion by a long by a long shot. Um. Huge fan of it. It easily could have made my number one. It, it was close to being my number one, but um, it's up to my list here at number two. Big fan. Great movie. I love that movie, man. That, I struggled with that one, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. That Very whole, watchable like, movie for me. Under the door, man, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Joaquin Phoenix got to go to acting school with Mel Gibson. And uh, Mel Gibson's known for blowing up and being a large, you know, big character. Very slight mm -hmm. Very understated in this. Yep. Really showed, you know, he's got he's got all the muscles. Yep. Yeah. 
And the scene, M. Knox got a cameo in this. Uh, he plays the guy that, that killed his wife by, you know, car accident, terrible accident. Mel Gibson didn't know M. Knox was going to play that role until he actually got into the scene. So like when he, he, he starts to film that scene, he didn't know M. Knox was going to play that character. But that scene where he's outside the, the car of M. Knox, whatever, and M. Knox trying to apologize to him or whatever, that act that Mel Gibson does, that's some of my favorite act that he's ever done. I think that whole scene, he just, the whole movie really, Mel Gibson just kills it as far as the guy that lost his faith. He's trying to be a good guy for the parents, trying not to freak out. You know, it's just he's kind of trying to keep everybody on even keel. I don't know. It's I'm a, I'm a big big fan of it. Oh, it's a creepy Mel ass Gibson. movie. It, it really is a creepy ass movie. There's a lot yeah, of scenes yeah. that are you know. Yeah. M Night, he he does some creepy shit, man. Man, he's he's so hit or miss for me, man. But when he hits it right, man, he he's he's one of my favorites. Yeah, he, he's he's got some movies that are terrible, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> all, his said, the, um, all his characters are so quiet. And yeah. reserved, and to pick Mel yeah, Gibson no. for that, right? Is, and to know that Mel could get, even do that is strong, right? I you think know, you know Mel's he was doing this for people. Like, someday I'm yeah. going to have a tree trying to kill Marky Mark, and it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It happening. <laughs> yeah, I, I love what? that terrible movie. No. It's a great movie. Man. Oh man, I, could, I love the happening man. It's so bad. That's a definitely a what's so bad is good movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's totally off topic, but I have to say the uh, the parodies they did of uh, signs and the I don't know which number it was, but the scary movie, um, yeah, movie three, they, were three. Three, they were pretty damn funny with uh, Simon <laughs> Rex. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. With, in the car accident scene, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it more like this or more like? <laughs> Can I spend time with the top half or the bottom half? <laughs> 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 all right we'll get caught up on the chat guys and we'll move along here all right, all right. Right says number number two is training day for me it's almost a perfect movie and it got ethan Hawke the academy award it's such a great movie man that's a great movie yeah chris C says i love frailty great pick doc i was twisted i was twisted ending a mind fuck that's for sure it really is <laughs> bob said what's up magic hands uh, Bob says, Holland, I haven't seen Bait in ages, probably 20 years. The movie I know is Bait, whatever, is a damn kind of a shitty, but it's fun to watch um, shark movie. Um, I'm not sure of that one there, but I'm, have y'all seen the shark, the shark movie called Bait? No. It's, um, yeah, it's actually, no, it's actually a pretty fun shark movie. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Alan's seen every fucking shark movie ever made. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, man. This is actually a fun one. It takes place in like a grocery store, but... Yeah. Anyway, you got you got to see it. Is it's the like, shark in the grocery store? Well, there's a, there's a flood, and the, sh the grocery store is flooded, and people are like on top of shelves and shit. It's actually a fun movie, man. Y'all, oh, I have seen that movie. Yeah, it's actually yeah. a pretty fun movie. It's kind of like Crawl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of sort of, kind of sort of. Um, let's see. 4K lowdown. Frailty is awesome. Great pick. I agree. Said to you, Banks, my number two movie is The Fast and the Furious, 2001, Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, R.I.P., Jordana Brewster, Michelle Rodriguez. Now, let's talk about Michelle Rodriguez for a minute. Yeah, right. she's got tons of gravy on her tater, son. She does it for me. Anyway, that's, that's, another, that's another stream in itself. Okay. Um, what, the yeah, hell's she's in that, what the hell's in that bottle you gave, Alan? <laughs> I don't give a damn. Michelle Rodriguez, yeah, she does it for me, son. That's, that's my gal. Um, oh, directed man. by you, Rob Cohen. You can't blame me for it this time. Life. Usually, I'm in, I'm default, but not this time. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll be good. You'll be guilty tomorrow. I'm yep. sure I won't be feeling no pain by tomorrow afternoon. Um, Magic Hand said, "What's up, Bob? How's your night, brother?" Johnny Darko, what's going on, buddy? He said, "What's up, hey, pops?" Um, finally, pop in the Chucky Two 4K. Finally, took me 16 minutes to clean the grease off that bitch. Yeah, yeah, it, it didn't take me quite that long, but um, <laughs> it's like you had a good greasy one. You must got the limited edition. Got the gravy. Um, they ain't gonna yeah. let it go, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, City Eubanks, Frailty is a good movie. Bob says, Magic Hands, next time we head to the theater, we'll invite Pops and get a third straw for the milkshake. Yeah, that's a that's a running joke. Um, he was fucking with me saying that me and Dr. Ordinary had a, a movie date, and he had just done a video of him and his buddy, or whatever, and I'd asked him if they had, they had got a milkshake to share. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's been kind of a joke with me and Bob. You guys haven't seen his last movie review of um, oh, Glady, what's it called? The one you just seen, Brian? Barbarian. Barbarian, yeah, Barbarian, whatever. They did a real good review of that. I'm really dying to see that, by the way. Yeah, it's great. 
Um, the monkey says, in my opinion, the worst movie, the worst number two of 2004 is The Notebook because the ending is shit. The family with the grandkids loses the house and both their parents. That's the reason you don't like that movie? <laughs> yeah, my wife made me watch that with her. and um, Yeah, I, I, actually, I, I actually I actually didn't hate it. I mean, it's, you know, Not a bad me, movie. I, I'm not a big fan of movies like that, but no. you know, it's, it, it's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Darko, pour it up, Doc. Yes, sir. He does make a mean old fashioned. Um, Chris C says, Oh, well, I forgot it came out early 2000s. Great pick, Dirt. Johnny Darko said, Hell yeah, man. That's my shit. Darko lives. Hell yeah. Uh -huh. Chris C says, I have the 4K of Johnny Darko. Yep. I need to, need to check it out. I got it too. Yeah. It's, it's, the, the director's cut is a lot darker. Like, I guess this release. Yeah. I don't know what, what the deal is, but. The theatrical, so the theatrical cuts, cuts the way to go. Yeah, theatrical is the way. No doubt. Right. Chris C says, Dirk, you have Southland Tales too. That's in the um, Donnie Darko universe. You know, I tried to watch that shit, and Justin Timberlake took me right out of the fucking movie. Uh, I, I'll try, I'll go back and try to watch it again, but I don't know. Uh, it's him and The Rock, right? Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. There's a lot uh, of people I've never seen it. It's not. That's a. I don't know. It didn't. It didn't keep my attention. I'm, I might have to check it out though. Just yeah, that's an error release too, isn't it? Southland Tales. It is. On yeah. I've never seen that one. All right. Oh, uh, Magic Hands. Yes. Uh, large chocolate cake shake, extra whipped cream. But <laughs> <laughs> it Bob Blu-rays. Um, Anthony Horrors the More. My number two is Sideways. The movie has a perfect mix of drama and dark comedy. I am not drinking any fucking Merlot. Paul Giamatti does a great job portraying someone with depression. I mean, Brad, you're a fan of that one, aren't you? Yeah. Not, and if they're if if they're drinking Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. I am not <laughs> drinking any fucking Merlot. <laughs> if you've seen the movie, you know the scene. That's great. It's a yeah. great. Let Paul me fucking Giamatti. write that one down. I I don't think I, like, I think I've seen bits and pieces of it. I'm gonna write that one down. They're like uh, a wine enthusiasts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they yeah, go yeah. on a bachelor party of short sorts to right. 40, 45 year old men. Last of all, they go up to wine country and Paul Giamatti's big into wine, but uh, his friend is just like, I'll just drink anything. I don't give a fuck. And they're they're very opposite and it just hilarity ensues. That's great. Yeah. All right, Johnny Darko. I love the box set. Arrow is great about those. Yeah, they are. I mean, one of the additions are way to go. Chris C says, hell yeah, 28 Days Later is great. Silly and Murphy is great. And what did y'all think about 28 Weeks Later? I loved it. I like it. I, loved yeah, it. I, I, I did it too. Great. I thought it was a good sequel. Yeah. And I thought it was a, a, a great um, a great idea that, you know, um, all right, they're, they're like what happens after a, a fucking zombie of yeah. event, you know? Starting yeah. to get it back together. Things are starting right. to get normal again. And that, that right. pops off at the beginning where that dude does that bitch shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I fucking hate that shit. He made yeah. me hate him the whole right out the gate. You know? Oh yeah, you're supposed to hate him. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Did this job. Yeah. All right. Twenty eight days later is amazing. This is four K lowdown. Johnny Dark Hell yeah, that's one of the best infected movies ever made. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Uh, Johnny Darko, I like. <clears throat> I like that the quality is low, and I had never seen any of the characters before. It made it feel more real. Yeah, I like the grimy cut to it, man. I do. Yeah. 28 uh -huh. days. Old school Pete, 28 days is great. The opening scene is creepy as hell or creepy. Um, yeah, a lot of fans of that one there, bro. Yeah. How do you make London see so empty? Right. Yeah. That's, that's damn near. Yeah. That, that yeah. whole scene when he's going by and there's all the, the, the like missing people post. I, I was like, it's just the iconic. imagery in the movie yeah. is killer. Just across yeah, it the really board. Is. Yeah. All right. What's well, that guy's name? Oh, my bad. Okay. There you go. go ahead. Go ahead. All right, what's Bob's his name? Said, the lead, the lead actor, Gillian Murphy. Okay, Gillian something. I can't remember. Yeah, his from name. Red Eye yeah. and Batman Begins. And yeah, he's been, been in a ton of stuff. Yeah, Peaky Blinders too, right? Yeah, Peaky Blinders. Yeah, yeah. Peaky yeah. Blinders. Yep. Which is a show I hadn't watched, but I heard it was pretty good. Peaky Blinders is great, actually. No, yeah. right, Bob says I need a twenty-eight months later in my life. Whether they am um, going to make that at one time, I thought that was a rumor that they were making a third part. But maybe I, just, uh, I heard a rumor about it. Yeah. That, that'd be great. Yeah, the is laughing. Um, how you been, man? It's been a while. 
can't drive. Johnny Darko said, 28 months later is great too, but it's um, it's so hard to, 28 weeks later is great too, but it's so hard to top the first. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Darko, you're thinking of 28 weeks later. <laughs> uh, Johnny Darko says, whoa, I didn't, I didn't know that. Old school Pete, 20 years, I feel so old. You know, wait till some of your favorite movies are getting a 40 year anniversary release. <laughs> yeah. No shit. Because we start feeling old. Uh, Johnny Darko, oh, right, my bad. Uh, Carlos, what's going on, Carlos? What's, oh, what's going on, fellas? Bob says, speaking of great opening sequences, Brian, 28 weeks later has one of the greatest opening sequences ever. Yeah, it's awesome. Yes, that's a good yeah, one. That, that him getting chased across that field is. Yeah. That whole boat. Hmm. Carlos is greeting from Oklahoma. Welcome, man. I've been to Oklahoma one time. Son of okay. graduation from the Army. That was the first time I ever flew was to Oklahoma from Florida. We well medicated. Smoke marijuana. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Sing it, Dirt. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, Johnny Darko says, if I was in that shit, I'd be dead in five minutes. I smoked too many cigs. <laughs> <laughs> so Andy said, hey, to Carlos... Drop kick that like button. Yeah, everybody hit the like button, guys. I always forget to say it. Thanks, Anthony. So those energy drinks don't make you run faster, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the monk says, I think I caused happy hands to give me the finger, fellas. <laughs> Andy Phantom says, more love for Rules of Attraction. Also, my number two for the decade and love for the air supply songs playing during the scene. Might have to watch it again soon. Uh, oh, shit. Air Supplies on the soundtrack? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, Air Supply was one of those bands back in the day that everybody loved, but you know, you couldn't admit to your buddies you liked it. You right. Know? Yeah. It was kind of like riding a scooter. I remember hearing that shit. <laughs> I like riding kid, a scooter. Though. Like, I remember my mother, she'd play that shit on an eight track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I got the fucking song in my head that I'm not going to sing, but yeah. <laughs> Dang it, Pop. All right. <laughs> yeah. Magic Hand says, don't make me smack the monkey. <laughs> All right, y'all can do that when y'all get off the stream in a bit. Yeah, to. Um, Back there, right. uh, uh, Bob says that scene in 28 Days with the father, that shit was emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Old school Pete says one opening scene I really enjoyed was London Fallen. It's pure popcorn fantasy, but I must have rewound that scene back in about three times first time I seen it. Yeah. It's really eerie and uh, just like you feel for the guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our sign's a great movie. Appreciate it, Sydney. Uh, sign, uh, Sydney said the alien walking across the TV screen is scary as hell. It damn sure was. Got me the first time. Still gets me. Uh, Indian Phantom says, speaking of Mel, any love for the passion of the Christ on this list? It's a brutal flick. Landed in my top five, a damn work of art. Yeah, we wouldn't see that in theaters. That's back when I went to church for I was a heathen. And um, a whole group of us went and seen that in theaters. And um, pretty powerful movie. Mm -hmm. I think you might see it. So there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Our boss says, uh, yeah, I hate the rules of attraction. Sorry, no disrespect. Hey, uh, Alan, yeah. go ahead and block this one, too. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bob's account Bob. is getting through. I thought we got rid of that guy. <laughs> well, I'm going to be on some of Bob's streams coming up, so I'll block him after that. <laughs> Unsubscribe <laughs> to his goddamn channel. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, all I know says don't don't rewatch the village. It is hot garbage. Yeah, that's what a lot of people say. Like I said, I, I, I didn't care for it the first time. Well, I'll I've actually, is... never actually seen it, so I can't can't comment. I've watched it. I've and... heard nothing but bad things though. And then I rewatched it, and I hate it. I just remember. <laughs> I just remember after <laughs> signs that I seen the trailer for it. I thought it was going to be just you know another badass movie. The first time I seen it, I was really let down. I, I, I enjoyed it. People, uh -huh. I mean, people love that shit. I don't know, man. I don't love it, but I, I definitely enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I want to go back and rewatch it because I feel like going going into it with a better expectation. You know, I think I built that one up too much. So I, we'll see. Into it. I'm putting the pussy on a pedestal, Alan. <laughs> <that one>. Yeah, <laughs> I think, but the way it was marketed, it made you think it was something else. Yeah, <laughs> it was <laughs> supposed to be the next Sixth Sense. It just it just fell right. flat, I guess. Well, I thought it was gonna be like werewolf fucking movie. You know, monster movie, and it turns yeah. out to be just some mentally challenged dude in a robe. Now, where will fucking movie I can see? 
uh, Johnny Darko. I still remember the first time I saw Signs, great movie, one of uh, Shyamalan's best. Shyamalan. <laughs> Shyamalan Ding Dong. India Phantom said the village is underrated. I actually think it's one of the cooler if not movies. Yep. Uh, well, being hindsight, you know, we know what his catalog has become. I'm sure it is one of his better movies. Right. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah, it's a great. That's a good point. Yeah. All right, Sydney says, M. Not three best movies are Unbreakable, Six Sense, and Signs. I completely agree with that. Ah, uh, man, I put uh, Split over Unbreakable. Yeah. Mm. But I was just going to say, I think a lot of people forget about Unbreakable and Split as being M. Night Shyamalan movies. Yeah. 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 I didn't like, I, I, I like Split a lot. Um, I don't know. Split and Unbreakable would be, be, be neck and neck. Um, what about Glass? You know, like it. Let down. Glass was a let down. <laughs> let down yeah, I, I still I still liked it. I just didn't think it was yeah. It I'd, go, I'd go split, unbreakable, glass. Glass. Yeah. What about old? Yeah. Do you like old? old. Well, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen that yet. I, I enjoyed it. it. I don't know how much it has. But... Yeah. yeah. I tried watching that on a plane twice and fell asleep both times, not because of the movie, because I was ever, ever medicated. <laughs> And, and then he, but, uh, then he bought the book. <laughs> Whose fault was that? And, and then he bought the book. Uh, you know. It could be the movie. <laughs> so I, and I got the 4K steel book back there. I have no excuse. I need to watch it. But so I'll see twice. Bought the steel book. <laughs> well, you know what? Like I said, I was, I was, I was dr- flying and drinking and I know it's just funny. Anxiety Party. Pills. Whatever. What, whatever, I, I whatever the story. Really. I dropped my, I dropped my big ass phone on the plane. When I was trying to watch it, it said it hit the bottom of the plane and it sounded like a bomb going off. Everybody got a little little shaky over that. So. <laughs> Don't say bomb on a plane, Alan. Bomb, 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 right, bomb, yeah. bomb, 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 yeah. bomb, 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 bomb. Uh, old cannot be as bad as that Will Smith movie he did. Oh, wow. it's no, no, no it's, it's, it's not at all. No yeah, movie. After, yeah, after Earth, after Earth, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. After Earth and, and the Last Airbender is two worst fucking movies. I didn't watch well, that. The Last no. Airbender was awful. I never watched yeah. the Last Airbender, but I've heard nothing but shit about that was it. I never watched the movies either, that but... I actually just stopped. I mean, yeah, usually a movie can be garbage, and I'll I'll power through it. But... Yeah. And at that point, Will Smith found out that his son couldn't act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be me in twenty years. Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> Old school beat. I enjoy Passion of the Christ. Great film. Uh, Indy Phantom says to Sid Eubanks, I agree that Unbreakable is the best. I actually haven't seen Split or Glass. You need to see Split for sure. So yeah, Split. Pretty yeah, great split. movie. Yeah, it's pretty pretty good performance. I don't know the guy's name, but 23 characters he's playing. That's James pretty, McAvoy. James yeah, McAvoy. there you go. Uh, John Darko, I thought The Village was pretty good. It was it was great, but fair. It wasn't, I guess, is what he was saying. Yeah. Old school Pete, the the torture scenes are like nothing I'd ever seen before. Brutal. I'm talking about the village, I guess. No. The passion. The passion. Uh, uh, the passion scenes in the village. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've only seen the village one time, dude. It's a, it's a BDSM <laughs> it's a pilgrim torturing each other. It is a torture scene. The whole damn movie. <laughs> <laughs> you got a at the opening, the opening of the movie. You got a mentally challenged person and a ginger, blind ginger. They're having a foot race to a giant rock. And how did you fuck that up? You could have, you could have gone so many ways with that. Hey, but Alan, it's got Joaquin Phoenix in it. There you I go. Know. There you go. Yeah. Got to be okay. All right, makes that magic hands as long as you don't spank me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, where that shit is going. What are y'all, what are y'all says, doing over there? <laughs> number two for me is Lost in Translation. Bill Murray, um, Scarlett Johansson, existential lonely movies, sad with some comedy movies with Ryan might be the only person who likes the movie more than I do. Lost in Translation. That, that seems like a movies with Ryan movie. <clears throat> depressed, uh, depression, uh, depressed Japanese movie. <laughs> but that's not a bad movie. Left. Bob says the Guardian is probably my number two. Oh, my guy Kevin Costner. That's a good movie. All right, Magic Hands and Monkeys spicing up the chat. Well, the monkeys. I give Magic Hands two thumbs up. Um, let's give them a hand. 
I love the shark movie. Bait is awesome. Yeah, it's fun watching you guys haven't seen this. It's, it's fun just watching. Trying to just redeem turn, himself, Alan. <clears throat> just make some popcorn and turn and, and turn your did, fucking brain did off. Did you text him to say that? Right. I did. Jesus. I did. <laughs> Bob, bail me out. Right. <laughs> They're turning on me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'll pay you here in a bit. Uh, Wild Wrangler, what's going on, man? Greetings from Texas. Appreciate hey, you going there, Nice. <laughs> Forrest Redmond says, I hope one of y'all included the 2005 movie Jarhead. Great movie. Yeah, that is a good one. And your fan says, over medicated is the only way to fly. I won't do it sober ever again. <laughs> I've only flown three I times. Uh, I don't mind the flying, man. I just hate getting to the fucking plane. Jesus Christ. Can we just do something right. to get us to the plane faster? God damn. I mean, I can tell you there waiting for the fucking thing to take off. And then once it once it lands, you sit there and wait for it to get off. It's just like, man, just open the fucking doors. Let's go. I was a um in my one of my previous jobs, I was a corporate pilot for a little while and I always flew way over medicated. It's the only way to do it. <laughs> That's good to know. Like that movie Flight every right. time. Yeah. <laughs> Great movie. I do like Paul's Flight. A, yeah. yeah. So Pops, have you seen Man Eater? It's just like Jaws. Uh, I don't think uh, I have. I, I have to look up the have to look up the trailer. It's just like man, it's just like Jaws. So you're talking about the movie. movie. There's, there's, a video video out now. there's a video game called Man Eater that uh, yeah. I have. That's that he's probably right. talking about that. It's really yeah, cool. I think I played that a little bit. I got that downloaded. I didn't play it much, but I, 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 I slept trying to trying to control, control the shark. My, yeah. my shark had palsy. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> I was confused for a minute. I thought I thought you were talking about my first wife. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Johnny Darko says, do y'all watch The Walking Dead? Are y'all caught up for the last eight episodes in October? Um, I stopped watching The Walking Dead about probably three or four seasons ago now. But uh, back in the day, it was a, a every week watch. I was a big fan. I, probably one day I'll go back and catch up. Should have ended uh, it after like five seasons. Yeah, yeah I agree. Exactly. Well, any fandom says, underrated true crime film from 2004 that I highly recommend is The Hillside Strangler. C. Thomas Howe. I like C. Thomas Howe. And Nicholas Torturo or Funny and Creepy. I heard that was a good one. Check that one out. Bob says, I binged all of Cobra Kai season five tonight. What an insane finale. Um, I, I'm a big fan of that show. Now, is, is there going to be another season or just the last season? Mm-hmm. Let us know, Bob. Um, Hollow Note says, it's, it's a new shark movie. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I wrote it down. A hollow note says, <clears throat> tagline is 200 teeth, zero chance. Yeah, I'm sold. <laughs> Dollar Tree special right there. Pops is in. It's right up there with House Shark. Yeah. yeah. Shark NATO. <laughs> Full job. Amityville Shark. Shark Exorcism <laughs> or some shit. <laughs> some I, I got Shark Exorcist. <laughs> shark Exorcism. Shark yeah. Jesus. Shark Exorcism. There's another idea, Brad. Top five shark movie. Uh, Jaws. 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 Can anybody Jaws. come up with one? <laughs> it's, yeah, I can is there a, for Pops? Is there a crossover uh, I, I between five. Armageddon and Jaws? Tentacles. <laughs> Jaws one. Jaws two. Jaws, Jaws three. Jaws again. Yeah, Jaws again. There you go. All right. Uh, we are caught up in the chat. We're going to move on, guys. To yeah, this is our number one. So um, I'm excited to see what you guys pick. All right. What you got there, Ron? Here we go. So I'm going to set this up a little bit, so just bear with me, and I'll apologize because I know it's getting late. Um, but, you know, most of the movies I like um, are, you know, zombie movies, horror movies, thrillers, slashers, and there's a reason for that because uh, what I do for a living, I get intimately involved in people's lives um, every day, all day, um, both the good but also the, the very bad. So I try to avoid dramas or anything that's real life at all because I've, I've got enough of that in my life. So I try to escape. So this pick is a very, very, very odd pick for me um, because it, it is one of those movies that is very much um, real life. And it's a weird movie for me to even have in my number one. But I, when I went back and watched it, I've seen it probably a dozen times um, to get ready for this. It instantly there, there's it just had to be my number one. And Holland will like this, um, but it's 2003's movie Lost in Translation. Oh, um, this movie is is the very <clears throat> interesting movie directed by Sofia Coppola. 
starring Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. Um, and it's basically Bill Murray um, is an aged out actor in Japan shooting a commercial. Now, the, the other reason I like this movie is it's got a little bit of a backstory for me. When I was in the military, I was stationed in Japan for a year and, and I lived there. And um, this is a very real thing. Bill Murray is there shooting a commercial and American actors actually go over there and do commercials for Japanese products that have no sort of um, uh, relationship to who they are or what they do at all. And it's just the weirdest thing. Like, I'll never forget when I first got there seeing a billboard with Sean Connery holding up dish soap. Um, it's just the most bizarre fucking thing you'll ever see. And so... The Japanese culture in this, having lived there, is is a very real thing. Uh, Sofia Coppola, what it is, is Bill Murray's the aging actor, and he runs into Scarlett Johansson, who's very young in this movie. This, she, she had just come out of another movie she would made, which was her first movie called Eight-Legged Freaks. So she's very young. Um, she's married to Giovanni Ribisi, who's a photographer. That's why they're there. Um, and then these two strike up a, a relationship, um, Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. It also has Anna Faris in it. Um, this whole movie is is straight existentialism and and for those that don't know it's a philosophy um it, it's just basically for those that it, i wouldn't call it a depressing movie a lot of people call it a depressing movie but it's really just a movie about when you have those points in your life when you kind of just start thinking like what what's the point of all of this um like where am i at in life where is this going like why are we why are we doing all this and both of them are having these these existential crisis or existential drift. There's a lot of philosophy in this movie. It's based heavily on this book right here, um, who was one of the great existential philosophers, Jean-Paul Sartre. Ironically, in Identity, the other movie I mentioned tonight, John Cusack plays a limo driver. Um, one of the books that's on the seat next to him that he's reading is actually this book, because um, mm. there's a lot of this in Identity, so ironically. Um, Sofia Coppola wrote that role specifically for Bill Murray. She said she would not do the movie unless he agreed to it. Um, it, it what can I say about this movie? Um, it's deeply moving. It is humor. It's a drama. But the humor in it is really sublime, and it's really funny, but it, it fits really well. Um, and it really moves the, the movie along. Um, there's actually very little dialogue in this movie, but you are. it's so emotional and so deep and i'm gonna pull a brad it's not a movie for everybody at all um because it, it is kind of existentially dark uh, but they do it with actually very little dialogue which it's just very well done um you know to to, to give more credence to it the only movie and i'm a huge bill murray fan but this is the only movie bill murray has ever been nominated for an academy award for and you think about all the movies bill murray yeah has been that's in. crazy um, also, um, every time Bill Murray's <clears throat> interviewed, this is his absolute favorite movie he's ever been in. Um, and you think about all the movies Bill Murray's been in, this is what he considers sort of his pinnacle work. Um, just, just an all around great movie. Um, Sofia Coppola was the first woman to be nominated, triple nominated for this, for writing, directing, and producing. Um, it, it just won a bunch of awards. It's got a great ending because you don't really know what happens um nobody knows but you know there's a lot of people that have tried to do some lip reading there's a scene where the two of them talk and they whisper to each other um or bill murray's whispering to scarlett johansson um just a great movie if you if you just kind of want a movie what, what's great about this movie is it's kind of um it, it's a movie that's really kind of makes you feel for life without having a lot of the typical teenaged angst um that's sort of overdone um just just a great movie it's it's has to be my number one so there's lost in translation oh yeah i'm yeah. gonna be honest um ron i have never seen it i'm familiar with the movie and this is gonna be a dumb question is that an h24 no 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 one of the focus so. feature yeah, yeah. Okay. i wrote it down i'm gonna check it out i'm, I'm gonna check it out I don't think I don't it's think I own them. It's not a twenty four. Probably don't own them. They're both at the same point in life. They're both yeah. Uh, and she's actually a philosophy major. Yeah. Uh, the Scarlett Johansson character, but they both are thinking about hitting the restart button, and then they meet each other at the exact same time, and uh, that's what the movie I think is about. It, yeah. it really is, and it's and it's interesting that they're both at the same point in life, sort of um, I guess existentially, but. It opposite ends chronologically in age, and it's, you're absolutely right, Brad. That's exactly what it's—it's it's completely yeah. intentional. 
Sophia Coppola says that she was she was married to Spike Jones at the time, and um, she she based Scarlett Johansson's character off of herself because that's exactly what she was she was kind of going through at the time. So, yeah, well, that's that's a great they, they, both want, they want the exact opposite. Like uh, Scarlett Johansson's married to this immature guy, and she he wants to just have fun. She wants to slow down. Bill Murray's wife is a ball busting hag. Right, uh, by talking to her on the phone. And he wants to have more fun, and she's, you know, it's like just at the same time at the same exact place. It was just a, it's yeah. a fun little movie. It really is, and, and you can just kind of feel, you can kind of, it's it's a great Bill Murray movie. I mean, you because you can just kind of, he does such a great job, but you can feel this guy, what this guy's feeling, and he really doesn't have to say anything. It's just his facial yeah. expressions, and the way he carries himself. You just you're just kind of like. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. He's got the he's got the success. He's still not happy. He just wants to he wants to change. Exactly. He wants to make a change. Yeah. But I love when she tells him that he was she was a philosophy philosophy major and he says, Oh yeah, there's a good buck in that racket. <laughs> yeah, he's the exactly right. <laughs> when he gets the uh when his wife because uh, you know his wife has become so damn material and, and bound into his his money. She's in Japan filming these commercials, and all she's obsessed with is redoing their house. And she actually takes the time to mail him samples of carpet. Samples. And yeah. They get into an argument about it on the phone, and he hangs up and he looks at these samples. He goes, "Fuck! I still don't know which one is burgundy." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just the pointless bullshit that you have to deal with in life. Yeah. You never understand. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna check it out. You'll love it, Alan. Alan will be asleep eight fucking minutes in. <laughs> and he'll be calling you going, what the fuck is this shit, Ryan? What the fuck did you recommend this movie? <laughs> Would you call it more dramedy or like a dramedy? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it's more more drama. With, although the, the it's got a lot of comedy in it. It's just um, that like the scenes where, where they're trying to direct, the, the Japanese people are trying to direct Bill Murray on what to do for this commercial. But like how to, he, he's there to, to promote whiskey. And so they're like, like this, but move the cup up closer. And this like Japanese director will rattle off like 85 sentences. <laughs> and the translator will go, he said, that's good. And Bill Murray's like, that, that, that's all he said? Really? That's, that, that was it? All of that? <laughs> so there's just, a, there's a lot of shit in it like that. That's, it's, it's funny. Oh, they, they send them a, they send Bill Murray a congratulatory hooker. Yes. Yeah. Um, He's like, yeah, you tell Mr. Kazoo that we had a great time, and I scratched your back, and all that shit. Ripped your stockings, all that. Yeah, she, she's like, you rip, a, you rip a stocking. He's like, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, Dirk, you're up, buddy. All right. Well, my number one is, uh, I mean, if you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend you go see it, like, ASAP. It's uh the directing the it's in uh two dead languages, uh Latin and Aramaic. It's uh this is a mind blowing film, man, and that is the Passion of the Christ. No way. Yep. But uh <laughs> it is it is that uh, one coming. I didn't see right? that coming at all. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see that. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm telling you, man, this one right here is uh it's just money. You know what I mean? Great director. Yeah, Mel Gibson directed it. Uh they they had a lot of pushback during the making of the film. Um the the person they got to play Jesus is Jim Caviezel and you know, he got struck by lightning when he was on the cross. And uh, nothing happened to him. He said he seen like a pink flash of something. I forget how he explained it exactly, but uh, he wasn't harmed. His hair caught on fire a little bit. But uh, uh, that's crazy. And uh, that's nuts. The, the makeup they did on him took 10 hours to apply. And it's. So he would sleep with the makeup on. Uh, so he'd just go home and sleep with it on. And this movie right here, man, it's it's got an 18 minute scene of him being uh, 
beaten and and hit yeah. with a cat of nine tails. It's one like one of the most most brutal scenes you'll ever see in any movie. And it's like it's rated number one out of the top twenty five most controversial films. But uh, the the cross he's carrying, like in real life, would have been, I think they said like three hundred pounds, but they made it like 150 pounds. So when the cross fell on him, it separated his shoulder. And uh, you see blood come out of his mouth. Some of that's real and some of that's fake. <laughs> so he was brutalized during the making of this film, man. Caviezel was. And um, they got, I didn't know this, and I've seen it a couple of times already, but the guy, uh, the person playing uh, Satan, is actually a woman. They they wanted uh, Mel Gibson said he wanted to be like the character to look like uh, genderless, like an angel almost, you know. Uh, but yeah, I didn't know. But uh, the budget was thirty million, and worldwide it made six hundred twelve million. Um, Show business, right? Yeah, the Jesus highest Christ. grossing. <laughs> The highest grossing foreign language film in U.S. box office history. The highest grossing religious film in the world, in the worldwide box office. Um, yeah, this movie, man, it's just, uh, if you've never seen it, man, like I said, the, the, the cinematography is just insane, man. Like, there's a lot of things that happened during the making of this movie. Uh, the guy that played Judas... A scare was uh was an atheist and he converted uh after the filming of the movie. One of the guards was a, a Muslim and he converted. Uh one of the tor the torturing guards or whatever, he converted as well. <laughs> I was like, man, this is pretty pretty thrown off. But uh so two of the quotes from the movie is uh forgive them, father, for they know what the, not what they do. <clears throat> they uh they splattered uh, cow blood on Caviezel, uh before each take. Uh, the other, the other quote was, uh, "You have, you have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. For if you love only those who love you, what reward is there in that?" And I mean, even if you don't believe, I mean. It's no denying that he's probably the most recognized man in world history. So, just a great film, man. My number one. Yeah, that's a good pick. Now that one's um, that was based on a book too, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, that's based on a book for sure. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I. Well, uh, straight I don't. I don't mean to make fun, but right. you know, pop in my head. Um, um, Jim Cazizel also, when he, if I'm saying his name right, um, he was told, and he knew, he knew going into that that movie was probably going to hurt his career, and it did. Yeah, um, right. He was kind of on the up when he made that movie, and you know, he kind of went down after that. But he knew that was probably going to be dangerous for his career, but he wanted to do it anyway, and he did a hell of a job. It's a powerful movie, man. I remember seeing it in theaters and. You have people in theaters just bawling, crying throughout the movie. Yeah, all pretty... of them, man. You're like Gibson had already, you know, was you know had enough problems with Hollywood. But talk about like put yourself out there, like yeah, you know, to totally get yeah. um, blackball everybody in that movie. Yeah, yep. Yeah. He didn't care, and nah. it did pretty well financially. Yeah, right. You're all right on yeah. that one. Yeah, I didn't realize oh, that yeah. made so much money, man. But that, it was a powerful movie for sure. That's yeah. a good point, Derek. I, mean, whether... one of the, I went back to it's not a very rewatchable movie. I mean, you see it one time and it's it's a hard watch. And that yeah. what did you say, eighteen minutes, whatever, where he's getting beat with a cat of nine tails. Eighteen stuff, minutes. Man, that's, that's that's some, that was some tough shit, man. That was that was yeah, rough. It's, it's pretty rough. Yeah. Well, Mel Gibson is known for you know his directing style. He likes to go after all the markets at once, right? You know, Apocalypto, Braveheart, Passion right. of the Christ. Air, all yeah. countries can see his movies and get something out of them. Exactly. That's why they, yeah. they do so well. The Love world the world audience. Like, yeah. Right. yeah. And I like That's the like, fact that he used two dead languages, you know, mm -hmm. and that was pretty hard to, to do from listening to the to the backstory on everything, the Latin and the yeah. Aramaic. To get, to get everybody to 
you know, the only American actor was Jim Caviezel. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, pretty amazing. Well, that's a yeah, good I'm pretty that's surprised really that was point. your number one pick, man. But that was good. Yeah, that was good. Dirk always Dirk threw me from that one. But it's you, it's you're really right. right. You could take take the religious part out of it. Right. You, you know, it's still a great damn movie. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's you know people have a hard time looking past the religious part of it. But I'm like, even if you're not, just watch the movie for it being a movie, and it's a damn good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I've still never seen it. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you should you should check it out, man, for real. But it's that not... was my bet. That was my bet for Dirk's number one for sure. Really? Really? Yeah. Are you I was just cheating looking at my letterbox. <laughs> Well, that was, I, didn't even, I didn't even see it on Letterbox. I saw House of a Thousand Corpses. I was like, that's going to be on there. But I can tell you, it's number one right now. It's going to be Fashion of the Christ. Oh, wow. So, I didn't know it was going to be my number one until I got to look at it. Man, I figured, you yeah, that would be a big, you know, big. Yeah, big it wasn't locked there. in. But when I got yeah. to looking at all these movies, I was like, man, this has got to be my number one. That's just how powerful this film is. Like, I, I still, I mean to watch it. I just haven't, I've never yeah. been in the mood to watch a three hour snuff yeah. film. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's brutal as hell. Let me put it that way. It's one of the most brutal movies you'll ever see. Yeah, but let's so. throw an LA age jabber, why don't we? You know? Yeah, I watched that. I <laughs> fucking that was my favorite. Right. <laughs> let's see. I watched the untamed twice. Watch the untamed twice. I haven't seen fucking Passion of the Christ. Is there, <laughs> is there a fetus fucking or throat fucking? What am I in there? Yeah. <laughs> There's a creepy scene, though, like where the devil, it looks like the painting of uh, Mary holding baby Jesus, but it's Satan holding a baby. And you see this little creepy ass aged, evil looking baby just turn his head, man. It's like one of the most creepiest shots you'll ever see in a movie. Mm. But, yeah, good pick, man. Brad, what you got for your number one, man? Well, this is a big favor to Dirk, so I'm surprised it wasn't on his list at all, but the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Oh, shit, man. (laughs) 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 Um, (laughs) My number one uh, should be a no surprise to anybody. Uh, High tension. Oh, yeah. big okay. of this <laughs> I wrote a fucking book about it here. Um, yeah. I'm not going to go through all of it. Uh, you heard the director. He's made uh, he made the Hills of Eyes remake. He made Crawl, Mirrors. He's made several good movies. He's a great Piranha. director. Yep. Yeah. And uh, shot in 36 days. Takes place in the French countryside. It was shot 100% in Romania. Uh, did a real good job making it look like France, I thought. Never been to France, but in movies, that's what France looks like. Well, they're in a fucking cornfield. Yeah. But it's the French cornfield. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the French countryside is very, you know, hilly and green like that. Right. Um, but that um, is a mess. <laughs> uh, Cecile uh, de France is Marie. She does a great job. This is Marie on the cover. Uh, but the star of the movie is uh, Philippe Nahoon as Latour, who's been in two or three hundred movies, very famous French actor. But he is so fucking great in this. Everything he does in this, I he's at one time one he's menacing and hysterical, hilarious, uh, sadistic. It's all in one. It's great. And he's not the prototypical killer because he's, you know, like 60. And pudgy and about right. five eight, but he's fucking terrifying in this and uh, very believable. I mean, the opening um, when you you get to see him very early in the movie, he's in his work van. He's a fucking repairman of some kind, and he's in his overalls and he's uh, uh, skull fucking a, a teenage woman's severed head. Okay, That's I wait. The opening second. view of him and he dumps it out the window and you go, oh Jesus, what the fuck is this guy? Yeah. And then it cuts to these two young girls on a college break on their way to um, Alex's uh, parents' house in the French countryside. They just bought the place. They, they're moved in, and they're going to they're going to go study for their law degree or some shit. And it's kind of implied that Marie is attracted to her friend Alex, 
Um, she, the way she looks at her, the way she's just, they're having trouble. She's having trouble with guys and she's always calling Alex a slut, but it's not so heavy, but she's, she's kind of like, she peeks her on her in a shower. Well, she's kind of like smoking outside. She sees her in the shower. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of implied, but not really. And later, um, you know, it's mentioned uh, again, but basically what jumps off the movie is their first night at the French, um, this French farmhouse. There's a home invasion. The Latour character, you know, obviously is there for Alex home from uh, college because he, you know, that's what he's into young girls and uh, basically just turns the house into a fucking slaughterhouse. I mean, it is the most brutal home invasion I have ever seen, and that's the kind of thing I like, so I watch a lot of that shit. Uh, the sound design, the score, uh, the gore, everything about this killing is insanely brutal. Uh, he's, he's making his way through the house. He's very meticulous. He's looking for any signs that there's anybody else there. He looks at the family pictures, makes sure he gets everybody, including Alex's um five-year-old brother who he fucking guns down but again even in those sequences you can start to you can pick up on things like the gun he uses and whatnot and you know there's a massive twist in this movie if you haven't seen it i'm not going to spoil mm -hmm. it but you can you can kind of gather from that um so he makes off with alex in chains he's got her in the back of his van and marie obviously pursues because he can't find marie doesn't even know marie's there but one thing that I always liked about it is once Latour finally leaves the, the house with Alex and Chains in the back of his work truck, he's blaring French love songs. He's smiling ear to ear. He's just, he couldn't be happier. This is the only thing in life he likes. This is what he's made for. That's the way he feels. He's chugging whiskey. He's just having a ball. Um, and he's looking up at his rear view mirror and it's got, pictures of other women with their head cut out of like a family portrait all over he's got them like a collage of them up there and he adds alex to it and he's just so pleased with himself and it's so fucking creepy that this fucking this guy you know exactly what's coming for her and you know the, again the tension that is uh, created uh you know it just really the jeopardy is all there you know that if she if, uh, if marie doesn't save alex She's going to have a, a fate worse than death. And, um, I, I, you know, Dirk kind of touched on it. There's multiple nods in this movie. Um, this director is very famously, you know, big horror fan. And um, I really can't say much more about it because of the twist. But the, the <clears throat> back and forth between Marie and uh, Latour everything about it she thinks she finds a gun and she's gonna she's gonna get him and he he slowly reaches his hand out the window and drops the bullets <laughs> to the gun mm -hmm. like every time she thinks she's gonna get a you know the upper hand he's one step ahead of her and i i just wish i knew everybody in the chat had seen it so i can talk about the last act but right. um latour's character when when he uh <laughs> it's, it's, it's the whole movie i could talk about it but he he finds a, a man in a passing car and he, he hits him with the saw and all that. But Marie's in the back of the car. She's trying to get away from him. She's like wailing and screaming and Latour like mocks her. His whole face is mutilated. He just, to the bitter end, is a son of a bitch. And I love it. It's one of the best characters, one of the best horror villains ever. And uh, I'm very glad it got released here. This, this is a notorious film. It was notoriously butchered and edited. And the only place that would release it in its original cut was the United States. Uh, they got it. Lionsgate purchased the property and it was in theaters and it was rated NC-17. So uh, I don't know how my fat ass got in there to see it as a kid, a uh, young kid at that that age. I was nowhere near 18. I think it was like 15. I saw it in theaters. I was the only one in theaters. I hope the hell we get a 4K of this. A Lionsgate 4K would slip would be great. But the one thing that I would mention in this movie over anything else, the look and feel of it is great. It feels like a fall movie. Um, but the sound design is some of the best sound design you will ever see in on film, you know, yeah, you, no doubt. Like brutality the, in the farmhouse, the axe killing with the ribs, the way it's breaking through the ribs as right. he's walking through the, um, the gas station to try to look for, you know, he, he thinks that the gas lurk saw something 
So he starts to look through the noises that he's making. The fuel, when he's filling the tank up with fuel, you just like it, it, it again, the tension is so high because you know there's only so many clicks. It's an old style pump. There's only so many clicks before that thing is full. And once it becomes full, the whole bottom falls out. You know, it was like, oh God, he's going to come back to the pump now and see her trying to get out. It just, I, I could gush and gush and gush about this movie. Um, I, I, I don't know anybody that doesn't like it. I'd be curious to hear what somebody has to say if they didn't like it. Too gory. Yeah, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about it. Uh, if you haven't seen this one, pick it up. It's ten dollars on Amazon. I'm, we'll never get a four K. I would love it if we did, but Lionsgate owns the property. Maybe one day they will. But um, yeah, this is number one. It's a perennial top ten for me for sure. So that that whole scene with um, with him in the truck in the truck. <laughs> And you're kind of like, and it's I, the sound design is amazing, but the cinematography, the way they made these shots um, it, for something so brutal, it, it's also so elegant that it's a slow pan up to the to the cab of the truck, and you you like, okay, I know what's going on here, I got this. Yeah. And then he throws the head out, so <laughs> but he does it such a nonchalant way, like it's yeah. like it's a like it's a big gulp cup. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, crash. And, and the way they catch it cinematographically, and where and then the way the sound goes, you're just kind of like, What the fuck did I just see? Like, yeah, wait, what was that? What's going and then, on? And then you're just, you just, you can't stop watching it. Yeah, I was like, I, I know this is going to be a hell of a ride when I walked when I saw that opening act. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just, he, he's so, he's very playful too. Like, he pours whiskey all over Alex as she's in the back and then lights, lights a match and just reaches it over there. Just reaches over and then waits until yeah. she sees it. Once she sees the match I and, so. and she starts to scream, he pulls the match away real quick and just starts yeah. laughing. He's just having the fucking time of his life. And he just murdered a whole fucking family brutally. I mean, uh, brutal I mean, is not the right word. There's got to be a darker word or stronger word right. the way he kills these fucking people. Uh, it's just not to be that mean, guy, but the, the best scene in the movie is when the girl's pleasuring herself. Just saying. That's a Here standout scene for me, but anyway, that's just the kind of, kind of guy I am. <laughs> yeah, and, and and if you watch, like I said, you know, spoiler alert, okay, Cecile de France is a lesbian, or she's into Alex. Well, if you watch early on, you 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 kind of pick up the cues. Like in the car the when they're driving, uses to gun down the boy is hanging on the wall inside the the you know it's the exact same gun, but in the in the you know when it's actually being shot, he pulls it out of the truck. You know, so, I mean, it, it's just, you can pick up on what's happening if you really watch it close. And I, I figured Dirk would like it because it's one of those movies when you rewatch it again, you go, yeah. oh, I get it. You know, you can see Alex the whole time. Every time she sees Marie, she reacts in a certain way. Whenever Marie comes near her, she's not like, oh, God, thank God. You know, she sees Marie and she's like, oh, fuck, no, not again. You right. know, she, she re, 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 recoils from her. So, um, yeah, I've, I've watched movie. it several times. I mean. Is highly rewatchable. Yeah, I know yeah. the uh, the the uh, director and the writer in one of the commentaries are um, for your next. You know, they they admit that they relied heavily on on this movie, which you know, it's, you know of home invasion movies, there are none better. Yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't know that that Dean Koontz though had wrote like I didn't know that that is where they got that's the a, idea. That's, a con that's like a bit of controversy. Like um, Aja does not admit. That admit that that at all that it was inspired like it was inspired by or influenced by, right. but Dean Koontz does. And I mean, I haven't read the book. I have no idea, um, but I guess it's different enough. I don't know. Right. That tripped me out though. I was like, damn. Yeah, that's a but great yeah, movie. That's I want to see in the theaters kind of yeah. on just on a whim and nothing else playing kind of deal. And it was like, damn, that was great. Yeah, when yeah. I first seen it, when it mm -hmm. first came out on video, is when I first saw it and. Mm -hmm. I was blown away. Yeah, I, I rewatched it probably January, February this year. I rewatched it. Man, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, uh, the originally they didn't want the the original script was just the it all took place in the one location, the farmhouse, the home invasion. Mm -hmm. um, it took longer for him to find the boy and all that stuff, and then they added the extra scenes. I'm so glad they added that gas yeah. station scene. Hell yeah! And oh, then the gas the station final, scene, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah man. The whole, the, she's they're at that gas station for 20 minutes or something. I mean, right. it, it just he is uh, relentless, and um, and then the final scene in Daybreak when it's finally daylight and all that. I just I've always oh hell yeah. It's one yeah. of those movies you don't watch the English dub. 
watch the the actual French track and read the subtitles. It makes a big difference. Once you hear Latour talk, the guy they use for Latour on the English uh, dub is terrible. You need to hear Latour's actual voice in the, um, the the French version, in my opinion. Well, the one that I got, I don't have an option. Oh, okay. It's just the French. It's the only the French? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's a, that's a great number one, man. Yeah, it's a, I like it a lot. I'm a big fan. That was the one that was like I made a top five list. I put I picked that movie, and then I had to make a four, top four Worked list. Down from there. Yeah. 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 All right, Brian, what you got, buddy? I don't know if I could top that uh, paragraph. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a book. Yeah. <laughs> several, cha- several chapters of that book. Um, uh, my number one is a 2001 film from uh, director Terry Zwigoff, who also directed Bad Santa. Um, but this is his uh, film before that one, and this is uh, Ghost World. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. This one stars Thor Birch and Scarlett Johansson, also Steve Buscemi. Um, uh, Thor Birch and Scarlett Johansson are Enid and Rebecca, I believe, are the names in the movie. And they're, um, they're just graduating high school. Um, kind of two... Um, to people to like kind of they're, they're not hip to the crowd or anything like that they're kind of their own their own style and everything they're kind of the outsiders of the of the whole high school and everything so um they plan to um get jobs and get an apartment together in the middle in the summertime but uh enid has to do um a remedial art class otherwise she won't be able to graduate so she has to do an art class during the summer during summer school whatever to graduate and um, Scarlett Johansson's getting a job and getting her own place and stuff like that while she's doing that. And um, it just shows them, like, like, coming of age, it shows them, like, separating um, as, as best friends do after high school and shows the whole aspect of that. Um, and just how people grow apart um, and part of growing up. And uh, also there's this um, – they, they, they try to play this prank or whatever on this uh, – they see this ad in the newspaper about this guy who's looking for a date. And so they call it just just as a prank, and then they go and um, they tell him to meet him up at this uh, like kind of like fifties diner place. And so it's uh, Steve Buscemi's character, and they go to this diner or whatever, and um, they just kind of sit and back and laugh at him, um, kind of drinking a milkshake by himself, waiting for somebody that's not not coming, not going to come. And uh, so they they kind of feel bad for the guy, and they end up uh, meeting up with him at um, kind of like a. a they're doing like a like a flea market, not like a flea market, a garage sale type thing, where he's selling vinyl records out of it. So Enid, Enid's character goes up there and um, she meets up with uh, Steve Buscemi and uh, they start talking and stuff and becoming like real good friends. And uh, they have kind of a weird relationship where he's like an older guy, of course, and she's a younger girl. And so people think that uh, there's something going on there really isn't. And she kind of ends up like kind of falling for him and stuff like that. And it's just kind of like a Real great coming of age movie. I mean, I just have always taken to it. Um, real great performances from everybody that's involved. Um, it's got a, another performance from Brad Renfro in here, one of his later roles before he passed away. Um, great criterion here. Uh, awesome early performance from Scarlett Johansson before she was famous, really. Um, this is based on a graphic novel from an artist called Dan- Daniel Close, was his name. He also did a movie, uh, 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 another. Um, graphic novel called Wilson, who's uh, what made into another movie um, starring Woody Harrelson later on. But, uh, yeah, it's just one I've always loved, man. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this movie at all, but... No, I've heard of it. I just picked it up from Criterion, this last Criterion, so... Like to watch list. Yeah. I'm definitely going to check it out now. I'm and, uh, now. I also remember, like, when I was in high school, like, uh, my English teacher showed the whole class this movie, and, like, everybody else was falling asleep and stuff, and I was just, like, all into it. Just, I don't know. <laughs> I guess only yeah, the outsider. What's that? I, said, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, yeah I got about there on the show. If I got out the Criterion sale, I watched. I think the you might like it, Brad. Shelf. Actually, you might. You might. Oh, like I've it. heard it's very, very good. I just yeah, I've heard good things, but I just never got around. Yeah, I'm definitely check that out. Now, trash to watch anything. Yeah, you got good. me intrigued to watch that Criterion though. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, Johnny really liked it when he watched it. Good pick, man. Yeah, man. All right. Um, I was um a little twisted on my number one pick, and I'll explain more about that into the stream. But um, yeah, this here when I when I rewatched it, 
for the stream, whatever it, it was, it stayed number one, and that's where it, that's where it set the entire few weeks since the last stream, whatever. And this was an absolute fantastic movie. This this is pretty close to a perfect movie for me, and it's on to be training day. Great, pick. my number one. Um, this movie here on a rewatch, I've seen it four or five times, but it's been a couple years since I've seen it. Um, absolutely fantastic. This is by far my favorite role of Denzel <laughs> he's ever done. He's one of my favorite actors. Um, it was directed by Antoine Fuqua, if I'm saying that right. Stars Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke, who also just great character. Um, also has Scott Glenn. I'm a big Scott Glenn fan. He has a small role. But he's great in it. Um, a rookie cop. <clears throat> a rookie cop spends his first day as an L.A. narcotics officer with a road detective who isn't as he appears to be. And um, Denzel Washington, man, you kind of you kind of love the character, but he's such an asshole in this. You know, he's such a bad guy. But, you know, it's, it's a character that you just kind of, I don't know, I really loved his character. I enjoyed his character. I think he did a great job with it. Um, he he um, as lived a lot of his lines. Like one of the famous lines in this is, um, it says, King Kong, it got shit on me. That was kind of thrown <laughs> in there. The director loved it. Um, my favorite line he says, he's like, God damn, you shot me in my ass. When he says that, it's just, it's, it's the greatest thing in the movie. It's fantastic. Um, the The coffee shop that they first meet at the first day, that's the same coffee shop that um that they they had in seven, the um, really? the, um Gwyneth Paltrow and Morgan Freeman had met at the coffee shop. Same coffee shop. Didn't know that. Oh shit, I didn't know that. Uh, Denzel will, um got the um the Academy Award for Best Actor, and y'all y'all correct me if I'm wrong. I got here that Ethan Hawke was nominated for Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, and I thought somebody said in the chat that he won. Did he win Best Actor for this, or was he nominated? I know he was nominated. Um, so he I have to back. check on he, that. He won an Oscar. Okay. For best man and, um, leading role. The somebody that actually thought they were going to get the role was Toby Maguire. Um Toby Maguire oh. was considered for the role of Jake. Um it, it was so he was so deep into the role that he followed undercover undercover narcotics agents for two months and gained weight for the role. But Ethan Hawk, the director's first choice, became available and was given the role. And somebody else that was um up for the role was Eminem. Um oh, if you really? know um, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg were in this. Right. And Dr. Dre was the one that kind of made Eminem, I think. Um, and Dr. Dre ended up doing the, the music for the soundtrack. Um, the word fuck is used 211 times, which is um, <laughs> why I love it so much. Um, and something else, um, and I know, um, Brad, you're probably like this. Mickey Wart was the director's first choice, but the studio turned him down. I know we were talking oh. last stream about Mickey Wart, the wrestler. That everybody just He just kind of burned so many bridges. But he was well, who, the, the director had him as first choice, but the, like I said, the studio turned him down. Denzel said this is the favorite character he's ever played, um, which I think he's saying something. He's had some great roles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, the scene where they take Ethan Hawke, the, um, all the Mexicans take Ethan Hawke, and Denzel basically drops him off, whatever, to, to be killed, yeah. whatever. They're playing poker. And while they're sitting there playing poker, Ethan Hawke had no idea what the other actors were going to do or say during that scene. So... You know, the part about, you know, let me hold your gun, all that kind of stuff. Ethan Hawke just kind of ad-libbed up through all that. He had no idea what they were going to say. And he just kind of played off what they said. They wanted Ethan Hawke to look perplexed and confused and that kind of stuff. So oh, that was damn. Kind of, so that was kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, what else do I got oh. here? Um, like I said, just about a perfect movie from start to finish. It's All the actors in this do a great job. Um, it's just, I don't know. I'm, I, I absolutely adore this movie. It's just, just great. Um, it had a forty-five million dollar budget, made seventy-six million in the U.S., one hundred four million worldwide. Um, came out October fifth, two thousand one. That's all I got wrote down here, guys. But if you hadn't seen this, I mean, surely most people have seen this by now. If you hadn't seen this, you need to check it out. It's um, like I said, Denzel's role in this is like above anything he's ever done for me. Just absolutely yeah. love this movie. Yeah. Hell yeah. So that is my number one. Hell yeah. So, you shot nice. me in my ass. It's, it's, oh, that's great. <laughs> y'all be shooting hoops in Pelican Bay when I'm done with y'all. Yeah. Well, I like his friend Roger in that movie. Roger. This is the guy yeah. that's constantly at home reading the newspaper. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Scott Glenn. I always yeah. mix him up with Lance Hendrickson. Yeah. That uh, actor. Yeah, man, it was, it was a fun movie. Like I said, when I rewatched it, man, I, like Great I said, day, I was kind of like what Brad said. That was my number one. Everything else was just going to fall in line after that. Oh yeah, I got the gold slip for that though, Alan. I, I didn't, I didn't see a slip on yours. 
<laughs> no, this is the basic bitch. Yeah. <laughs> if you've noticed, I've had quite a few of those in the stack. <laughs> yeah. He's I don't mind bitch. Bitch. It, it, it plays just fine. Hey, it works, man. <laughs> All right. Let's call up on the chat. <clears throat> call up on the chat, then we'll do our honorable mentions here. Um Bob says, I'm sorry, film is subjective, y'all. We can't all like the same stuff. Y'all hate movies. I love too. I'm doing a rock tomato stream soon. Don't miss it. I'll have more things you love. I hate. Yeah, he didn't like Phenomena either. Come on now. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. He, he liked Tenebrae, though. Say yeah. what? I'm going to beat this guy's ass. Right? <laughs> Phenomena. I don't care what you say, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that's right, Bob. We all love the same shit. This stream doesn't exist. I agree. I'm glad we don't right. like the same shit. I mean, oh, that's what, I look part, forward to seeing what everybody else likes. For the most oh, yeah. part, all the picks, I mean, we had completely different mood. This, this oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Our Forrest Redmond says, any of y'all see the 25th Hour movie with Edward Norton from 2002? Definitely worth a watch. I have seen it. It's been yeah, a long time. It's a great movie. Uh, it's a it. Spike Lee joint. All right, Hall notes said, Dr. Ordinary, I didn't expect anyone to pick this. I'm talking about loss of translation. Yep. Yeah. Yep, good pick. Bob says, I love 28 Days Later if that counts for anything, buddy. Hall <laughs> notes said, look up Arnold, Arnold's Cup of Noodle Japanese commercial. Oh, yeah. yeah. There, there's a ton of them out there, and they're yeah. fucking hilarious. Mark Coleman, the guy I know, um, he did a Gillette commercial in Japan. And he was riding a banana, shaving his face. <laughs> That's like an Old Spice commercial. <laughs> yeah, it, was Gillette. It, were, it wasn't Gillette. It was a different, I don't know, it was a shaving uh, thing. Riding a fucking banana. Right. Dressed up like a banana. I can't oh, remember. Fighter? Yeah, the fighter. Mark he was Carter. really popular in Japan. Yeah. He was a pro wrestler and he fought in, obviously fought in Pride. Yeah. And uh, he was very popular over there. And like I said, he was on a big billboard. Dressed as a banana, I can't remember what how he explained it. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> they love doing weird shit like that. Oh, they do. Oh, yeah. I, have look, I have to look some of those up. Yeah. All right. In the Phantom said Forrest Rabbit, 25th is one of the best Spike Lee movies, in my opinion. Great pick. Boss Holland, I watched Man Eater two weeks ago pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> India fan is a very underrated Sofia Coppola movie is somewhere, which is my personal favorite from her. It's one with uh, Stephen Dorff in there. Stephen yeah, Dorff, right? Yeah, that, that's it's not a bad. Good, it's a good movie. Yeah. Laughing at Bob. Chris C says, number one, I put Dawn of the Dead remake. I mean, Disturbs Down with the Sickness playing during the ending credit scenes. Yeah. I still play that album constantly. And they did a, a, some other like folk kind of like folk yeah, yeah. music of that one during the movie yeah. also is pretty cool. That's so funny. Yeah, it was funny more version. like a like almost like a big band version. Like a barber yeah. shop. But the, yeah. but the director really picked that music for the movie, whatever. He did a great job picking the music. Yeah, my that was a Johnny job. Cash song. <laughs> it was like Johnny Cash song when they're and that, yeah. that was pretty pretty good choice yeah, yeah. too. At the, the beginning, opening, yeah. Yeah. I love that fucking movie. Um, said to you, Bank says my number one movie is Training Day, two thousand one. Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke, directed by Antonio Fuqua, The Dance of Death. Can I say it one more time? You shot me in my ass. All right, I won't say it no more. <laughs> you want to go to jail? You want to go, to jail or you wanna go home? Yeah. <laughs> Shit's chest not checkers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dirk. Fuck. <laughs> and goddamn, whenever they catch <laughs> Snoop Dogg's in a wheelchair. They catch Snoop Dogg and he fucking sticks a pin down his throat to make him throw up the all the crack yeah, he yeah. just right. It's a, it's you gonna click the evidence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Bob says, "Um, hell yeah to Chris, Katie Hopcraft. Hey, what's going on? So new name there. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, welcome. Uh-huh. Bob said, Holland, I watch all the awful shark movies. I'm a sucker for shark movies. Yeah, I try to watch all I can." Dick Catan said Bill Murray's best movie was Zombie was Zombie Lamb. <laughs> Probably the greatest game. Yeah. Right. Any regrets? Garfield, maybe. Garfield, maybe. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to those um 4K still books from one and two coming for that. Our right, Anthony's Horror Morris's Cobra Kai has been really good this season. I only have three episodes left to go. I'm glad they started concentrating more on the adults and the kids this season. Yeah, I need to I need to binge through that. I've watched all the rest of the seasons. 
Uh, Indy fan of oh, nice, uh, Identify was on here. Maybe it's Identity. Identity. So damn fun. I missed the start of the stream, so I, I need to check the four and five picks. Yeah, man, go back and check them out. That's some good ones. Mm-hmm. Oh, so there's only a couple I couldn't get through, Bob. Sharks of the corn, sharks of the sharks corn, and, corn and blood corn. in the water. <laughs> Is it the one called Toilet Shark? Alan's House Shark right or Toilet the, Shark? Alan's right now with time stamp right now, so you can right? come back and check these out. <laughs> Yeah, sharks, sharks of the corn. Oh, um, Bob says, "Oh Lord, Will Smith's son is the worst actor." I saw, I saw better acting in Man Eater. And it must be pretty bad. Chris C says, "Hell yeah, that would be my number one." But I forgot it came out during that time. Denzel watching his best role to me. He plays a piece of shit corrupt cop. Man, so good. The Katana's Jaden Smith is a great actor. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Said mm. nobody. Um, <laughs> no one ever. <laughs> Paul says, I just wanted to say, all jokes aside, I look forward to y'all streams every other Saturday. All five of you are a ton of fun to watch. I appreciate it, Bob. Yeah, yeah thanks, man. Definitely. Thanks, Bob. Yep. <laughs> yeah, me and Brian's going to be on a, um, a stream he has coming up here real soon. So y'all keep an eye out for that. Heck yeah. Um, I won't be Bob invited. says, oh my God, no pops, man eater is nothing like Jaws. I'm dying over here. <laughs> I'm going to have to check it out now just to get, you know, lip my stocking. Lip, lip you? Lip, lip you? Lip you? Dip. Everything, man. Everything about, everything he does in it's funny. He tries to take a shower. And, right. You know, it just, and it's nothing like, works there. for him. There's just one the one scene where he's just got to the hotel and he's going up in the elevator and he's like a foot and a half taller than everybody else in the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's real subtle, but it's hilarious. I look forward to checking it out. Right, also, definitely going to be another season of the Cobra Kai. It's definitely Netflix's most successful series, too. Mm, might be Stranger Things, but maybe. That's what I thought. But, yeah, I, I was just going to say, I thought Stranger Things was basically killing it for him. All right, Bob said, it doesn't get worse than House Shark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris said, great choice, Dirk. Movie gets to me every time. Uh, uh, Passion of the Christ 2 is being filmed now. Yeah. Resurrection. It's be the resurrection. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think it takes fan place says, I think that's what um, Mel Gibson said. Takes place really? in hell or purgatory or something. I don't know exactly what. Oh wow! Yeah, so, it was it's, something weird like that. It's it going to be. Like, mm. Yeah, I don't want to get controversial on here or nothing. It's yeah, probably going to yeah. be oh, heavy. God, no. We don't want to get controversial. <laughs> it's probably going to be heavy Catholicism, though. Yeah, and I'm sure. Well, yeah, yeah, that's his thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any fans says, hell yeah, I wasn't sure Passion will hit this list, but it deserves a top spot of Forever Classic. Yeah. <clears throat> Bob said, Pops, top five shark movie stream, make it happen. I'm on in. All right, we'll let you know, man. I'd be down for it. All right. Dick Katana says, Jim and Mel are blank listed because of the Passion of the Christ. <laughs> All right. Evan says, my number two or my number one is training today to protect the sheep. You got to catch the wolf. And it takes a wolf to catch a wolf. Yeah, that's good. Another great line. The great line, yeah. I like Blair in the diner. He tells Ethan Hawke to get some breakfast, and he's like, "No, nah, I'm good." If I was all right, everyone, I'll get some breakfast. He said, "No, nah, you, you done fucked that up." That's over with. All right, what's going on, Coco? It says I saw the Passion in theaters when it came out. I remember it being such a hard watch. Great pick, Dirt. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Chris says Anthony Howard more that Alonzo. Uh, he is a uh, down and dirty, ruthless Vato. I like that. <laughs> Bob says, Lost of Translation was really good. Sorry, I'm like 10 minutes behind. Ain't no worries, man. Yeah, no worries, man. Uh, Johnny Darko says, I need to upgrade Passion of the Christ. Extremely powerful and a lot of scenes that are really hard to watch. I didn't know that was a woman that played Satan. Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah, I didn't know that. I mean, that watching it, man, I, I for real thought that was a dude, you know, but. Yeah. Let's see, live by the sword, die by the sword. That scene is so good, man. Boss, I had to Google Scarlett Johansson's age and eight-legged freaks because she looked good. She was 18. We're good. Mm-hmm. You, you yeah, I felt kind of bad when that when Lily Sabisky and um 
and um, Joy Ride was only 17. Felt kind of bad about that one. But I'm sure right, she was 18 real soon. Paul I Walker. Eight Legged Freaks. And there's a scene in Eight Legged Freaks where Scarlett Johansson's getting out of the shower and you kind of feel bad about yourself, but but also <laughs> not really. Yeah. You wanted to live with it, though. I bet Paul Walker <laughs> was dating that girl. Paul Walker was probably dating that girl on Joy Ride at the time. Maybe. I don't know. You know when he died at 40, 40 years old, his girlfriend of 20, she was 20 years old. His girlfriend of five years was 20 years old. Really? He was 40 when he died. Do the math. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Wow. Weird. Yeah. yeah the parents, weird. I'm, sure, I'm sure the parents were all for it. I'm oh, sure yeah. the parents were like, yeah, you know, that yeah, yeah. Paul's such a nice guy. He's such a nice yeah. guy. Go ahead. <laughs> No, we, we, saw him, we, we saw him and meet the Deedles, and we just love him. <laughs> just love him, man. <laughs> like, like all the T-Rex, all over the there. Tammy, Tammy the T-Rex, the T-Rex, the T-Rex yeah. <laughs> about Leonardo DiCaprio dumping his girlfriend because she hit 25 again. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'll be right back, yeah. All right, man. Uh, Holland says, Bob loves his raunchy comedies. All right, shit. William Defoe played Passion, played Christ in The Last Temptation of Christ. Yep. Well, I was like, yes, I do. Nothing, nothing tops the eighties. I agree. Favorite decade. Magic Hands and Mel Gibbs is an excellent director. He really is. Got some good ones. But I was like, Brad, I know you hate me now, but we'll always share our hatred of par- for paranormal activity. <laughs> I don't hate anybody. If I hated you, you'd be dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> well, this FYI, if there's any contractors that are missing in the greater Midwest area, top the stream. Pull a bunch of cords and shit out of the wall. <laughs> Chris, he says, oh, uh, Robert Anderson, you see VHS2, best cult part ever, and um, found footage, not kidding, it's money. It is good. It's very good. Yeah. The Thai death cult. Mm-hmm. All right. Boss is LA's Jabber. Pop's favorite film of all time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got through it. Oh, oof, it was tough. So Jeff Goldblum, it was, that's one big pile of shit. Yeah, it is. That is one big pile of shit. Yeah. Uh, Bob said, I've seen all the VHS movies. The original VHS is my best friend's favorite film of all times. They're fun. There's, yeah, they're surprisingly no, says, good. Yeah, they are. John said, oh, yeah, that scene holding the baby gives me chills every time I saw it. Talking about the Passion of the Cross there. Bob says, love high tension, incredible. Alexander Aja is excellent. Crawl was killer, too. I need him to direct a film every year. Yeah. I'll be behind that. Yeah, it's tough when they when they kind of go away like that. Yeah. Cindy so Eubank says, Passion of the Cross is a very good movie, but you have to be in a certain mood to watch it. Yes, I haven't rewatched it since I've seen it in theaters. Um, never bought it, but it was, it was tough to watch. Be suicidal. India Phantom, it. right? Unlike yeah. Jesus Christ Superstar, which you can watch anytime. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn. laughs> India Phantom says, honorable mentions. You're a sick bitch. Or <laughs> India Phantom says, honorable mentions for me are Hostile, Bully, Code Unknown, and Sleepless. My top five. Our five the Devil's Rejects, four uh, Ken Park, Mulholland Drive, The Rules of Attraction, The Passion of the Cross. Yeah, man. Um, Devil's Rejects came painfully close to making my list. I don't know, man. Yeah, I already watched them both recently, and I, I liked House of a Thousand more than Devil's Rejects this time. Did you? Yeah. You know, that's funny. They go back and forth every time I watch them. Yeah, yeah. probably maybe the next time be the reverse again. Yeah. 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 Or any fan, I do admire high tension for sure. Crazy stuff happening in horror in this early part of the decade. Yeah, um, yeah. It sets it's horror more, more from a lot. Yeah, of it horror. does. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, top five comedies of two thousand one to two thousand five are American Pie two, Waiting. Yeah, Waiting just about made my list as well. <laughs> I love that movie. Old school Euro Trip and Wedding Crashers. Yeah, that list Waiting is gonna be number one for me. Yeah, Euro Trip's got some pretty damn funny. Moments oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, the whole scene when she she gives him the safety word when he's in the, the German like sex dungeon, yeah. he can't pronounce it <laughs> 15 syllables, <laughs> right? Skirkagargan. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, 
Um, Bob, I think um, High Tension is the worst gore movie. The most gore mm -hmm. mo movie I've ever seen is definitely up there. Yeah, it's I mean, the gore is very well done, <laughs> but I mean, the most gore is like probably Permutos. That's got to be the most gore ever on screen. Or, or, or Brain Dead. Dead, Dead Alive. Dead Alive. Dead alive. I, I would Maybe. say Dead Alive. You've never seen that? What, Dead Alive? I've seen Dead Alive. Uh, Ryan said he'd never seen Dead Alive. Oh, no, I, I said Dead Alive. Dead Alive oh, would okay. be... Right. Yeah, that lot would be my top gore. Yeah, maybe, maybe not the most gore, but I feel like there nobody did gore until they did Dead Alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a different different thing though, because it's like Splash. you can actually, it's like almost like you feel that shit, you know. Like, the, noise, you know? The, 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 the way the Mel Gibson noise, directs it, you yeah. know, I don't know how to explain it. It's just yeah, pretty rough. Bob said watches, we saw high tension as a family. Who watches, <laughs> who, who watches high tension for family movie night? <laughs> <laughs> He'll say my mom was not happy. My dad and I enjoyed it. You Bob, know, Bob I, Bob, I need to be part of your family because that's my family movie night right there. Frozen yeah, yeah. or high tension? Frozen yeah. or high tension? <laughs> you know, in that home invasion, the the dad is the memorial, the memorable kill, the dad, but the yeah. mom gets it so much fucking worse. Yeah, in uh, yeah. the home invasion. I mean, it's a yeah. brutal fucking killing. And he takes a sweet ass time with her. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to <laughs> pop goes the weasel. You know, I'm trying to picture me <laughs> and my mom sitting on the couch watching the scene where he's got a severed head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> doubt, right? Fucking <laughs> Bob's just passing the popcorn. popcorn. You know, you know. I mean, that's the whole be like a, He must have got that idea from like. Like some real life shit, like Ted Bundy, you know. That's what I thought. Like when I first seen that shit, I was like, "Man, that's some yeah. Ted Bundy shit for yeah, sure." Yeah, that's well, frailty. Frailty is very loosely based off of. There was a real serial killer that that thought he was receiving messages from God. His name was Joseph Kittinger. Went around oh. with his son killing people. Right. Okay. All right, Lionsgate 4K still book. Make it happen, Brev. I would love it. I'd love to have a slip yeah. steel book, but uh, Best Buy exclusive, all that. I just don't. This day and age, it's so violent, and um, I don't know. I don't know that. It, yeah. I don't know it'll ever happen. You could do the, the but, slip cover steel book, you know, and have the yeah. reveal when you. That'd be perfect. Be yeah. perfect. Maybe Vinegar Syndrome put it out. That'd be great. Nobody would yeah. know if they hadn't right? seen the shit. Yeah. Yeah. One underneath the slip is uh, they're both holding the saw. And underneath yeah. the slip, it's, you know. Oh, yeah, that would be, yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. All right. Chris C says, I've never watched a horror movie growing up with my mom. She was the one that told me about Hellraiser. Rest in history. That's a good mom. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, uh, Indian fans. Hell yeah, Pops. The best scene in high tension is that is that female pleasuring. I love the alternate title for it, which is Switchblade Romance. <laughs> I love that it's. It's just nothing but a gore fest, and that's what Pops hones in on. Yeah. That's all he remembers. Well, you know, right. The hey, fucking you see girl that scene off and fucking got the music going. You know, yeah. got the music going. The headphones and shit. Even the song she picks, right? You know, you can you can pick up cues from that. Yep. Right. You know. Yeah. You're right. I mean, there's all it kinds. Was, of it shit, was man. a great moment. <laughs> uh, Bob says, "Sounds to me all that guy is jealous. High tension was super original. I smell jealousy." Oh, so I watched Ghost World this week, Brian. I enjoyed it. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, I'm gonna check right, it Ghost out. Ghost World is kick ass. Um, that's my favorite Scarlett Johansson role, to be honest. Before she became the Babe, it's a brilliant movie. Now that's not the pick, Brian. The, the other, the animated shit, right? Is it? No, it's not animated at all. Okay, what am I thinking of? There's something Ghost World. I thought. Uh, I don't know. It's got got the the guy that played uh, in Usual Suspects. Um, that's like, what the hell is his damn name? Big name actors in Usual right. Suspects. Right, I can't. He's in Hereditary. Uh, He's the dad in Hereditary. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Malcolm Gabriel Byrne. Byrne. Gabriel Byrne. That's it. Gabriel, Gabriel Byrne. Byrne. Yeah, Gabriel Byrne. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what one you're talking about. Attila or Alita or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I have to find it and I'll show you. But it's an animated flick. Hmm. Go Cool World. That's what the hell it is. Oh no, no, no! It's not I'm cool. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> totally different movie. Yeah. 
Christy, it's a good pick, Brian. I'll have to wait for another sell for Criterion. Yep, I choose to get my Criterion this too. Um, on time to buy them. Bob says, uh, Christy, 100%. Fuck yeah, Pops. Any fan says, Washington won uh, Best Actor. Hawk was nominated for Supporting and Training Day. That's what I put down in my notes. I thought somebody had said something different in the chat earlier. Christy says, you know what you get for killing a cop? The gas chamber. You know what the gas chamber spells like? Pine, pine hole. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're, go you're going to pine old heaven. Yeah. Bob says, a man apart is easily in my top five. Anyone seen that? Vin um, Diesel? Yeah, Vin Diesel. Yeah, it's a Vin Diesel. I've never seen it, but. Yeah, I've never Vin seen Diesel. it either. I heard it. I know really what the cover looks like, but I haven't seen it. Uh, Sydney says, Denzel won, won the Oscar for training day. Yep. Chris Lee says, um, that's for Vin Diesel, right? Yeah. All right. Robert says, uh, yes, loved it. Chris Lee says, Hawk won the award for best supporting actor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Holland says number one for me is internal Infernal Affairs. The movie The Departed is based off based off of great cast, just like Departed, but a much better and more <laughs> complete movie in my opinion. <laughs> Had to throw a few extra A's in there for the second time around. Make it that was last. India Phantom. Yeah. Uh, Jim Broadbent uh, won supporting for something called Iris that year over Ethan Hawke. I feel pretty more confident he was just nominated. I don't think he won. But. The more pretentious Mag pick. Yeah. Magic Hand says, um, Pops, love that Clint Eastwood set. And that, is that Blu-ray also? Is that out of print? If not, where can I get it? Um, I got that from Zavi, and I don't think it's out of print, but um, you have to look and see. But I think it has jumped up in price. I think I got that set for, I don't know, maybe high 200s, low 300s. And I seen it going for like 425 the other day. Um, okay, premium, but I want to say, damn. I want to say Zobby still has it, um, but you, I would I would, I would start at Zobby and see and see if they still got it over there. But it's um, it's what I said. It's all Blu-rays. There's like three movies that are DVD because they never got a Blu-ray, but all the rest of the movies in there are Blu-ray. Just look up cunt box set. Yeah, <laughs> cunt Eastwood. I'm still fucking my Clint Eastwood set. Goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> but Coco I have to admit, every time, every, every time I look at it, that's all I see now. Oh, I just hear Coco laughing her ass off right now. <laughs> yeah, it's all her damn fault. <laughs> oh, Coco will never know how much she's made my day forever with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she knows. She hears you right now. <laughs> um, Hall says, I, I, I hope shelf. little, little Nikki is Satan. <laughs> Uh, my bad. I just meant Cobra Kai is one of their most successful. I would think. Sorry, I don't actually know numbers. Y'all right, probably Stranger Things. Yeah, I don't know numbers either. That's just a guess. Both of them have got to yeah. be top, top one and two. Yeah, I would. Yeah, right. Holland uh, says, "Do the math, Brad." Okay, forty minus five equals thirty-five. Paul is thirty-five. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right? What's the problem, dude? I see. Yeah, I my, no, what's the problem? I was about to, about to break out my calculator. I appreciate you doing that. <laughs> Or Forrest Redman, any of y'all we'll y'all football shit. fans? Any of y'all football fans are so who do you got? Falcons or Packers? Oh, Packers all day long. Uh, look at, hold on a minute. Let's let's see what Dr. Ordinary's choice is here. Take a look yeah, at the football. Let's see, there's that. And let me show you that. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have your answer there. <laughs> By the way, check out the Maverick um thing he has on the wall there. It's pretty badass. Oh, yeah. I'm moving That's my mouse cool. and look have to see my fucking mouse. But, um, <laughs> what a dumbass! <laughs> well, that's one of the what's it called, um, Ryan? It's like made uh, out of metal. Display the metal metal displays. The metal. Yeah, it looks badass. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it looks pretty badass. All right. Wild Wrangler, Clint Eastwood, first film, Revenge of the Creature, nineteen fifty-five. He was a lab assistant, mouse in the pocket. Yo, yeah. I haven't watched the movie, but I have YouTube that scene. I'm um, just so I can see it, whatever, and um, very early. Chris he said, by the way, you saw Barbarian today. There you go, Brian. I know you want to talk to Barbarian about right. somebody. Um, my horror of the well, year, man. it's a great year for horror so far. Justin Long is a damn awesome, is damn awesome in this. You will hate hate him, trust me. Yeah, that's how yeah, that's man. how on my list to watch, man. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm hearing good things. Don't look up any shit. Just go I heard see it. it's uh, Justin Long's best movie since Tusk. So I mean, if it's anywhere near the level of Tusk. <laughs> 
That's got to be great. <laughs> so is it knocking? You think it knocks X out? No. <laughs> <laughs> he just carries that around for whatever that brings it up. <laughs> no, but for me, it's right. It's right behind X for me. Okay. Better than black phone then. Uh, I liked it more than black phone. Okay. Did you really? Yeah. Because I, I thought black phone was fantastic. Oh no, I, I really need to check too. it out. I like black phone, but I don't think I'll go back and rewatch it. That's the thing. You know, it was good for what it was. Hmm. Well, know. that's a good point because I've only seen it the once, but I was impressed, man. I, I thought it was like well written. Yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of Black Phone. Yeah. I was a fan of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll rewatch the shit out of it. You know? I'll, I'll rewatch the shit out of this movie. Yeah, I'm going to so, check it out for sure, man. I grabbed this. By the way, it's a German oh, yeah. 4K still book, or I mean, media book. So, this is a very nice looking release. That's pretty good. Yeah. You're the first one to get the 4K, damn it. <laughs> that is 4K? You know, the, the 4K is coming out next week now that I got it. Yeah, I, probably. I hope so. I mean, that would suck, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'd buy the bitch again, man. I love that damn movie. Um, Bob yeah, says, we saw a lot of tension as the family in theaters, but um, but mom got messed up. The blood just splattered the closet. Oh, yeah. Hey, you may not have seen the unrated. Um, the, I don't know if you saw the full cutter. From what I understand, it was available or some places, but it was most people saw the NC-17, but there's a lot more. Yeah. yeah. There's extended stuff with that where he cuts her fucking hand off. I mean, it, it's yeah. nuts what he does. Yeah. He really mutilates that mom and that. Oh, yeah. But yeah. the throat slash is great when she's, like, trying to gasp, but yeah. it just keeps opening further and further. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. hell of a special yeah. effects, man. Like, yeah, yeah, right. Quite. Collagulate. How do you say that shit? Collagulated. Collagulate. 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 Black looking shit coming out of her neck. What's going on, folks? By the way, from somebody that's worked with a lot of blood, they did an amazing job with that scene there. Yeah. With with the way blood looks like when it actually starts to coagulate. It gets right. jelly like. Hell yeah. Yeah, Hook said um we'll say cool world, but earlier. Cool world, yeah. Uh Indian Phantoms and Cool World. Chris C says, cool world, yep, laugh out loud. I'm not paying 28 bucks for for a Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Bob says, I'll be getting cool world, but not for 28 bucks. Need it for the shout salute line. <laughs> uh, yeah. Huh? It's got a number on the fucking spine. Y'all got to take that to fucking account. It's got a number on the spine. You guys don't know. You don't understand. It's numbered. The spine is numbered. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, so I got 143 of the motherfuckers, but I'm not gonna get that one. Come on. It's yeah, just funny um, the, the mentality. They're like, I won't spend 28 bucks on a Blu-ray, but then they'll spend like 40 40 bucks on a fucking box set of Tenebrae yeah. or 45, you know, like it's it's yeah. all subjective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It definitely is. All right. Chris A said Robert Anderson says, Yep, I gotta save for the for RL stuff. Uh no Blu-ray is worth 28 bucks. I don't know about that. Mm. There's some Blu-rays. Uh, Chris says, I love X. Uh, so this is a hard choice, but horror this year has been so damn good. It's been a good year for horror, it really has. It really, yeah, better than the better, year, some, I guess, getting better. Yeah, getting says, better, better. Chris also wants 28 days, but why is, why is it 25 bucks? You know, plus 2022, um, average price for most Blu rays that are not going to be bargain dumpers, whatever, are going to be about that price. It's probably just like, getting rare low print numbers or something. I'd love to see Second Sight take that one and do something with it, clean it up, yeah. you know, make it less dark. Um, I think Bob's talking about the Sandra Bullock movie, 28 Days. 28 Days? Oh, yeah. No, there There's go. a joke about that in the oh, office where, yeah. um, where Pam <laughs> yeah. goes to yeah, see, she wants to see 28 Days and she ends up seeing 28 Days later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah big difference. <laughs> Because that's coming out on Blu ray like this week or something. Yeah. Sandra Bullock gets eaten by a zombie. <laughs> Lucky zombie. <laughs> All right. Um, Hollis. <laughs> Hollis says, Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you for your sacrifice, Pops. Let's get that 4K. Uh, Chris says, I will double dip and buy X on 4K. Um, is, is that and in, in fresh and barbarian for horror of the year? Fresh. I'm not familiar with that one. That was a Netflix movie, I think. Yeah, I didn't watch yeah. it. Was it? I yeah, heard it was, a lot about it. Yeah, I haven't seen it either, but it was, yeah, Netflix. I don't think I have either. Chris says, you're right, Brian. I will pay pay up for the box set plus shipping. Yeah. 
That damn Boss fresh Jeff. title just reminded me of like one of them damn grocery uh, delivery services. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just kind of took me out of watching this shit. Just well, I was, yep, I seen her hand get cut off. Yeah, there, there's even in that scene again. She Marie tries to help her, and all the mothers trying to speak her last words, and she the, the word she gets out is why, right? As Marie's standing, is right there trying to help her. And thinking back on that scene, that could be a nod to Halloween, you know? She's in the closet. Right. Yeah, she's with, in the closet. With the, yeah, with the louver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the louver's oh. getting upgraded with blood, and it just. All right, Wild Wranglers, as I watch Men 2022 and The Lighthouse 2019 for the first time, wow. Yeah, I like The Lighthouse. I still don't know if I like Men or not. I need <laughs> to watch right. uh, you, know, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, I still need to but, see uh, it. Hey, so. Alan, I can't I make it over opinion. tomorrow. I'm, I'm staying here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll make my decision more. Just, just um, a second, buddy. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, Bob says, Pop's always cracking me up. Appreciate it, Bob. Uh, Chris C says, um, Wild Wrangler says, Three add men to the top horror this year, or I, I'll add men. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm you know, I, I only speak in Roman numerals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got it for you. <laughs> I need to collect, need to collect my number spines. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. I got a problem. Magic hand says, "Y'all like men." I'm not gonna. I'm gonna let them. Work. Um, Bob says, hey, Brian, Tenebri was like $35 and it comes with a slip box, po- uh, booklet, and poster. Cool World is a standard Blu-ray. Yeah. But whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, Hook says, like, I got to see poor early. It's even better than X. That's good, though. Yeah, 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 it makes me happy. Well, why don't you right. brag about it, motherfucker? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm glad though. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm glad. I can't wait to check yeah, it out. Lucky man, that's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, well, yeah, it's good to hear, man. Um, Wild Wranglers is fifty fifty. Oh, that, that the um movie with Seth Rogen in it. Yeah, and what's his name? Uh, Justin Jordan Levitt. Jordan Levitt. Yeah. Boss, yes, Brian. The Sandra Bullock twenty eight days. That should be twenty five dollars. Just a bare bone Blu ray. Yeah, that's pretty high for that movie. That should definitely be a you know. That's one of those Sony, Sony, movie. Sony made on demand, yeah. man. All the Sony made on yeah. demand discs are like 20 plus. Yeah. Chris say Lighthouse is very Lovecraft, Lovecraftian. 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 Yeah. Lovecraftian. Our fresh was Hulu. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I never know. Oh, there's the old nasty pearl necklace on the big screen. Damn. Forrest Redman says, Pops, have you seen the Clint Eastwood movie Coke and the Bluff? I did. And I've just watched it. Um, I've seen it before. I just watched it again, I don't know, maybe eight or nine months ago. Uh, Indian fan says, I might be alone, but I can only watch horror movies now, between now and Halloween. I'm a fucking geek. Yeah, you're I alone. Watch yeah. Movie, man. I can watch this yeah, shit every year day. Year round, man. I watch them year round. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, me too, I man. I can watch that shit in church. Not a real horror fan unless you watch them year round. Yeah, I yeah, prefer to watch them in the summer. I mean, that's my favorite time to watch them. Yeah, They're fucking hot yeah. out and miserable. Are you gonna watch looking, Jaws in October? Come on now. Yeah, I'm looking right. forward to fall, so I want to watch you know horror. Yeah, Jaws. get you get you ready for it, man. Yeah, like movies like the thing though. I could watch that shit in dead of summer. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, guys, we have come to the part of the night we're gonna do our honorable mentions. So everybody should have two. And we're going to start off with Dr. Ordinary to see what you guys All get. Right. I'm kind of excited to show my two here. Yeah, I am too. So the, the first honorable mention is an easy because it's a, it's another dupe, but there's Donnie Darko. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, I totally agree with Dirk. Can't say enough about this movie. Um, you know, it's kind of uh, the only thing else I have to add is this movie really did not get um, any of the advertising that it should have. And the, the whole reason was it was, it was right after 9 11. And of course, it's got a scene with an airplane engine going through. Right. Yeah. Um, and so they, the studio really was super gun shy about um, promoting this movie. So it really didn't get the, uh, the press that it should have. Um, but it's a it's a great movie it's a great psychological thriller like i said earlier every single time i watch this movie there's something new i pick up out of it um i guess the best thing i like about this movie is is it it starts off 
being a movie that I think that personally, typically I thought I wasn't going to like because it felt very emo-ish and it yeah. felt very emo angsty. Like I'm like, all right, yeah. here, we, here we go. But it ends up not being um, that at all. Um, and it's just, it's a great movie. My second honorable mention is a movie I bet nobody would have ever expected out of me, um, including Pops. Um, and that's Spirited Away. Mm. I doubt oh. anybody on here even knows what that movie oh, is. Oh, shit. Nope. No, nope. I have no um, idea. So Studio Ghibli is a Japanese um, company that um, produces animated films. They're not anime, um, but they're animated movies. It's a director by the name of um, Hayao Miyazaki. Um, it's a great story. Um, it, this is a movie that you start watching it and you know that it's an animated movie and minutes into it, you completely forget that. I'm not a huge, it, it's a weird movie for me to, to even have on my list because I'm not a, a animated movie animation fan at all. And yet I love this movie. The story is, um, you're just glued to the story. It's got a lot of themes to it about like um, uh, just sort of commercialism and um, Japanese culture and Westernism. And, uh, but you, it's very subtle and it's not, your face isn't rubbed in it, but it's just a great story about this girl. It's about a girl, they're moving to a new house with her parents. They take a little detour and um, her parents find a little restaurant where there's nobody man in it and they're super hungry. So they start pigging out and they literally get turned into pigs. Um, right. And then it just kind of goes from there. So there's a lot of Japanese culture to it. But, you know, um, it's it's 2001. It's an animated fantasy. Um, it's widely regarded as one of the greatest animated films of all time, um, which is crazy to say. Um, it was picked up by um, John Lasseter, who is a friend of Hayao Miyazaki's, um, who's done a lot of other um, Studio Ghibli movies. Um, that's who did the North American distribution was John Lasseter. It won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, and to date, it's still the only hand-drawn Academy Award nominated and won animated series. Um, Steven Spielberg puts it in his top 10 movies of all time. And Damn. considers it the greatest animated movie ever made over even every other Disney movie. Um, wow. It's, it's a great story. The animation really is great. I mean, I don't want to take away from the animation because there's a lot of people that watch this just for the art um, and the animation. And it really is. It's it, That's not something that's in my wheelhouse, but I totally get where people are coming from and I, and I can appreciate it. But it's the story um, that totally sells this movie. And I remember I watched it with my nieces once thinking I was just, you know, being the good uncle and we were going to, you know, not force them to watch something that they didn't want to watch. And I was probably more glued to it than they were. So great movie all around. Hell yeah. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, I did not see that one coming, man, but I'll check it out. Spirited yeah. Away? You said? Spirited Away. Okay. Huh. That, was a, that was a good looking release, too. You got yeah, it's a steelbook. Um, just really, there's a lot of Studio Ghibli movies out there. There's one called Howl's Moving Ca Castle, Ponyo. They're all Japanese. Um, this is the highest grossing movie ever in Japan, which is Damn. crazy to think. Um, yeah, my daughter lived in Thailand for a year, and she's got a really cool tattoo on her on her leg, whatever, of um, the castle from my house. Um, Howl's Moving Howl's Castle, Castle, whatever. Yeah. Yep. It's a really detailed tattoo. It's a cool tattoo. Yeah, that's, that's um. Yeah, you surprised me with that one, man. I'll check yeah, it out. It, it it surprised myself when I was kind of going through this list and I saw it on there and I thought, well, there's no way it'll make my 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 top seven. And I rewatched it and sure enough, it it uh, it had to be an honorable mention. Yeah, Chastity's a big anime fan. You have to talk to her more animation fan. You have to talk to her more about that one. I'm sure she's seen it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, Dirt, what you got, buddy? It's gonna be uh. First one is going to be training day. <laughs> there you go. And I was struggling, man, between this and man on fire, you know. Oh, yeah. But uh, I had to go with this, man. It's It's got so many damn quotable lines. You know, Alan's he's covered it really good. Uh, the only thing I could probably add to it is uh, just <clears throat> like the spectrum of the of the two two officers i know one's a rookie and the other is a vet but there's two different spectrum spectrums of authority definitely you know 
And uh, I think Denzel's character, uh, Alonzo, he sees himself in Ethan Hawke's character, like when he first started. Uh, but then, then you like, I don't know, man, maybe not. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe it's just a setup, you know what I mean, for the for what happens later. But it's just a great movie, man. That's my first one. And uh, then uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh yeah, there you go. The second one. Yep. And this is a uh, old ass Blu-ray, man. I, I yeah. Bought this when it first came out. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. They still sell that exact release. Really? Yeah, the same one I got. Yeah. I got this one too. Yeah, it's on my shelf you, back there. I don't know if y'all got that. It's got all three of them in that one. Yeah, I remember what came out. But that's the only two that I know about. Uh, but yeah, House of a Thousand, man. It's got a bunch of damn good quotable lines. Uh, uh, you miserable motherfucker. I ought to leap over this counter and bash the fucking, bash the fucking balls in. You know, like yeah. Captain Spaulding and fucking... Uh, Otis saying, I bet you stick your head in the fire if I told you you could see hell. Meanwhile, you got a demon hanging out your ass singing, Holy me, moly, I got me a live one. You know, you like that. But, uh, uh, why, why are your mama some chicken to take home? Yeah. <laughs> I come over there and stick my boot all up in your ass. But, uh, yeah, goddamn motherfucker got blood all over my best clown suit. You know? but, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh the exterior of the house was uh was uh uh from the little ho- whorehouse in texas that's a little whorehouse in texas it was shot uh i didn't know that shit but anyway man uh yeah, that's it man that's it yeah, yeah dirk I, I went to halloween party one time and um i was already fairly inebriated when i got there and this is out in the middle of the woods Look at this guy's barn. With it. And this has been a long time ago. <laughs> this old guy was, was drunk as hell. It was an old guy, old big guy. He was drunk as hell. He was just sitting in a chair halfway passed out, whatever. He was dressed like Captain Spaulding. We'll never forget it, dude. I, I, I was there for two or three hours and he never moved. He was just passed out in his chair dressed like Captain Spaulding the whole fucking time. It was pretty creepy. Damn. <laughs> the funny visual there. All right, Brad, what you got, man? Well, my first one was going to be this. Yeah. But the nice. more I watched it recently, Jamie Foxx just bothers me more and more every year as I get older and crazier. <laughs> and I, just hate him I watched so it too, man. I watched it too. It's you know? so bad. <laughs> and you've got Tom Cruise is doing great in it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, fuck that movie. Fuck, fuck Jamie Foxx. <laughs> yeah, fuck Jamie Foxx. <laughs> I can't find my DVD of Panic Room. I think I gave it to Caveman because the 4K got announced. Yeah. Panic Room was my is my first honorable mention. I love that movie. I saw it in the theaters. That's I I fucking loved Dwight Yoakam as an actor. I didn't even know he oh, yeah. saw he had a music career. Um, every time he's on screen acting and anything, he's great at it. Uh, Panic Room is, I mean, it's a David Fincher movie, and uh, you know, spoiler alert: there's a house, and inside that house. There's, There's a room, room that you go into and you hide from criminals. It's called well, a panic room. Spoil the movie, damn you. And the movie takes place inside that panic room and in that house, the whole movie. And uh, yeah. it's just a, a great movie. It's It really holds up well over yeah, time. Yeah. I just rewatched it recently. It just, I don't have the release. And it just made, just missed being in my top. Oh, I'd fucking hide from Jer- Jerry Leto's cornrows too. Jared Leto with cornrows. I mean, what the oh, fuck? Oh, yeah. That? Uh, but. <laughs> The character of Raul, I've always liked, and it's, he's just a this fucking sociopath, basically. But um, and then my other honorable mention is uh, Sideways. Yeah. This is a uh, it, it's like a it's a story of these two, their friendship, and they're in their early forties. And Paul Giamatti is this super super intellectual type character, very smart, high IQ type you know, guy, but he's just this pathetic fucking creature with no balls and he can't get anywhere in life. And he just, you know, his, his actor friend, his actor friend, Thomas Hayden church is the complete opposite of him. He's all balls and no brains. And they're like the odd couple. And Thomas Hayden church's character is getting married and Paul Giamatti is freshly divorced. 
they go to wine country for a bachelor party type thing, but also they have different, you know, agendas. Uh, Paul Giamatti's like doing some soul searching, and Thomas Hayden Church is trying to, you know, fuck everything that walks. Um, it's it's hysterical. It's got a lot of heart. I mean, it's just a, a really good uh, comedy if you haven't seen it for adults. Um, check this one out. It's a great Thomas Hayden Church movie too. Yeah, Thomas Hayden Church is awesome. In that. He he kills it in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Does. I do love how pathetic Paul Giamatti is. I mean, he, he steals <laughs> money from his own fucking mother to pay for the trip. I mean, just everything about it. He's just a fucking mess. It's great. He's a bad alcoholic? I mean, not a bad alcoholic. It's just the functioning wino. They're yeah. all, they drink a lot of wine. Yeah. He's, like he has a, he's a good alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you I know. know. Alan, Alan, and Ryan drink all the time. Does that mean they fucking they got a problem? You know what I mean? No, no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just uh, they do drink wine on their way to wine country. Yeah, and they're on their way from winery to winery. They're drinking wine, but yeah, no. it's. I agree with you though about Dwight Dwight Yoakam. Um, I, like. A lot of people forget, like Dwight Yo- Dwight Dwight Yoakam was in Sling Blade. Sling Blade. He did a shitload of yeah. like, you know, he's done a ton of movies where like you're like this guy yeah. is a country music singer, like what? yeah, yeah. And in Sling Blade, like he's the character I believe the most. Yeah, I've met exactly. That guy. Yeah, yeah. I've met right. that fucking guy with the dually quad cab fucking diesel truck. You know, he's got a carpentry <laughs> carpentry business that thinks he owns the fucking town. Yeah, <laughs> like and what's that uh, movie with Jason Statham? A uh, crank is that what it's called? Crank. He's awesome. Crank. He's, yeah, he's yeah, great. Right. He's great in that. Great yeah. in that. Is Doc Miles well, gonna have to choke a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I already knew that he was a. Uh, you know, like I'd heard his music, and then when he when Sling Blade came out, I was like, Dwight Yoakam, and I was like, Holy shit! This. this but he plays an amateur musician in the movie. Yeah, and exactly, you, yeah. I imagine how hard it would be hard for him to go on stage. Because he has a little mini concert in there, and like be shitty, yeah, and be bad, yeah, <laughs> you know, to go in there and be just a <laughs> shitty musician. But uh, he's got a great cameo in Wedding Crashers too. Yeah, he does. Yeah, that's it, baby. Go comatose for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Brian, what you got, buddy? Uh, all right, my first uh, honorable mention. I have uh, the girl next door. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, Emil Hirsch and Lisa Cuthbert. Um, kid in high school, he sees this girl uh, moving next door, and of course, he takes a lag into her. Um, end up hanging out, uh, and he, I guess he he re- he finds out later on that he that she's a runaway porn star, basically. And uh, her people are kind of like looking for her and stuff like that, and this becomes this whole thing. It's just uh, I don't know. It's kind of a, a crazy. I guess come, another coming of age. I guess I like those type of movies. Um, but uh, Paul Dano's in here. Timothy Oliphant does a great role. Um, James Remar from The Warriors is in here. Um, just really solid. Uh, two thousand, I think two thousand four. Yeah, two thousand four. Drama comedy movie. Um, I always enjoyed yeah. this one. Um, kind of put uh, Emil Hirsch on the map as a. Uh, as an actor back then too, so and I think this is like one of Paul Dano's first roles too. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I saw that in the theater. I haven't seen it since then, but it was I loved it when I saw it in the theater. Yeah, it's a good movie. So and then uh, second honorable mention is one that I never hear anybody talk about this movie. I don't even know if anybody else here knows about this movie at all. But um, it's only on DVD. It's called The Dangerous Lives of Alter Boys. That's it. Yep. Yeah, and it's got uh, Kieran Culkin, Jenna Malone, Emil Hirsch is in this one as well, um, Jody Foster, and Vincent D'Onofrio. And it's basically um, these um, everybody's at a Catholic school, and uh, these are a bunch of just juvenile delinquent kids or whatever. And these these four group, this group of four kids or whatever they um, they want to play a prank and on, on the um, they hate this um, nun, this one-legged Jody Foster nun. <laughs> she has like a wooden <laughs> leg or something in the movie, and uh, okay, so they want to like get back at her for being mean spirited to them and stuff like that. So, um, they, they plan to steal a statue and like, um, get a there's like a whole part where they get a, a live cougar involved in this prank, too, and it goes totally wrong. Don't want to spoil the movie if you haven't seen it, but uh, 
one of the first roles of Jenna Malone too. That where she, I mean, where she when number two was coming out with Donnie Darko and this. I think this is around the same year, two thousand two. So, okay, um, cool. Yeah, it's really solid. Um, and also, yeah. um, the four the four friends in the movie they're like drawing. Um, they draw a comic book together, and uh, I forget the name of the comic book, but they like play scenes out and it, and it shows them all in comic book form or whatever. And it's all done by Todd McFarlane, which is really cool. Like the, the comic oh, book yeah. part of the movie. Yeah. So uh, if you're interested in like some of his work, it's in here too. Hell yeah. Todd McFarlane's mm-hmm. badass. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's based off a book too. It's really good. Yeah. This is a really solid movie. It's flies under the radar. I'm not sure why this doesn't even have a Blu-ray yet, but it's my uh, honorable mention. Number two. I'm going to check that one out. Oh, you held that up. I was like, "Is this about kid fucking?" Some more, <laughs> kind of more fucking dark ass. <laughs> oh, no primal fear. What is this? What are we- no, I like uh, I like that kid Kieran Culkin and uh, him and Emil Hirsch play really good characters in that movie. Jody Foster with a wooden leg, man. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Old. Yeah, me a little. yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's a pretty good performance in there too. All right, um, I'm going to do my two honorable mentions here, and one of these are going to be a going to be a repeat, and that's going to be high tension. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You guys have already covered this well. Fantastic movie. I do got one thing funny to add to this though. Um, when I first seen this in theaters, I got to bring this up on my phone and show you guys. Um, I have uh, first thing I noticed when I seen the movie was the killer. The killer looked like Michael Michael Silas. <laughs> he has passed away. But my uncle Silas, tell you tell me that don't like the killer in that movie. That is and I thought that was hilarious when I first seen that in theater. I said, damn, that's my uncle Silas. Damn, Uncle Silas. <laughs> so, that's anyway, a great actor, too, man. That, yeah. That guy. I mean, he's he's creepy as hell in that movie, man. But um, like I said, my favorite part of this movie, obviously, is the part I already mentioned. I ain't gonna say it again. But um, she did most of her own on stunts in this, at least with the driving stunts, when the driving of the car, she did most of that herself. Um, you guys have already brought up all the points that I already want to make on it. Um, it didn't make a whole lot of money. It had a $2 million budget. made $3 million in the States, $6 million worldwide. Um, but the French horror movie came out, um, 6 10 2005 um, um, Alexander Aje, whatever. Um, it's, it's just a great movie. Great twist ending at the end. And Dirk, I'm like you. It was late into it before I figured it out, and it's, it got me. Um, yeah. You know, like yeah, I said, it's... Um, yeah. It's, it's a fantastic movie. I mean, like I said, it's already been spoken of, but if you hadn't seen this, come on, man, go see it. Um, my other honorable mention is, we talked about this franchise briefly earlier, but it's going to be the first Saw. Um, yeah. Absolutely adore okay. this movie. It's just, yeah. it's just a fantastic one. This first one, is a, it's, a, it's a classic, whether you like the sequels or not. You got to appreciate yeah. this one for what it is. It's a, it's a fun yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Um, let me write down. I took a few notes here. Hold on. <laughs> That's That's a hell of a release, too, man, you got right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got that um, a cool sexy slip, looking yeah, slip cover still cool book. Yeah. Um, but uh, this movie was filmed in 18 days, according to the Damn. BBC, which I don't know why the, they put this out there, but according to the BBC, this is one of the most profitable horror films of all times. Um, Saw 2 was approved for production the weekend Saw 1 opened, which I thought was kind of <laughs> unique. Um, was originally planned to be a straight to video release, but after positive screenings, it was given the nod to become a premiere film. Um, James Wan created the puppet for the film. I didn't know that. Um, it was James Wan feature a feature film debut. Was originally given an NC-17 rating. James Wan had to remove scenes to get, to get the R rating. Um, stars Carrie uh, uh, Ulls. I never say his name right. Uh, uh, Leah Winnell, which has also played Adam in the film. Danny Glover and Tobin Bell. Tobin Bell just knocked it out of the park on this one here. Um, yeah, just a great movie. Love the franchise. Had to, had to make it. And guys, I don't want to break the rules here, but if I don't break this, let me for oh, a quick shit. second. Um, my son's going to disown me. And I want to explain something real fast. Now, the last two weeks, I rewatched every one of these fucking films. Every fucking one of them. And I love this franchise. There's movies and there's epics. This is a fucking epic for me. And these streams, I have shied away from a lot of the Marvel movies. I shied yeah. away from this because I don't find it fair to compare this to be a top five. Well, this has right. got a fucking gazillion Agreed. dollar budget. Yep. Yeah. So I just want to, my son watching this. Yes, this would have made one, two, and three for me probably. I fucking adore these movies, but I'm trying to stay away from the fucking ultra franchises like Star Wars, this, Marvel yep. movies, shit like that. So I'm just, just doing that so I can keep my son safe face. Don't want to be yeah. disowned. Same reason I didn't break the rules. I had to bring that up. 
had to bring that up. Yep. Well, man, can I, I see... watch all three, all three of those extended versions of that the last two weeks, and it's still fucking great. Yep. I, so, Pops, I can't agree with you more, man, because I have it right here, and I struggled with it. <clears> because it's yeah. Number one, Sam Raimi movie, uh, one of my all-time favorite directors. I honestly believe, and people could argue with me and, and all day long, but I don't think he would have had them. There was plenty of, of comic book movies before the first Spider-Man, but I truly believe it was Sam Raimi that allowed for the whole MCU and even, even um, any comic book movie to kind of like re be rebooted after that. But at the same credit. time, it couldn't, couldn't make my top 10 just because it, like all the other, like uh, the re whole reason I didn't put, uh, Avengers Endgame in there. I, you know, if you've got a $300, $400 million budget, you better give me a three or $400 million movie. Um, yeah. So, you know, movies in my top five are like frailty, you know, but like show me the shit that, you know, somebody did, you know, with much, much less. So, right. Right. but, but no, it, I did pull, but, you know, for the last value, time, it's hard not to put them in there. Yeah. And the last term I did pull Iron Man as one of my top five, or maybe it was an honorable mention. I don't remember, but, um, Iron Man kind of started the whole Marvel thing. I decided to put that one in there. But other than that, I've shied away from all that because every stream for me, I'm a big Marvel guy. I could have one or two Marvel movies in every fucking one. And I just, I didn't want to do that. Same I'm with Star Wars. I'm a Star Wars nut. I'm of the mind if you got five move, five Marvel movies for your top five, I can put five in there. It's your personal top five. I don't care. I wouldn't get, I mean, that's, that's my, my thing. Well, uh, I, I agree with that, but I, in, in my mind, I just kind of said, okay, if these movies are going to be fucking, like I said, this has got a fucking gazillion dollar budget, whatever. I just don't think it's fair to compare that to these other movies that I rewatch all the fucking time. I was just trying to keep that that frame of mind. So, yeah. well, you know, really, I, I, you get past this, this set of years, though, it's not really going to be a, fa a factor anymore. There's not really any movies, you know, earlier than this that's right. going to really fall in that category for me. Well, like, so, um, I, I, I see your point, but if you give, uh, What's his fucking name? Um, he just did the, a Star Wars movie. He did some Star Trek movies. What's his name? With the J.J. J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams. You give him three hundred million dollars, he can't do this. Right. He right. He couldn't make this. That's what so, I mean. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't really matter to me the budget either. Like, you know, I just and it's like something like Lord of the Rings. I thought you were going to bring the Lord of the Rings <clears> up. <throat> like. I thought you might have hold it up and go, "This is my number one." It's the all three movies because the fucking they they bookend, you know what I mean? It's right. not like it's it's all one big movie, even though it's three parts. Yeah. Uh, you know, I thought that might. And it would be Fellowship of the Ring if I was going to pick one. It would be Fellowship mm -hmm. of the Ring. Most people are going to say Return of the King, but yeah. I like uh, Fellowship of the Ring the most. So the second one with all the action. What? Yeah, that's the first. Two one. Towers. Two towers has all the action. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, that was just kind of my thing. Whatever King you know, I don't know. All the, all the heavy action. <laughs> I right. almost had these. I almost had these comedies on my honorable mentions. Yeah. But yeah. I know yeah. I don't think this one already, but Anchorman yeah. is one of my Anchor, all time. Anchorman I, I made my quote, short list also. I could quote Anchorman that. from start to finish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Three thousand miles to Graceland almost made my. It almost know, did. Yeah. Oh, that's a great movie. I yeah. love that movie. <laughs> that, that movie is. Awesome. Love that heist. The beginning. Yeah. With almost uh, Vanilla Sky, and I rewatched that shit, and I was like. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that because so I had Vanilla Sky in there with Identity and Frailty, and then when I watched all three of them together, uh, I was a lot less impressed with Vanilla Sky than right. I remember being. Yeah, mm -hmm. Penelope Cruz I was like, "What the mm -hmm. fuck?" It's what kind of a dick? lip dick. Uh, yeah. So and and um, um, Maholland. Maholland Drive. Yeah. Yeah, it was close. All right, guys, we're going to get um, caught up on the chat here, and we will get on out of here. All right, Chris, he said, um, how'd you like to, uh, how'd you like to Bray? I uh, have not watched yet. I like the Severn release. I have the Severn release. Of Tenebrae? Tenebrae? There's no Severn release of Tenebrae. I was going to say, I missed that. Synapse. He must mean Synapse. Yeah. Got to be. All right. Brian, did you not like Tenebrae? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I think everybody likes it. <laughs> and if Anna says, I should clarify that I watch horror year round, but I can't watch anything but horror uh, right now. Okay. That go. makes a lot more okay. sense. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Hook said, I paid $20 for bingo on Blu ray. I'm a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Hopes of Tenebrae was awesome, and I'm pretty sure it's a synapse film. You probably have that one right. I really liked it. Really good, steady pace, violent, and fun. Yep, it's a great movie. Chris E says, Robert Anderson, yes, you're right. It's a oops. I'll notice the spirit away is solid. Bob says, I'm just a nerd, Chris. I know my labels. I'm a fiend. I have lists for all of them. You, know, <laughs> I'm, you have lists, really? Yeah, I would never do anything like that. No, yeah. <laughs> what? An, an Excel spreadsheet? No way. <laughs> that more satisfying than color coding that bitch and just marking it green that you got. Oh, so it's it's um, sexual. <laughs> There's nothing more sexual. satisfying. There's nothing more satisfying than when somebody else is getting ready to do their 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 like you know, Alan will click on the screen of somebody else and then you'll just start hearing Alan opening shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> he, he thinks he's not on screen, nobody can hear him, but I know it's fucking Alan over there opening movies, rustling papers. <laughs> That's why I was laughing through Ryan's uh, honorable mentions. I was like, you're fucking Alan over right. there, put those papers together. And what the, the only reason is because I. I heard it too, and I was like, "Fuck, that's Alan." <laughs> got a fucking desk right in front of him, sorting shit out. Oh fuck! <laughs> Old school pizza. My honorable mentions will have to be Death Wish Three and Porky's Two. Those movies really spoke to me as a kid. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get there soon. We'll talk about those. <clears throat> uh, Chris, he says, "I have, I, I have it." Doc, huge anime fan. You have the still book, The Perfect Blue. If not, I would I would recommend it for that decade. Yep. Chris E said Masaki is a legend in anime. Yep. Chris E said, but but that's not my favorite anime. All right. uh, Bob says, all right, just remember y'all better see the faculty on everyone's top five in two weeks. I'm sure it'll probably pop up. Maybe. Mm. Robert Rodriguez. This is gonna mm -hmm. be a bad one not yeah. next week um, or the next okay. two weeks. Yeah. Is that Robert Rodriguez? Yeah. Yep. Shit, I didn't yep. realize that. Yeah. Damn Dirty Ape. Uh, Spirit Away is Nick Cage's favorite movie. Oh, damn. Thanks, nice Russell. We're going to see some all time anime is Ninja Scroll. Trust me, watch it from Studio Madhouse, Beautiful Violets. I've heard of it, yeah. And he says, Honorable Mentions, Four Brothers, Spider Man, Blade 2, uh, and Mindhunter, starring Christian Slater and Val Kilmer. It's a mystery slasher movie. Two. You only get two. <laughs> yeah, because I could go deep. I got, I got about five or six right. I could throw out there. Yeah, <laughs> there, was argument, there was an argument to go from, are... you know, one. It was going to be one honorable mention, and now it's just going, now nah, five. I need five at least. Right. <laughs> no. How about two? So we settled on two. I <laughs> guess I'll live with fucking We'd two. We'd be here till Wednesday. <laughs> Forrest Ramos says, laugh out loud the faculty. They are definitely... Five better movies from 2000 to 95. 96 to 2000. Yeah, yeah. 96 to 2000. Yep. Yep. Uh, Chris Lee says, oh, Man on Fire, Dirk, I love that movie too. It was brutal. Yeah. Said, those are <laughs> those are fighting words for us. Maybe, but definitely top five horror. Our House of Thousand Corpses, I love it. Make me want to watch it again right now. Yeah, I love the opening scene, him and that guy back and forth in the store. Fried There's so much. Oh, it's classic. So man. many quotable lines to that yeah. movie. Oh yeah, right. No fucking John Wayne shit and. Yeah, I love when yeah, that guy sleeps and climbs out of the dirt. You know, right. and just. Uh... It's funny because that guy in that scene is the creepy camp counselor from Sleepaway Camp Three. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if y'all notice on the intro, I had the, um, Captain Spaulding in that one little scene. It was fun yeah. last night watching that scene again before I took the sound out. Right. <laughs> don't you like clowns? They don't you think they're fucking funny? Yeah. Don't they make you laugh? They're fucking funny. <laughs> they're fucking funny. Uh, Best Little Horror House should be required viewing for those who don't like musicals. Keep it in mind in the eighties. Oh, I've seen that movie many times. I definitely don't yeah. like um musicals, but that is a fun one. Uh in the fan sideways is a great one for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Any fans of uh, functioning wine was Keith Richards. Yeah, I keep telling myself, as long as Keith Richards is still alive, I'm doing okay. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Any fans of functioning? I've already read that one. Uh, Bob says, Dirk does a pretty good, the, Dirk does a pretty good Captain Spaulding. I can hear him in Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know if that's a compliment or a fucking insult. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking the same thing. <clears throat> Bob says, still waiting on an official announcement for Panic Room. Damn alive when we are getting... Damn alive, when are we getting that? You never know anymore. Two mentions, yeah. Two mentions, Blow from 2001, biographical crime film about Coke. I watched that this year for the first time. Troy based on Homer's Iliad. And that the one where Brad Pitt says, cost me a sack of wine. Yeah. (laughs) Sack of wine. Yep, Troy's not Troy. Y'all know the true story about that shit, right? About Troy. About no. Brad Pitt's character, <laughs> Achilles or whatever. Yeah. But never mind. Let's move on. Yeah, please. How <laughs> <laughs> Chris he says, Brian, I have that on DVD. Awesome film. Uh, Til- Timothy Oliphant is in it, right? Yeah, you're on next door. Yep. yep. Uh-huh. All right, Brad. I was expecting a 4K still book of High Tension and 4K of Panic Room. Now send this stream to the studios. Yeah, okay, still book of High Tension will be badass. Yeah, <clears throat> Nick Tannis says still patiently waiting for the beautiful love story Brokeback Mountain on 4K. Keep waiting. <laughs> um, <laughs> not to be confused. <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna say my joke. Well, I, I got a joke for that, but I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> or not, I'll tell y'all. Y'all remind me after the stream. Uh, not to be confused with the Girl Next Door 2007, which is really dark as hell flick that I recommend to. Yeah, I know about that one. Tell me about the. Catch him? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. It's a horror film. Yeah, it's Catch him. Yeah. Catch him like catch That's him. a true story, though, right? Based on a true story? Mm-hmm. Some shit? That's supposedly loose. Yeah, that's some buddy. fucked up shit. All right, Bob says, look at, in all seriousness, <laughs> all seriousness, if Lions get a new cap in the woods, they can do high tension. I agree. That's true. High tension inside. I mean, Lionsgate owns them, but does that mean that people. Yeah, freaks like us will buy them, but they, yeah. they want to try to sell yeah, but, them. But who else will? Yeah. 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 Grandma ain't buying that shit. Yeah. Hollow Note says, I'm all wet. Can I come in? <laughs> Damn. Girl next door. Hmm. Um, Bob says, Hell yeah, Brian. I love the girl next door. Alicia Cuthbert was the, the moment I knew I'd always be straight. I was foaming <laughs> at the mouth as a kid over her. Sexiest woman alive in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy says, yep, first of all, I love it, Pops. But I said, Brian, learn to like it. I can quote the whole movie, Girl Next Door. <laughs> all right, Bob. You, you know, like that movie almost, too much, there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> almost I saw on my list, I saw the Midnight Madness premiere of that film in Toronto before anyone knew a thing about it. It was the uncut version packed out. I was shaken by the end of it. Cool. Yeah, it's another one of those movies like High Tension where everybody got got by it you know yeah. those people that say yeah. like i'm a big high tension mark i saw it in the theater i had no fucking idea that uh, the twist that was going to happen yeah yeah and you got these assholes that would be like oh i figured it out oh, i figured it out i knew it yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's like <laughs> in high tension it's like well it's kind of hinted at that she's a lesbian but even that like you know well we kind of get that she's a lesbian we didn't get obviously nobody saw the the whole thing right shit. yeah yeah. Right, the whole lesbian thing I thought was like obvious that yeah, I mean, like, you know, she's she's into her. It's a, she's in the right. friend zone. I mean, yeah, that's what I, I tell. I've told told women before. I was like, this is what happens when the friend zone goes wrong. Right, you know, getting ready to watch the movie. You know. All right, Pat tells them to say. Chrissy says, "Yes, Spider Man, aka our Spider Man." <laughs> it's the Spider Man, in my opinion. That's my generation. Yeah. Spider-Man. Yep. That, that's the only Spider-Man. Yeah. Y'all remember that 1970s one where he's fucking crawling on the floor? <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that's your Spider-Man. No. Yeah. I'm going to show you how fucking old I am. Y- y'all, re- y'all remember a show called The Electric Company? I do. The Electric Company and Morgan Freeman play Spider-Man. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's, that was the first Spider-Man I was ever introduced to. Um, <laughs> The city you bank says my two honorable mentions are Mystic River 2003, Sean Penn, Kevin Bacon, directed by Clint Eastwood. That's a great movie. The Recruit 2003, yeah. Al Pacino, Colin Farrell, director Roger Donaldson. Yeah, Mystic River is really good. Mystic yeah, it is a great sure. movie. I thought about that one. I did. I too. watched it for the stream. I did too. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, Chris C says, to said Eubanks, Mr. River was very good. Any fan says, to be honest, none of the Marvel movies will make a top 10 list for me. I haven't seen all of them, but I just find them hard to sit through. DC animated and Batman is another story. Yep. Yeah. I'm more of a Marvel guy. I like a lot of the DC stuff, but I'm more of a Marvel guy. Chris E says, for me, it's Iron Man and Captain America, the first of the two. They are great. Monkey, this has been an epic stream of physical media kings. I appreciate it, Monkey. Yeah, thank you, man. You and um, that damn dirty ape should get together. Um, <laughs> uh, Indian fan says, Chris e, I would call the first Captain America the best one in the MCU that I have seen. I like the period setting, and Joe Johnson is a good filmmaker. And I don't know, like Logan, that's probably my favorite Marvel. Or yeah. I even like yes, Guardians so of the Galaxy. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, like I was going to say go. Guardians of the Galaxy. Was... I thought that was going to be the next Star Wars. You know, yeah. that was going to be a whole, the whole big thing. Kind of shit the bed on the sequel. All right, Ross says, always thanks, Pops, and thanks, Brad, Dirt, Ryan, and Brian. Thanks for always for allowing me to talk all night and ask chat with everyone. I appreciate it, Bob. Thanks for being yeah, here, man. man. Yeah, yep. man. Definitely appreciate you. Y'all go check out his channel, man. He puts out a lot of content over there, man. Some good stuff. Yeah. Uh, opens a lot of yeah. He, I think he might spend more money than I do. Um, Andy Fan says 96 to 2000 will eat your souls, guys. <laughs> you could list films from 96 or 99 and have trouble narrowing it to 10 for both years. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to get tough. Oh, I've already looked ahead, man. I'm telling you. It was yeah, like too, man. 40 fucking yeah. movies I put down already. Yeah, I, I intentionally don't look ahead, even though I'm, I mean, out yeah, of my mind, man. I know what year came out. But um, I kind of like doing it fresh when we get done. I, I look at these yeah. movies for two weeks. And it's nice to kind of, okay, let's go to the next one. You know, I'm waiting for when I can go to my Vinegar Syndrome collection, you know? Yeah, I've already looked ahead this time. I haven't done it until I'm now. The, so. uh, yeah, there you go. I'm going to be in D.C. for a yeah. week, so I've got to look ahead. That, that niblet corn box set. All right. Um, <laughs> niblet corn box set. <laughs> oh, Wild Wrangler says, um, I hope one of you choose Fear of Loathing Las Vegas for 98. That could pop up. Uh, Any Phantom says, Hollow Notes, great call on blue. That's a, a hot Penelope Cruise flute. Mm. Bob says, Thanks I learned tonight. I, mad respect for Brian for pulling out the girl next door. Brian, she's the sexiest blonde you've ever seen. And second thing, everyone that pulled 28 days later in high tension. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Bob says, It's a compliment, Dirk. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Any fans of none of you had Mulholland Drive in your top five, then I beg you to watch at least the six scenes between Watts and Laura Alina yeah. Herring again. Also, you got Billy Ray Cyrus in a Lynch movie. Yeah. I mean, I think we've all seen it. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, I thought about it. I mean, I, I, I watched it again just to prep for this. But it oh, it just it couldn't I'm I'm, I'm hit or miss on David Lynch movies. I'm I'm miss on David Lynch. <laughs> oh, you love that shit. <laughs> Uh, he, 0% he, he, anyone figured out high right tension. Right. I can see someone figuring out Saul. I mean, even mm. Saul, man, I, I still, I don't think anybody. Yeah, I didn't ever, figure it out. Well, first I of all, I didn't figure it Yeah, I didn't. I mean, yeah. I mean, the guy on the floor. And what a yeah. great Carrie Elwes movie. I mean, that was just like, what the fuck? That was a mind blown type moment. With the music and everything. That, uh, yeah. Uh, Dun, dun, dun. Carrie Ells, whatever. I didn't realize this. Time I was doing some research on it. The, um, you know, the reason why he was in part one and he wasn't seen again until about the last one, I think it was um, one of the last ones, is because um, he was supposedly there was some kind of contract dispute or whatever. He was supposed to get a percentage of the film or something like that. And the movie ended up making a shitload of money, and he didn't get the money he was told. And so they mm -hmm. ended up settling out of court. But he stayed away from the franchise until I think it was Saw 3D or whatever, one of the last ones. He came back for a little. Little piece there at the end, yeah, yeah. He milked the titties on that shit. That was yeah, my thing. <laughs> that was, oh. you know, every time I've seen that guy, it's like he looks like a titty milker. <laughs> you pretty, that good in, uh, pretty good and kissed the girl. <laughs> yeah, he was. All right, so Jake and Heath are the best look like, up yep. on the best film ever made, best picture, Burt Back Mountain. Oh, god damn. Jesus. Uh, Bob said, I definitely did not see the twist coming in high tension. No, I didn't either. 
Me either. Mexican, did you guys like ice cream man? I oh, like yeah. ice cream man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Well, how good about healing song too. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I didn't like it. <laughs> you didn't like it? No, I didn't like it at all. Oh, I didn't. Uh, I, like I, get that it, I get that it's funny, and you know, I uh, I just didn't. I like other Clint Howard stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, Oscar yeah. fans so bad. Oh, yeah. all right, he guys. Will speak, well, he will speak more. But. He will speak. Yeah. Yeah. We well, all people were giving us shit about having a five-hour stream. Uh, we were yeah. four hours and fifty-seven minutes, bitch. Take yep. that. Right, <laughs> shaving them down. I was just gonna say, no matter no matter how we cut this shit, it's five hours. <coughs> I'm tired. I had a great time, guys. I don't give a damn. It was, that was fun. awesome, dude. Yeah, these keep getting better. Somebody better. fucking ranted for an hour about uh, high tension. We get to right. shake some time, dicks. <laughs> <laughs> guys, um, we still got 25 people out there. We we got, got up to 40 at one time. Um, so we're having a great time doing these. If you guys Thanks are still enjoying, for hanging in though, the last 25. That's awesome. oh yeah, no doubt. Um, we'll be back in two weeks for our next one, which will be, uh, what, 96 to 2000, right? 96 to yep. 2000. Gonna be We're making, making progress. We're getting there, man. Getting down to the fun stuff yeah. now. But um, the pivot point here. Are you talking about the graphic novel? Then, no, yeah, that's yeah, definitely yeah. not a graphic novel. Yeah. Can't wait for the next one. Ebola, Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone hit the like button. Appreciate it. Love the stream, gents. I appreciate it, guys. Thank y'all for hanging appreciate out. It, man. Well, guys, yeah. we're going to get on out of here. Y'all got anything y'all want to say before I, we jump off? No. Nope. Gets better and better, man. I always look forward to it. I look forward to everybody's picks. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, every time. Stay man. tuned for the next one. Yeah, yeah. It's time to get yeah. to work on the next ones. But, guys, yeah. um, we'll see y'all soon. Be back in a couple weeks. We'll probably have some other stuff in between. But, oh, yeah. Um, see y'all next time. Bye, everybody. There you go.